Well, speaking of Centering John. Gagia. All right. I want to give you a quick update on what John is up to because there's a lot going on with him right now. So one of the things that people are probably noticing is that he has taken down his entire YouTube account. Really? And yeah. And what that has done is it's made it very difficult for people who pay him money to watch his videos to watch (laughs) his videos. So this is a person who subscribes to Centering John on Patreon. And they're scrolling through and showing you that there is nothing to watch on his Patreon anymore because all the videos have been taken down because they were all on YouTube and he let his YouTube go. So that's the update on John's Patreon. You haven't had anything since October 8th in terms of a beer on the balcony. And even that beer on the balcony, you cannot watch on demand nor any of his others. So he's not even putting out content anymore. He has all these people. He just said he reached a milestone. Actually, he said, I reached a <laughs> milestone. And he said he got to 500 people on his Patreon supporting him just in time to be able to see nothing. And there's no new updates. So again, I call bullshit. And especially because I was watching this video as this guy is like flipping through all the different videos and stuff. If he had 500 people on his Patreon, he wouldn't have like two comments on the Elon right. Gold beer on the balcony and, you know, seven here, eight there. Like that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. No, no engagement at all. Yeah. So, did he nuke his Twitter as well? I think his Twitter is still up, right? Well, his Twitter went private. I don't know if it's private. back up again. I know it went private. It, so it, to... it is. Uh, no, it is. Uh, I saw it the other day. He unlocked it again, but. Uh, why would he nuke his own YouTube channel? Is he about to blow his own brains out or frame you and claim that you DMCA striked him? So here's my theory, because John has alluded to this and I have some inside information on what's going on. John wants to create his own network, the Stuttering John Podcast Network. Whoa. Yes. Uh. He's going to start putting all the content behind a paywall. <laughs> so John finally wised up and he went, hold on, everyone's making money off of me except for me. How, what do I do? How do I do this? I don't know if someone suggested this to him or if he had this brilliant idea like, I'll just do what Pocky's doing. So much like Compound Media, he's going to have his show and I think Richard Ojeda and maybe Ron Filipkowski. And he's going to get these guys together to do shows that are behind his paywall, uh, part of the Southern John Network. And the first part of that was taking down all of his content. Now, I think another part of it is that he hates that Uncle Rico and all these other shows are pulling these old clips and making him look like a fool. Everything that he, he talks to people about, like, oh, you can't say this, you can't do that. And then people go back to the archives, they find him saying all these things and doing all these things. And so mm. it makes them look stupid. So I think that's part of it. But Kaya, how's he going to pull that off? Kaya, I think that John honestly thinks that people care about his content. He doesn't realize that as long as Shuli and I get this content and, you know, the, the other people, part of Dabblers Anonymous, as long as we could post this content, that's all anyone cares about. No one really cares about watching his show in real time. It's a waste of time. No, not at all. He's not. He is not the content. He's the raw material that you guys turn into content. It's like if I went to the movie theater and ordered popcorn, and then you gave me just raw corns. <laughs> yeah, like, they're no, like yeah. you figure it out. It's like no, I'm here no, for the fucking popcorn. Like someone the- actually has to make you funny it. first. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> all right. So here's another video that I want to play for you. This is John. Now, if you recall, John bragged about having a conversation with Patreon and another one with YouTube. Because he was trying to intimidate me and scare me. Like, oh, yeah, no, I talk. I had a great conversation with YouTube. And then he was trying to be cryptic. And he was going, terms of service. You know, as as if Mm. I was breaking their terms of service, I was going to get my channel shut down or something. Which, by the way, I want to say, I just won a judgment against SiriusXM. Thank you very much. That's correct. Uh, SiriusXM came back and said, all right, you you can leave your Howard Stern video up so i just want to uh celebrate that real quick (laughs) thanks kids all right so this is john (laughs) having a guest on and then admitting these he's never talked to anyone in any of these places no one would give them him the time of day you a 600 dollars macbook and someone scammed a bunch of people um i've written to everyone who dm'd this person uh already 
But I will say for Twitter support, they got my account turned back on in under 72 hours. I got a verified blue checkmark Facebook page with 300,000 some followers. That thing has been hacked for one year, four months and two weeks. And all Facebook has offered is bots and prayers. So yay Twitter for actually having humans that solve these problems. But yeah, this yeah. is it. This is where well, we you know, I have the same kind of issues with uh, Patreon and YouTube. Like they don't seem to really give a shit. You know what I mean? About anything. It's like, hard to get a person. Hard uh, to get a person on the phone. They don't give a shit about you, John. That's for sure. Well, you can't. I mean, you can't. I mean, it's all these like bots, you know, chat room shit. And they yeah. just, you know, and they just give you their typical, like, you know, bot answers. It's just- yeah, bot answers like that's transformative content, which is admissible under fair use clause of the copyright act. I like, know. I'm just all like, I want well, is to find a sympathetic algorithm, John. That's all I'm asking for. Just an algorithm that understands me and where I'm coming from. <laughs> John just lies all day long, every day, and he's so stupid that he can't remember what he lied about. So then he just comes out another show and he's just like, Yeah, you can't get on the phone with Patreon or Twitter or, or YouTube. It's like, John, you were bragging about a conversation, a long conversation you had with them, which is a weird brag anyway to begin with. But how well, dumb he also are doesn't you? understand that like Facebook and Patreon are not the same thing. Patreon is an actual like store where it, yeah, they, they gave you a template spot reply because. It's implied, like, no, we're not going to nuke this page that makes us ten grand a month because your fat ass complain about it. Like, right. go away. Yeah, yeah right. Jo- John has been trying to get my Patreon taken down by saying that there are some comments in the Discord that are offensive. And Patreon, I don't know if they're paying attention to this. I can't imagine they are. But if somebody at Patreon looked at that, they'd be like, <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Yeah, we'll definitely take this Patreon down because there's a Discord server somewhere. It's, That's a pretty good it argument. It is in their business interest not to humor every fucking complaint from right. people who aren't even their users. I have myself also talked to Patreon support. They're very speedy. I get replies like within hours from them whenever I have to some yeah. sort of an issue on that website. Because you probably That's have a real legit money. issue. And you make the money, but you have to have a uh, legit yeah, issue. Right. I'm not just a fucking drunk asshole on the internet trying to ruin other people's livelihoods by taking their podcast down. Fucking prick. All right, so yesterday's episode of the Centering John podcast. Now, Saturday, he did a show. Usually he does beer on the balcony. He said, no beer on the balcony, but I'm going to do it on Tuesday instead. He let us down. There was no beer on the balcony on Tuesday either. <laughs> and he talks about on Monday, the Yankees were supposed to play. Now, this is game five. This is the game that's going to decide who goes on in the playoffs, Kaya. And uh, John talks about his big day Monday watching the Yankees game. I left school yesterday, came straight home, didn't want to miss the game. And then it was rain delayed. And then I waited a little bit longer. And it was postponed. And I passed out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so all of that for nothing all of that for nothing he goes i came home from school yeah he goes he was substitute (laughs) teaching he went straight back to his apartment from substitute (laughs) teaching turned on the game it was rain delayed he waited for a while and then they postponed it so i'm going to translate this he wanted to go to the pub his play he usually goes to the bar like oh i put in a uh, healthy six hours uh, a couple of those classes were in study hall. Yeah, right. So now I got to go to the pub and have some beers. So instead of that, he went straight home to watch this Yankees game. And it was all for nothing. He could have gone to the fucking pub all along. Damn it. <laughs> what a waste of time. <laughs> well, all it's right. not as if he didn't drink at home. I, so I'm it, sure he had some beers at home. Oh so my I God. don't know what, what he really thinks he missed out on. Just annoying the bartender again. There's so many clips going around. I can't even keep up. There was one I saw the other day. I think it's recent. Where he talks about running out of beer. He, he goes, Yeah, the other night or last night, I went to my fridge. There's only one beer left. So I knocked on Juan's door, his next door neighbor, to see if he had some beers. And all he had was hard oh, seltzers. And I'm like, In a pinch. So he grabbed his neighbor's hard <laughs> seltzers because he didn't plan ahead for his alcoholism. It's unbelievable. Like normal people do that with sugar, sure. Right, flour. yeah. You got a yeah. stick of butter because I'm trying to make something over here. It's like, no, yeah. this is very different. Very well, trying to can I drunk. drink your liquor? <laughs> drink your liquor? <laughs> Wait, what kind of whiskey do you have? <laughs> and you just know he did not repay that. Oh, I, I have a, a strong suspicion. He wasn't running out to the store the next day to get some White Claws for Juan. 
but I could be no, wrong. Absolutely not. All right. This is John talking about giving him Facebook stars like he likes to do. What I want you to do is look at the sore on the palm of his hand. It is huge. JM Bandy, glad to see you back. You were accidentally blocked, but I unblocked you today. Facebook people, this is quite important. During uh, this broadcast, you can support my page. All right. So I just saw this recently. I did not know about this. But you know he's always scratching his palms on the show. Like he's constantly mm-hmm. got his hand up here and he's doing this. And it turns yeah. out that that is a symptom of both psoriasis and liver disease that you get itchy palms. And I just want to That's say no to the Uncle Rico show, you guys better start doing five shows a day because his palms are so itchy. He's <laughs> gouging them. He's got serious scabs on his palms. They're so itchy. Like, this guy is not long for this world. I'm not saying that, like, I think it's fun or funny. It's not. But, John, holy shit, buddy. We can all see it. I mean, he has so many liver spots on his forehead and shit, too, now. Yeah. The, the video quality here is a bit low, but he didn't have those even three years ago, did he? No. Three years ago... He was a different person. And we say that, but I, we're not exaggerating in any single way. It's unrecognizable the way he looks now. And I love that he, for a little while he was going on auditions and stuff. He thought he was going to play a role in a play or on a TV show or something. It's like, John, you're not a presentable person at this point. You look terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you have to know that, right? <laughs> and the other thing about John is that he doesn't want anyone talking about his kids, but I think he does. I have a theory, Kaya. I think John wants us talking about his kids because when we do... Then he could say, oh, they're talking about my kids, you know, because he is a public figure. We can talk about him all we want. There's nothing he could really yeah. say, you know, unless somehow, and I can't even imagine this is possible, but if somehow we did something that caused harm for him in his life because we slandered him and in such a way that was so defamatory that he couldn't get a job or something, it's like, no, John, you're the reason why you can't get a job. It has nothing to do with us, obviously. Right. But he brings up his kids because he wants us to bring up his kids so that he can use them as a shield. Uh, I just got a uh, text from my wonderful daughter who might be coming with me to New York for Christmas. The way he drinks water in this episode is he's just chugging. He's so dehydrated. That would be awesome. (laughs) So he brings up that I got a text from my daughter. She might come with me to New York for Christmas. That would be awesome. So now he's putting it out there. We have to wait and see if he's actually going to bring his daughter with them to New York. We're going to be keeping track of that now, John. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have cared, but now you put it out there in the world. Now we got to pay attention to this and call you out when you go and visit your mom by yourself. He wants to die on that hill so bad. You're attacking my family hill, and it's just not... It's currently not happening, but I have heard some rumors that he's been fucking with Anthony's family. Yes. I don't know. But... Did you notice, by the way, he cut up an entire fucking lemon into his glass of water. Yeah. I think that's something you do when you usually hate drinking water and you never drink water. Is that what it is? Because he does not usually drink water. But I he's, think so. I think he's learned that orange juice is not going to help him. So now he's... And <laughs> he also learned something else, which is smart, by the way. Maybe he's been watching me. But what he's doing is he has a glass of water and he's pouring it as he's podcasting. So that every time he picks it up, it's pretty full. So he's not, like, going mm-hmm. all the way back and chugging it. He can just kind of sip on it. It's not as obnoxious to smart. look at. Yeah, it is smart. It is smart. But I'm I'm glad that he's kind of figured that out because I've already clipped enough times of him chugging his drink, and it's not attractive looking <laughs> in any single way. So you brought up this Anthony Cumia thing. I want to bring this up, too, because I tweeted this mm-hmm. the other day. So here's what happened. Suttering John puts out a tweet. And he actually has a screen grab from Anthony's brother, Joe, tweeting, I'm sorry, texting with Anthony. So somehow John has a text thread between Joe and Anthony. And it says, I just got a phone call that came up as you on my caller ID. And it was your voice with sirens in the background. And you were saying that they're after me, help me, etc. It just came up like your fucking phone called me. And then he shows the screen capture of his brother's name with the missed call or the incoming calls that he answered. So Suttering John, like the moron he is, tweeted this out and also with the caption, hey, Anthony Kumar, are you okay? I heard the police were chasing you and you were calling your brother Joe for help. So Anthony then tweets out, 
from Saturday night, I was at the WATP show making people laugh at you. I figured this shithead was involved somehow. Calling family members, telling them someone is in danger is true scumbag shit, stuttering John. But that's you. You're garbage, John. A loser. Bum. And frankly, the fact that John would tweet that out makes me feel like he was responsible for it. Or he put someone else up to it if he can't figure it out. Why would you tweet something like oh, that? There's no way. Yeah, he would have put up, uh, somebody up to it. There's no way John can figure out how to get someone's number, how to fake a police siren, how to fake somebody's... No way. Well, someone has, has the someone phone hacked because they're actually but, pulling out the text thread screen grabs and they're able to spoof Anthony's number and they know Anthony's number and how it's going to show up in Joe's phone. Like, There's a lot of shit going on right here and John's taking credit for it and celebrating it. And John, this is why you're always the villain. This is what you don't understand is all the shit you tell other people not to do, you are currently actively doing. You're, you're trying you're, to get your friends to beat up Shuli and intimidate him. You're trying to fuck with Anthony's family. I thought family was off limits. To John, nothing is off limits. Right, and even if he didn't do it, you're still celebrating it. What happened to having honor? Do you remember when you went yeah. on, what was it, Tommy's show? MSCS Media or whatever yeah. the fuck? And it was like, Tommy, who goes after someone's family? Not even the mob does that. Right. But, uh, there's it sounds like examples. if the mob did go after Anthony's family, you'd celebrate. Yes. That's what it sounds like to me, you fuckface. Yeah, there are numerous examples of this where Stuttering John will say, like, I would never do something like that. And then he just blatantly does it. Like, John, are, are you stupid? I, I was going to ask, are you stupid? That's a dumb question. So this looks like, <laughs> this looks like to me, like somebody posted about that in his chat. And this is John reacting to it. Uh, <laughs> Z's, well, you know, there's one thing. Hell hath no fury for a father scorned. What? More chugging his water like a weird ass. Ah. So I think he's justifying it because Anthony made fun of my kids. Right? Hell hath. Hell hath no fury for a father's school. Yeah, I know. He doesn't even have the fucking saying correct. <laughs> Would it be like? Yeah. Yeah, I know. He doesn't understand what he's saying. That's right. That's why I intro <laughs> this with Kaya speaks better English than Stuttering John. This is not Kaya's first or second language. He speaks it better than Stuttering John. He's a moron. Also, he scratches himself right before chugging water. Yeah, he is on, he is on his Dude. last leg here. Dude, this is not the way he's chugging water during his show. I get it. You're dehydrated. You've been drinking all night, but get up a couple hours before the show and get rehydrated and then start going. It's not that difficult. <laughs> Take it from me. <laughs> you want to be an alcoholic and run a successful podcast? Take it from me. There's ways to get around this. <laughs> all right. So this is John talking about his uh, upcoming beer on the balcony and I just want to give people a glimpse into what's going on on John's show during the roll call section of it when he's just looking at people's names and he just starts singing for some reason. Uh, Kurt M, Christopher <laughs> Bender, <laughs> Diane Russell, Ginger. Uh, Jules. Uh, David. Oh, oh be on the balcony. I, you know, I've been trying to book the same freaking guy. It'll be this week. I'll do another one on Saturday. I just, I don't know. He doesn't respond. I mean, he emailed me back. <laughs> I asked him if he'd come on. He said he had family stuff. Yeah, yeah. It chug the water. Wow, there's a whole fucking <laughs> weapon so there. Probably won't, there won't be one today. No, there won't be one today. Well, there's a job. I don't get oh my God, it. He sounds like someone falling in and out of a coma. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 it's someone uh, we were doing the live show in New York. That's one of the things that Anthony said. It's like literally the sound of dumpers makes this. John does that <laughs> without even realizing. Uh, <laughs> er, uh. He's unbelievable. He really is close to being just self part character. <laughs> All right. This is more dumb noises coming out of this guy's face. So fucking stupid. Uh, um, He's pouring his yeah, water. Yeah, 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 yeah. Boom. <laughs> All right. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, Jules David, thanks for the two bucks. Like I said, I'll let you know. It might have to be Thursday. Did you just take a sip out of his water without picking up his glass? Did you see that? <laughs> I it? think he I over I his that glass. I was laughing. Oh my god. It's like he he does a whole intermission, a whole bit out of him just pouring water. He makes sound effects for it and everything, and then he sandwiches it between two uhs. Watch this again. He has to put his face right next to the camera. Like I said. <laughs> I'll let you know. I'm not doing Thursday. It's like he's drinking out of a pond. Is the way he looks right there. I wish there was a lion behind him to take him out. <laughs> He's not paying attention. Get uh, him. All right. So Jeff's been talking oh about how difficult it's been to unblock all of these people because he's blocked all the wrong people. Uh, good as gold is blocked. Okay. Well, then I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to unblock her. You know, it's funny, too, because he plays Forrest Gump. He's like, oh, I can do an impression of a retard. Yeah, we know. We see it every day, all day. So He's talking about Twitter, right? I think he's talking about YouTube. It could be Twitter. YouTube. It could be Twitter, because on Twitter, you know, what pussies do is they use something called blockchains, which is basically a thing that you can install, like a plugin into your Twitter profile, and then it blocks thousands of people, like tens of thousands. And they set it up so we're like... It even blocks people who like a tweet by somebody that you blocked. Like, mm. it will block people with two degrees of separation from people who you actually wanted to block. It's that fucking manic. And I guess that's what he has. Maybe he, one of his kids installed it like, Dad, okay, you know, you're, you're getting trolled on the internet. Here's a thing I can do for you, and you don't have to see that stuff. All right, hold on to that thought, because I don't believe anything that John says. What we're going to do right now is we're going to watch John unblock Good as Gold in real time. Let's, let's wait to see how long this... Remember, he's doing a show, apparently... Let's watch him unblock in real time. I, I like the still frame, by the way. Yeah, I know. No, no matter where you pause it, it's always great. He just looks like oh, he looks like he's on dialysis or something. Like it's not good. He's not a healthy man. And so we're gonna play him unblocking good as gold in real time, and then the explanation to why all these people are blocked. And and I want to see if you think that's bullshit or not. I have to do. I'm gonna have to unblock her. That's all I have to say about it. Let's find her on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, yes, indeed. I need some weed. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Where is good as gold? Let's see. There, unblocked. Good as gold is unblocked. Okay, back to the show. Back to the show. What show? What are you talking? That is that is your show, John. You go. Bah, brr, <laughs> I need some weed. Brr. I feel like it's trying to fill the silence with literally any noise, and yes. he thinks that's entertaining. It, it isn't. That's just white noise. It's just uh, noise. Next weekend, I'm do I'm participating in a 48 hour live stream, a 48 hour straight from uh, from Florida. I guarantee there will not be a minute of that live stream that looks anything like what you just saw. It'll be more entertaining than what John can do. Just try to stream for two hours straight. All right, so let's find out why all these people are blocked that shouldn't be blocked. Uh, mm -hmm. How old is Leslie Ramsey? How are all these people getting blocked? Well, I don't know, really. Uh huh. More drinking water. Oh, my gosh. Not I make an occasional... Sometimes I'll make a mistake, like I'll hit to block somebody, and then, and then the chat will move up one, and then it'll it'll block the other person. So, so he started by saying, "I don't know." That doesn't make any sense. And then said specifically, oh, you know, and I'm sure it happens to my moderators on occasion as well. I mean, a pole nubby's nerfed. You know what I mean? So, do you, are you buying that one? All, he's got no. dozens of people blocked that shouldn't be, and he's pretending that it's because, like, well, you know, the chat goes through it so fast. Sometimes I hit the, I click the wrong name. First of all, I don't believe that his chat goes so fast. It doesn't. I'm not buying that whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. Two, even if that did happen, okay. So the person that you meant to block slipped under from your mouse cursor. 
then you would still end up blocking only one person, though, even if it was the wrong person. Oh, but this has been but going dozens. on for months, Kaya. That's why this is all happening. Uh, you know, you're onto something, and he's definitely talking about YouTube. He's not talking about Twitter, but there's got to be something that's just going in and auto blocking all these people. Just it probably uses like specific keywords or something, or affiliations, like you said, and just blocks people. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, maybe he just has a filter for Carl. And who are these podcasts and shit? <laughs> yeah, and just yeah, there's probably a few things like that. Oh, people. he'd be dumb enough to have like who and are and the and podcasts uh, all separate. <laughs> I think you cracked the case. <laughs> I think I did. I think I figured it Fucking out. Fucking moron. All right, let's watch. Let's watch Thirsty John getting trolled. It's one of my favorite things that John does. Thirsty he, John. Yeah, he's chugging his water, but he's looking at the <laughs> chat and he's seeing people trolling him, and then he has to tell his moderator to get out of it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so disappointed. Uh, thank you, Andrea. Ay, uh, boy. Oh, uh, uh, let's see. Okay. <laughs> this is the show we had to get back to after I'm fucking good as gold. Here's two bucks for your birthday, by the way. <laughs> oh, sorry. Happy Tuesday, it says. My bad. Yeah, by the way, that's the, from fuck's the internet is a toilet, which is a troll. <laughs> that's one of the good guys. Oh. Yeah. He okay. says, uh, I love when you have that the army sense. major on. Happy Tuesday, John, for two bucks. All right. I want to ask you, Kaya, if you even understand what John's talking about on this clip. You know, I'm getting so sick of this. Uh, uh like, I don't know why. Does this happen to everyone? Google just, like, it forgets everything. What about, what about you, Kai? Do you, do you realize that Google forgets everything? Like that, So the other day I was Googling transformative content under fair use, and Google said, I don't remember that one. I was like, ah, oh, come on, Google. <laughs> I'm counting on you to remember this stuff for me. No results found. <laughs> no results found for that one. He's like, ah, oh, I hate what Google forgets. God damn it. Uh, all right, this is John starts. He's waiting for the. Oh, what's great about this episode is that he never sends out the StreamYard links to his guests. So he goes, Oh shit, I gotta send these out. So we watch him do that in real time. And now he has to kill time because he's waiting for them to get the links and to join the show. So he decides to go on Ron Filipkowski's Twitter and found, find a video of Donald Trump Jr. doing whatever Don Jr. does on the internet and centering John. Picks the wrong angle to make fun of uh, Donnie Jr. here. Okay, now, notice the quotations, okay? Usually you go, this guy is kind of slow, and that's it, right? Three times? He just did four. Watch how many times. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> John goes, when you do the quotes, you got to do it three times. I didn't know that was the rule, but that's what John says. But then as he's saying that, he does it four times. Slow. And that's it, right? Three times? <laughs> Watch how many times this ignoramus known as Donnie Dickhead Jr. is holding these quote things up on his coke bill rant. Shit. His quote things. He's holding these quote things up, Kaya. What an idiot. Th this is the angle? That's the angle of this, attack? Yeah, this is the angle of attack. As he looks towards his little script... So, oh, that's the other thing he makes fun of him for. He's like, this guy wrote down what he wanted to say. Like, get yeah, Chad, you should do. It wouldn't kill you. Have right. some bullet points, idiots. Here we go. A walk down the crazy world of Don Jr. See, Pelosi is quoted as saying, I hope Trump comes. I'm going to punch him out. This is my moment. I've been waiting for this. For trespassing All right, are we counting? Capital grounds. I'm going to punch him out. And I'm going to go to jail. All right, are we counting? How come the media is reacting like she's this great hero? Talking tough, preaching violence. I was told that's a huge threat to democracy. So John's making fun of Don Jr. for using his hands a lot as he talks. John is a guy this who shoves adorable. his hand up like this. It's got scabs all over it, and he scratches it. This is not the right angle to take. Like, John always finds the wrong thing to goof on people for. You notice that? 
I know people like this in my private life where like they get bullied relentlessly, yeah. but then they try to find someone even dumber than they are and they yeah. bully them to get some sense of self worth back. But John, it's not gonna work. Like you're dumber than everyone. Not that Don <laughs> Jr. is a smart person, but no. <laughs> Don Jr. should do a few fewer videos on the internet. Don't get me wrong, but John, you do not have a leg up on him. And so, of course, I can't get ahead of Stutcho Depot. They've already made a video about John's hypocrisy here. Making fun of people in their quote marks. Like, this is the thing that we goof on John about all the time. He doesn't know how they work or when to use them. So this this video is is brilliant, of course. Okay, now, notice the quotations, okay? Usually you go, this guy is kind of slow, and that's it, right? Three times. Watch how many times this ignoramus is holding these quote things up on his Cokeville rant. My mom happens to know this person personally and sent this person a check. <laughs> so this person can pay for his or her spouse's chemo. If you're listening to this, his fingers are in the air just randomly doing claw things the whole time he's trying to do like this person is a person. My mom yeah, knows this per like what? Past clips of John doing the exact same thing he's accusing Don of doing. It's the best. You know, don't uh don't feed the trolls. Which is 300 every chemo session, and now he's gotta undergo 12 more. And all these losers are trying to do it once there. Money. Well, he's doing the quote thing, but then he's also doing all the hand gestures, all the shit he was yeah. just making fun of Don Jr. for doing. He's doing just all a bunch of, of gang signs now. A <laughs> puck face, which I should sue him for. Well, I mean, too bad. I don't have time. Well, I mean, too bad. Too bad. Too bad. Too bad. All right. So there's a slowdown yeah. of John drooling, <laughs> which is always fun. So then he goes on to make fun of Don Jr. some more. And the way he goofs on Don Jr., Kaya, I swear, I used to do this when I was in third grade. I would do this exact mm -hmm. same thing to kids in the cafeteria, and my friends all thought it was hilarious. In third grade. Isn't it time we say, like, you know, enough, like, you know, like, enough, you know, like, brain in there. Yeah, you so know, like, enough. Like, going from John Fetterman is fine. Uh, Fetterman. You're goddamn right, his brain doesn't work right now, but who cares? Who cares? Who cares? He's a disabled, he's representing. Yeah, he's representing. We'll do that, right? We're, they're yeah. pretending that that's real. And yeah, if he had an actual disability that we actually believe, How many and that times wasn't could like I his brain malfunctioning hands. or being the mush that is What's actually probably worse than Joe Biden, taken over by he makes Joe Biden Joe seem like Biden? a linguistic ninja, a linguistic like the most articulate ninja? person in the world. John's just repeating words at the end of the sentence in a retard voice, and he thinks that's comedy. Yeah, like when we do uh, impressions of John, we at least like make up lines. Right. right. Something that sounds like uh, John would say. He's just uh, repeating the same exact thing, like, and doing a retard voice, which is, I don't know, humor you find funny when you're a teenager and you're watching South Park, I guess. But well, the problem is, is that he thinks he's smarter than Don Jr. He thinks he's more, has more political problem, aptitude. Yeah. If that's true, he wants then... to be, like, he wants to be to Don what you are to him. Right. And it's just not working. Correct. Yes. He's seeing other people. He's seeing him getting bullied and he's going, I'm going to bully Don Jr. the way I get bullied, but he doesn't understand how to do it because if he really wanted to cut down Don Jr., he would listen to the points Don was making and explain why they're retarded. That's what he should right. be doing instead of just repeating the last lie. Oh, Joe Biden, damn, damn, I, damn, I'm an idiot. Damn. Yeah, the problem is, though, like, I think every single media outlet that John consumes at this point, like, he strikes me as the kind of guy who would watch those late night TV shows with, like, John Oliver and yeah. uh, what's his face, Stewart. And that's the same thing they do. They just, they play a clip of, like, someone like Don Jr. saying something dumb, and then they make a funny face and the audience claps. It's like, right. mm, did you guys hear that? How stupid is this guy? Like uh, this the difference enough, is, John. they have a staff of people who find that precise clip that really makes right. the person look stupid. John just plays a random clip he found on Twitter and has nothing. He has nothing to say. I love it when he has all nothing of it too. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't even pull out the parts that he wants to goof on. He just starts playing it, and he goes, "Look at this guy. He's using his hands when he talks." Like, well, and he tries to come up for using drugs. John brags about using drugs. Like, what is this guy on coke? Chad, you love doing coke. What do you mean? What? Like, you're goofing on him for that? Yeah, maybe you should get some Adderall. Go to the fucking doctor. Yeah, you clearly have issues. Right. You literally cannot focus a thought. It takes you like 30 seconds to string together five words. That's not normal. So 
Ryan Sharman just today proved that Stuttering John was Dombo13 on Twitter. We always knew that was a sock account for John. And what happened was John's been deactivating his sock accounts recently. He's doing all, he's taking out mm. his YouTube. He's deactivating sock accounts. He's got big things in motion right now. So what uh, Ryan Sharman did is he tried to reactivate that account. And it says you need to put in your email address associated with the account. So he put in John's email address because he used to be his moderator. So he knows it. And of course, it sent the code to the email that he needed to then put in to verify it. Uh, it didn't say like, no, this is the wrong email. It just said, okay, the code has been sent, proving that John was Dombo 13 the entire time, which of course was very obvious. John has a lot of sock accounts. And also, while he's deleting sock accounts, I want to say that the Twitter account that was my wife's name with a photo of my wife is now gone as well. So, John... Okay, so he was going after your family. Aww. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he he was communicating directly with my... Well, watch this. Wife. I did it three times. <laughs> with my <laughs> wife. It's some creepy shit. Isn't that a little bit creepy to create an account with someone's real name and photo and pretend you're them and tweet out shit? Like, it's one thing if you're Maple Leaf Fan 28. It's another thing if you're my wife's name and image and you're tweeting at each other and having a conversation. You're fucking weirdo, John. You're yeah, fucking it's... weirdo. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to talk about... Do you, are you familiar with Mike David from Red Bar? No. Okay. So Red Bar has the show that's similar to our show, although I think he would say that's not the case. But he goes ahead and plays clips from different shows and comedians, and, and he goofs on them and stuff. So Stuttering John, because Red Bar and Anthony Cumia are not friends. In fact, mm -hmm. Mike David worked at Compound Media for a very short time. They had a falling out. And so because he doesn't like Anthony... Our friend Stuttering John thought, oh, I'm going to team up with Red Bar. And he's been saying on his show lately, I love Red Bar. I love what they're doing. They're great. So this is Mike David explaining that John's been trying to DM him on Instagram. Oh. Yeah, this is hilarious. Stuttering John's been in this big feud where him and Kumbia go back and forth screaming at each other. And it's always retarded on e either side. So Stuttering John keeps messaging me on IG. I've never responded. And he's messaging me, let's take down Kumia together. What do you say? And I'm like, I'm not getting involved. Because this is, uh, for those who don't know, Stuttering John has been taken by, like, this very soggy, gross, like, low-lying internet group of people, like a Mersh type yes, level like some of people guy just are commented, all orbiting him at the moment. Some guy just said, stuttering John content. Is this what are these podcasts? Exactly. And now, hopefully, maybe you've opened your ears. All right. So, okay. because we talk about stuttering John, Red Bar is above this. And they're saying, look, it, John wants to... Form an alliance with me. I want nothing to do with that. I don't give a fuck. I don't want this to be a thing that I do because that's what who are these podcasts does. And so they continue to talk about us. I don't even know what to make of this, to be honest with you. They don't want anything to do with him, obviously. I keep my ear to the ground. I know I actually know what's happening. They don't know. Team up with these fools. So, by the way, this who are these podcasts? You don't you're not allowed to listen to those shows, by the way. You were only allowed to harass those shows. If we catch you listening, there's punishments and doxings. So, um, yeah, who are these podcasts? It's is unbelievably junk. And Kumia loves it. By the way, if you think, uh, who are these podcasts? That's Kumia's friends. All right. So I guess okay. there's some uh, guilt by association there. If you can't like Kumia's yeah, podcast. really doesn't like you. What's no, up with that? No, I'm not. I'm not what did quite, you ever do to him? I'm not quite <laughs> sure what the issue is, but. Apparently, if you like Red Bar, you're not allowed to watch and enjoy Who Are These Podcasts. Does that sound like what he just said? I'm not sure. I, I don't understand. Who who does who is he implying is doing the harassing and doxing? I think he implied that he would do the harassing and doxing. If if his fans, the the Red Barians, the Red Barians, if they were to enjoy Who Are These Podcasts, I think he would dox them for doing that. That's the. I was confused too. I could be totally wrong about this. Maybe someone 
can explain this to me because that was weird. I, I guess. All right. So this is more on why who are these podcast socks? Kumi loves them because they do Kumi as dirty work. They go after these stuttering Johns and these people um, on Kumi as for Kumi. So that show's not very cool. Like they're going after John to get <laughs> Kumi as praise. Yikes. All right. So now he's just pulled a Chad Zumach. So I have to call him out on this one. Uh, Mike David, mm-hmm. love you, buddy. This idea that the only reason why we talk about Suttering John is so that Anthony Cumia gives us an attaboy is retarded. That's a retarded thing to think or say. But that's literally what Chad Zumach said, too. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, who are these pockets just kisses your ass? Because that's the only reason why they even have a successful show is because Anthony talks about you. Like, Anthony's behind a paywall. I don't know that that's why we're... And Anthony, you know, like, you've been on Anthony's radar... After like hundreds of episodes, well, right. before these podcasts, I, I, it's a show. That, this show existed before Anthony Cumia. Correct, and also Anthony's was always like with Opie. It was never the Suttering John thing. I don't think that we were right. like, "Hey, Anthony, if I make fun of Suttering John, will you be my friend?" Because that wouldn't even make sense. <laughs> there wasn't a thing before that. Uh, John was on his show many times, so it's it's kind of stupid. So, all right, speaking of fucking things up all the time. <laughs> I have to start at the very beginning of this Thursday episode of the Centering John podcast because, all right, he's, he's chugging water. He doesn't have to turn on his camera and then chug water. He could chug the water and then turn his camera on, but he can't get that figured out. And then look at his polo shirt, everybody. <laughs> Yeah, baby! Welcome to the world-famous Stuttering John podcast with your favorite world-famous host, Stuttering John Melendez. How are you, everybody? All right. So his shirt is inside out. (laughs) You can see the buttons are on the wrong side. His polo shirt is inside out. This fucking guy can knock it out of his own way. He's He's a treat. Yes. He really is amazing. Mm. All right. So then he realizes it. And this is funny. Uh, <laughs> this is funny because he realizes it and he decides, oh, I'm not going to acknowledge it. I'll just I'll just play it off. Today we have Brian Karam, who uh, I hope is deep into the sauce. He's trying to button it. He's trying to button it. Where's the button? Where's the button? Yeah, he's Where's always the button? a hell of a lot of fun. Oh, oops. <laughs> what the <laughs> <laughs> Where's the button? Where's the button? <laughs> He's wearing a blouse. It's on the other side. It's a blouse. Jesus. The thing I love the most is the visual here because Carl right behind you is almost the exact same screenshot as what we're looking at. Right now. Yeah, I know. I know that that drawing is. It's, it might be a photograph now that I think about yeah. it. I'm not even sure that is <laughs> art. Oh, it's amazing. Um, I love that look. Something is amiss. <laughs> Did you hear him too say he's, he's bringing his guest on? He hopes he's deep into the sauce. I didn't understand that at all. I don't, I don't understand that. Okay. So um, real quick, we'll get back to the shirt thing. But um, we have to remember that this is Super Cast or Super Chat Thursday. Uh, Super Chat Thursday. Thank you, Andrea. That is true. It is Super Chat Thursday. So he has Super Chat Tuesday, Super Chat Thursday, and Super Chat Saturday. I'm starting to think that that doesn't have any significance at all. It's like, well, that is true. It is Super Chat <laughs> yes. Thursday. And by the way, all of this month is Give Me Your Money October. <laughs> and we only have a few more days before it's Donate to Me November. Yeah. So, guys, please get on my Patreon. <laughs> get on my PayPal. Goal. Make that goal. <laughs> Super I Chat Thursday. I can't unsee the inside out shirt now. Oh, it's fucking amazing. Just like looking at it like all the, all the seams and everything yep. that are all sticking out. <laughs> yep. I know. It, um,. <sighs> We're going to be down in uh, Florida next weekend at the Content House with Chrissy Mayer and company. And I guess there's 
going to be like a costume thing going on. Uh-huh. I'm not a big costume guy, <laughs> as you know. Ooh, bring the roach costume. Well, my wife is going to dress up as sexy stuttering John. She's already ordered that shirt. She's going to wear it inside <laughs> out. <laughs> <laughs> sexy stunt show. I'm sorry if I uh, revealed your big secret, but that's going to be that's a pretty funny idea. I like it. All right, this is uh, neither here nor there, just John being an idiot. So John's talking about the Yankees, and they're in the playoffs. He's all excited, and someone says they're going to choke, and, and John's got to come back for that. The Yankees choke like they always do. Um, let's see, uh, 27 world championships. Oh, Doesn't faces. sound like choking to me. Six in my lifetime. All right. They've won seven in his lifetime. He was born in 1965. Mm -hmm. He's 57 years old. They've won seven World Series. I know how many World Series the Cubs have won in my lifetime, maybe because the number is one. (laughs) But still, I would think that he would know it's seven, not six. And he's trying to be all smug. He's like, oh, they're the best fucking team ever. They've won six in the last 57 years. Like, no, they won seven, John. Was he sleeping during one of them? Did he black out that day? I don't know. Anything's possible, but fucking idiot. All right, so then Jules David who is uh, Mike David Redbar's wife, but this is not the real Jules David. This is someone trolling John, pretending to be Jules David, which is why John was trying to message Mike David over Instagram to try to get him on his side to go after Anthony Cumia. And then Mike David went on his show and went, John, you're a fucking retard. I'm not talking to you. Are you crazy? So, you know, everyone's, everyone's making points on John. Everyone's hitting threes on this guy. So this is Jules David uh, pointing out that his shirt is inside out. Jules David. Yeah, I know. That's the new look. Uh, <laughs> so he, his, his instincts are always wrong, you know? So she goes, your shirt's inside. He goes, yeah, no, I did that on purpose. But not, but seriously, though, he, did, he was like laughing it off. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, all the kids are doing that. Everyone's peeing their pants. It's the coolest. <laughs> you know, it's like, John, <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? I right. had to turn it inside. I had cum on the front of it. <laughs> so now... This is great because John brings on his guest and, you know, it starts with the, uh, uh, he's reading the chat. He's getting confused. He brings on his guest and what he decides he's going to do, he's got a strategy. He's going to turn off his screen while his guest is on, pull his shirt off, put it on the right way, put it back on. No one's going to notice. It's going to be seamless. The problem is he forgot to ask his guest a question that he could respond to <laughs> so that the guest was talking during this. So the guest is just standing there like, what, what just happened? What 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 is going on right now? Uh, and uh, and there we go. Um, okay. Action. Now, without further ado, let's bring on the. Man, when I was in New York, I rebooted my computer twice on stage. He's like rebooting his brain. Like he's like, oh, I'm just gonna do a restart. Give me a second. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> it's his meditation. Your system started because there was a problem. Do you want to report it? Uh, no, uh, I, I did not save my six terabyte backups. <laughs> uh, the cloud. Let's bring on the man, the myth, the legend. Here he is, Brian J. Caram on the show today. Hey, Brian. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> so John brings on Brian, immediately takes him off the screen <laughs> because he hit the wrong button. So now it's just John. So he, then he brings him back. What's going on, bro? Nothing much. How you doing? And now John is gone. Yep. What's going on, bro? And then he leaves. And now watch as Brian tries to figure out what to do here. He's just like, uh... All right, the guy hosting the You're show there? is gone. Should I have not called him bro? <laughs> yeah, why did I find it? Was it the, my green hat? Is that what offended him? Yeah. <laughs> John's like, oh my God, a real leprechaun. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your gold. <laughs> Give me your the gold. Answer to all my money problems. <laughs> <laughs> uh, holy shit. Oh, there we go. <laughs> hey, how you doing, Brian? <laughs> well, yeah, I lost you there, it seems like. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Something, I don't know. This shit always goes weird on me. You're a liar. You're a liar. You know something that you're not telling us, you slimy scumbag liar. 
John tries to play it off like, oh, yeah, technical problems. You know, it happens. Meanwhile, he comes back. His shirt is now the right way, but it's all disheveled. It's all over yeah. the place. He must. I would have loved to have seen it. It's like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> must have been fucking hilarious. And then he just fucking lies. Oh, yeah, I don't know what happened. It's just, you know, what are you going to do? So now we're 12 minutes into the show at this point. And John finally buttons his shirt up. It's what he's been wanting to do from the get-go. That's what he was trying to do when he realized, like, oh, shit. Brian, why aren't, we, why aren't we searching those places? Well, maybe search warrants will be coming for them shortly. But he can't really decide whether or not. I mean, if there's a subpoena, there's a subpoena, and he'll have to live with it. The fucking so place. Donald Trump can claim he can win it all he wants, but he has absolutely no voice in that. You did it, Johnny. I knew you could. I knew you could do it. <laughs> what an idiot. Oh, yeah. All right. What this fuck is this dude like putting glasses and hats and shit on? What? <laughs> yeah, I know. That's his he's, thing. He's going over visual gags. This is a this is the guy we were talking about in New York too, because yeah, he was yeah. on his show just last week. And every time that John was doing something embarrassing, this guy was putting on his sunglasses like, "Oh fuck, <laughs> I don't want to be seen with this <laughs> asshole. This yeah, is not good." Exactly. <laughs> All right, so now here's another example of John not paying attention to his guest. And he does this all the time. The guest is talking. John's fucking with his shirt. He's getting a a drink of uh, water. If there's a subpoena and the judge issues it, they'll search. (laughs) And good luck to Donald. He'll need it. What do you think's going on in Donald Trump's head right now? I don't know. Have you ever seen a BB rattle around inside of tin can. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Uh, <laughs> Kevin, it's the, the worst political show anyone's <laughs> ever made. And I'm including like sixth grade UN and whatever the fuck they're doing in elementary schools right now. <laughs> this is insane what these people are doing. And look, I'm not on Trump's side, but what is going on in Donald's head right now? He's not thinking about you. You're thinking about him. So that's one thing. Who's dumber? The billionaire who was the president or the YouTuber who makes $600 a month and had to take all of his videos down because everyone on the internet is clowning him right now. Every video, this video included, is gone. As soon as he gets done recording it, it's gone. You can't find it. He has deleted every, not deleted, probably unlisted, every single YouTube video. (laughs) He's a joke. (laughs) He can't operate his shirt. He can't operate his shirt. Yeah. And he's like, God, that Donald Trump guy is such an idiot. Yeah. Like, well, I don't know if you should be the one saying that, sir. Because listen to this. I don't know. I, I hate getting into the political parts of these shows, Kevin. But listen to the analysis of a recent debate that John didn't watch, but saw the clips from that some other, I think it was the Lincoln Project or one of these like very left leaning organizations that puts out propaganda videos, they put together clips. To make it look like Rubio lost the debate, and this is John's analysis of it. I think now, I got to tell you, Brian. I watched. I don't know if you got to see any of the clips from the Val Demings, uh, 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 the Rubio and Demings fucking debate. She fucking ate him alive. Well, <laughs> did you expect anything different? Right. Oh my god! Did, did you see the debate? It's, it's she won. Like... Yeah, I know. That's the that's the team I root for. Of course, of course, she won. Yeah. <laughs> good, good stuff, guys. Is there <laughs> a reason like why? That. Was there an issue that she had a better idea <laughs> on? Was there anything that she said that you liked? Or she wiped the floor with them? Yeah, <laughs> sure did. I mean, who's who? The fuck is watching this show? I, for content wise, I often forget that it's a political show. I know. I forget that's the format. Because no one ever pulls these parts oh, of the show. It's right, so we never get there. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> so, again, remember, John did this with this guy just last week. Again, he talks about how Rubio tweets out Bible verses, and John responds with his own Confucius responses to this. And, again, John's proud of himself for the tweet that he put out. Well, I love the fact that she called him out for his, his Bible verses I don't know if you see those fucking things he tweets out. It's like, it's hysterical to me. <laughs> and I always tweet back at him. Uh, Confucius say, man who fought in church sits in his own pew. And I just well, like. <laughs> so John, again, is proud of his tweet. And 
think about this. this is, again, it's something he did not even write. Yeah. It's not funny. Brian's not reacting as if that was a funny thing to say. It's childish. But again, John is proud of himself for something that someone else wrote. I write back to these things that are all over the internet. He said he always tweets that back. Too. Yeah, like, right. Oh, wow. Good never one, gets John. Old. Wow. <laughs> Surprised uh, Rubio's even still a public figure. I, yeah. I would think he'd be like uh, hiding under his desk by now, you know? <laughs> Holy oh, shit. God. You really got him good with that oh. one. <sighs> so I write back to him. Roses are red. Violets are blue. All right. So this is uh, Uncle Paul. You know who Uncle Paul is, Kevin. He I gets sure involved. Do. He gets involved in the chat here because John has not done a beer on the balcony in a couple of weeks now. This is what we pay for. This is the whole point of being a YouTube member or a Patreon member. Is you get the exclusive beer on the balcony. <laughs> Paul Hargis, thanks for the two bucks. When's the next beer in the balcony? You know, I I was supposed to have a guest. I was going to do it today with Greg Prado, and then he had to talk to. David Crosby. I mean, who is this guy? Crosby, still Nash, and you know, Crosby? Who's that old guy over there? Uncle Paul, Uncle Paul, with the creepy old guy stare. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle Paul. This guy's responding to Uncle Paul as if it's a real person. Uncle Paul wants to know, where's the beer on the balcony? Sorry, Uncle <laughs> Paul, we'll get to it. I, you know, my, my guest had better people to talk to. He wanted to talk to uh, an actual celebrity instead of me, so... He had a bad Dorkles the clown wants to know. <laughs> yeah, we gotta get Dorkles in the, the chat. The fucking fictional people that he thinks are real. <laughs> the fan base is really expanding. We got Dorkles here. Yeah. We got Dorkles. <laughs> Doug Bell. We got the Fop guy. We got <laughs> yeah. Fucking Commanders here. <laughs> I'd like to see how the Fop guy writes his questions to John. <laughs> oh, dear stuttering John. Oh, let me let me dip my pen in some ink here. Oh. <laughs> okay, this this has to happen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just because of the way that John would read it back, all matter of fact. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, he'd be like, uh, oh, I dip my pen in the ink. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, you know you know they make pens with the ink already in them now. I don't know why you would okay uh uh, uh, why would you have a feather? <laughs> What's the feather for? Confucius right. say <laughs> that inside out shirts <laughs> will hide the powdered wigs. <laughs> All right. So John is, and this is the part that the dabblers don't pay attention to, that no one pays attention to. John is so good at running a talk show because if you think about how a talk show usually works, I, I watch a lot of talk shows. <laughs> Bill Maher comes to mind, you know, and Bill Maher has a guest on mm -hmm. and they go back and forth yeah. and he asks a question. The guy answers and maybe Bill Maher interjects with something and they go back and forth. They have a discussion around it. This is John style of interviewing someone. And yes, I did speed it up a few times here just so we could get through it. What's your thought about that? You see, John, that's when you could have changed your shirt. Yeah. <laughs> What's your thoughts on that? And that changed your shirt. He could have gone shopping. <laughs> <laughs> he comes back. He's got a 12-pack of Coors yeah. and sets it down. Oh, Brian, you're still here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the sad thing is, is that John's getting all the super chats. Yeah. He provides none of the actual content, if you can call any of this content. Right. Provides none of it. Just lets his guests ramble on and on and on. Because John doesn't have a thought in his head. Anyone who was like a real talk show host would have interjected with something as this guy's going on and on. The, the question was about whether you think the Dems will lose the House and the Senate in the midterm elections. And this guy's going on and on and on. And if John was following politics like he should be, because that's his job now, it's not a good paying job, don't get me wrong, but he would have something to say in, in this at some point. And he doesn't. He sucks. 
I don't say this often enough. John sucks at his job. <laughs> He's really bad at broadcasting. <laughs> All right. So uh, then you see the question here from Baby Yoda. Can you please leave episode your episode up so I can watch it after work? It's hard to watch live because of work, and I missed Tuesday's show because it was gone. Because like I said, John does the show live on YouTube, and then he unlists it, and you can't get to it anymore. Even if you're a Patreon subscriber, we, we showed that on the last show, where a Patreon subscriber was going through their Patreon feed, and all the videos were gone. You still have all these posts, but you can't watch the videos, so it's kind of a ripoff. And uh, so John addresses this. No, and that's like, well, I'm going to ask you about a few of these races. Baby Yoda, thanks for the five bucks. John, can you please leave episode up so I can watch it after work? It's too hard to watch live because we're working on this Tuesday show because it was gone. Something's going on. Something's going on with my YouTube. I don't know what's going on, but I don't know about oh, you, but I have so many problems when it comes to YouTube. It's just like, just you know, I gotta, you know, I gotta figure out a different way. You're a liar. You're a liar. <laughs> you know something that you're not telling us, you slimy scumbag liar. John's lying. John is the one who's putting these shows and, and changing them to unlisted because he's very upset that Shuli is dunking at him yeah. over and over and over again. I mean, he's not a fan of myself either, but he is really upset about all the shows that are goofing at him now. And he makes it very clear. He tweets about it all the time, about how proud of it he is. If you're so proud of it, John, why is all your content gone from the Internet? Yeah, he says <laughs> something's going on with my YouTube, like something's going on with my stomach. Like, right, yeah. You know, it's vague. I could right. never get to the bottom of it. Yeah, maybe my medication. Maybe <laughs> yeah. I need to sleep more. But I mean, YouTube's just not working. Does that know. happen to you? <laughs> it's a, you know what I mean, right? <laughs> it's my damn internet. It's my Xfinity, my Comcast. Yeah. <laughs> my neighbor's internet. All right, so this is um, this is interesting. There, there was a big scoop that happened this week, and uh, I'm going to get into it a little bit here. Michael asks, thanks for the five bucks, going skiing on the K2 Summit. I don't even know where that is. It's going to be That's filled a with large spikes. mountain, the K2, the second largest mountain in the world in the Himalayas. Wish me luck. Ready, set, build. I've heard a lot about it. Um, okay. So that person who just put that in there was Michael S. It has been discovered, Tony Michaels who forgets people's names all the time. Who's Anthony Cumia again? Didn't know who Chrissy Mayer was. What's her, what's her name again? Pretends he doesn't remember people's names. He didn't uh, know Kanye. <laughs> he didn't know who Ye was. Yeah. He might not know who he is mm. because his real name is not Tony Michaels. It's yeah. Michael Anthony Sosnowski. And this is, you haven't heard about this yet? No. Okay. Muttering Jay. Go to his Twitter page. Okay. He's got the full expose on this, and it's amazing. The, the investigative journalism is going on, and it's because Tony or Michael, whatever the fuck your name is, you fucked with the wrong person. You see, and this is what Chad did, too. Chrissy Mayer is beloved. She's the queen of the dabblers. The dabblers just keep getting stronger and stronger every day. You cannot fight against the dabblers. There's too many of them. You are outnumbered. And so when you say shit and you're like, fuck Chrissy Mayer, fuck that ass. Oh, really? Fuck Chrissy Mayer? Oh, yeah, Chad? Oh, oh yeah? Oh, yeah, Tony Michaels? Well, the reason why that person wrote about the uh, K2 Summit and the Spice, apparently back when he was Michael Sosnowski, he was busted in a synthetic marijuana drug uh, dealing ring. Oh. That K2 shit. Oh, yeah. It's like, like bath salt or whatever it is, like really bad for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy who's like nugs, not drugs on his coffee mug, the whole wholesome like family guy guy was a drug dealer and was arrested for it. See, it, it's, it's fascinating to me because the people who yelled the loudest on the internet have the most to hide. This guy's down there going, fuck yeah. him, fuck you. I'm the fucking shit. You don't know shit about dicks. Like, well, I know more about your past than you want me to. <laughs> and now we all do. You fucking asshole. Yeah. And he also has this other business. There, there's, there's a lot more that I don't care as much about in there that that uh, Muttering Jay uncovered at Muttering Jay on Twitter. But it's fascinating. It is fascinating. I don't think um, our buddy Suttering John knows this yet, but it's not surprising to me that he associates himself with criminals no, who act no. like they're fucking better than everyone else. Yeah, not surprising. No surprise there at all. So, so the dabblers they don't dabble. Dude, there's no dabbling going on by the dabblers themselves. They've actually got their shit together, yeah. which is really funny. All right. 
This is, uh, this is, you know, once again, someone calls out John for lying. And John just keeps putting this shit up on the screen. But this one shows up for just one second. So this clip is the entire time you see this comment on the screen. Uh, well, oh. All right. John, are you claiming you didn't intentionally make your YouTube vids private? So that's a $5 Canadian, um, you know, uh, super chat. And John puts it up there and then immediately goes, oh, shit, got to get rid of that because he's lying. Yeah. He knows he's lying. It's obvious. We all know he's lying. It's very obvious. So I thought that was kind of funny. And then um, Jules David again, once again, is concerned about the fact that she's a YouTube member and she can't watch any of the YouTube videos. So if you pay five bucks a month on YouTube, Kevin... You should get mm-hmm. access to all of his videos, including his beer on the balcony. But apparently, they're gone for even people who are paying him on YouTube. Jules did. Thanks for the five bucks. Yeah, I'm working on this. Something's with YouTube right now. I don't know what it's. You're a liar. You're a liar. <laughs> you know something that you're not telling us, you slimy scumbag liar. Yeah, John's a fucking liar. Fuck? <laughs> all right. But the good news uh... is he's going to make up for all these missed beer on the balconies. But I will, I'll make it up to all my Patreon people. I'll do two. If I have to do two in one day, I'll be half in a bag by the second show, but it might be fun. Yes, I agree. It might be fun. Please do two beer on the balconies in one day. I'll be your guest. I don't give a shit. I'll kill an hour. That'd be fun. Let's do that. So looking forward to that. What a fucking train wreck. It's it's, it's been off the rails for a while, but it's still going somehow. It's like, what is even propelling this thing anymore? How is this thing being propelled? Lies. (laughs) Good thing when it crashed, it was going downhill because it's just going and going and going. It's fucking amazing. (laughs) And uh, oh my God, someone made a a Chicky McSpice Pringles uh, container. Oh, fuck Tony Michaels. What an idiot. All right. This is the last clip I have from John's uh, recent episode on Thursday. And he, he ends the show by telling you you have to get out there and vote. And, Kevin, you know how important voting is, obviously. but I sure do. This election, it's more important than ever. Uh, get out and vote. As Brian said, we have to go out and vote because everything depends on this. We ha- This is the most important election of our lifetime. What? The most important election of our lifetime? Is that even possibly true? What's he talking about? The midterms of <laughs> Joe Biden's presidency are the most important elections of our lifetime? I, I, guys, I might sleep at that Tuesday. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> My calendar's full. I don't know. <laughs> I don't find it to be all that important. Even more important of a vote than pick the new Mountain Dew flight. <laughs> <laughs> That was one. That, that was a, a turning point. <laughs> it was a turning point for Taco Bell. I regret not voting yeah, that Taco year. Bell. <laughs> yeah. All right. I want to make an announcement. Um, we're going to start doing a separate show that's just stuttering John videos, but it's only for Patreon members who donate twenty three hundred dollars per month. It's a new tier I'm developing. Mm-hmm. So if you give me two thousand three hundred dollars per month, and, and we'll probably up it each month from there. You probably have to give us more and more. Yeah. Then you can get that content. And it'll be like one show a month, maybe a half a show a month. So that's an announcement to check that out. Cool. Yeah. We could spin a wheel for how much people pay. <laughs> that's a right? good idea, too. Right. Yeah. 2300 would be the minimum. <laughs> you, right. You'll hope it lands at 2300 <laughs> <laughs> Bankrupt. That's my new uh, get-rich-quick scheme. Another guy that we keep an eye on is... Sick of it. Uh. And just in time for Halloween, Tony Muskrat comes in with This is Dabbling.
Pop a blue chew, chug some tea. Do you like gross comedy? Clean up, come with box of briefs. My dad was cheap. How cheap was he? This is dabbling. This is dabbling. Are you still fucking your wife? This is dabbling. Audience is straggling. 12 a.m. On a Tuesday night. It's my show. What a great set. Oh, oh. Northwest. I am the one with bologna and cheese, brown fingernails, and liver disease. I am the one who blocked my mom, stains on my shirt, and scabs on my palm. This is dabbling. This is dabbling. Dabbling, 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 dabbling. famous than Jay Leno? He did my show. Are you more famous than Harry Mandel? He did my show. <laughs> Tony Maskrat does not disappoint. Wow. It was very well done. <laughs> it was very well done. <laughs> All right, let's get into what Centering John is up to, because I have clips from his most recent episode, which was just yesterday, and John comes on the show. Mike, you're not going to see this, but he looks terrible. Oh, no. I have never seen him look this bad. I have to start right at the beginning of this one. Oh, he looks okay. Oh, I got wrong guy. It. Yeah, <laughs> ah, baby. Welcome to the world famous Stuttering John podcast with your world famous host, Stuttering John Melendez. How are you? I hope you're doing fine. Oh, there's so much to talk about, so much to unfold. You like this old kind of retro Stuttering John t shirt? Pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> Pretty cool shirt, huh? Retro. All right. A few things to point out. First off, he's got some type of dead animal on top of his microphone. Okay. This is so Mike Morse on Uncle Rico. Every episode, he adds a new thing on top of the mic because it just gets dirtier and dirtier. <laughs> this is John pretending to have a good sense of humor. He doesn't because we're going to play a 12 minute rant in a little bit. <laughs> of course. He has no sense of humor about this at all. Oh, it's like an I got my eye on you sort of thing. But he's, yeah, he's pretending to be like, oh, yeah, no, I get it. I get jokes, right. guys. I'm with you guys on that one. Now, somebody said it looks like his eyes have tits. Like the, the bags <laughs> under his eyes are Vic esque. His eyes are so <laughs> swollen. It's not a good look for him. I don't know what's going on. I've never seen him look this bad before. And then he's got his new shirt on, or his old shirt, centeringjohn.com, which, by the way, he does not own. Centeringjohn.com <laughs> is available for sale. The uh, The minimum offer is set at nine fifty. if anyone wants to buy centeringjohn.com. That I can't is believe available. you don't own it. Well, maybe I will. I don't know. I, maybe I'll get a, a group together, like how you, when you buy a football team. Yeah. I'll get some investors <laughs> together. We'll buy SutteringJohn.com. I'm in as a minority partner. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Blind Mike's in, but he doesn't have any rights over what we put on the website. He's just <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> he just helped chip that a little bit. Okay. So that's how the show starts off. And um, I guess there's a guy in John's chat who's complaining that John's late. Now, this is something that is, I don't know if you call it a trope, but for every internet show, there's at least one or two assholes who go, oh, you're late, oh, late and gay. Like, that's just a thing that people do. Whether right. you're late or not, I don't know why it's still funny, but John does not find it funny at all. Uh, Anti-establishment. I do the show at noon PST for the last five years. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I'm not running late. And uh, I am removing him. <laughs> you get what? banned for that. Hey, John, you're what? late. You're fucking out of here, asshole. <laughs> not putting up with that shit. <laughs> Jesus, John. Fucking it would be triggered. one thing if I was late. <laughs> yeah, right. He, 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 goes, he goes, I actually showed up on time. I shouldn't have. I look like shit. Yeah. I should have taken a shower, but I didn't. <laughs> he looks terrible. <laughs> 
Oh my god! And what a sense of humor he's got for I a know. stand-up comedian. You know, he really rolls with the punches. And <laughs> yeah. honestly, you don't have to look at your chat at all if you don't want to. I very right. rarely look at the chat that he says. These people you don't have nice to things look to at say. It, but I get for you sighted folk, it gets addicting. But my <laughs> thing with John is you don't have to read that. If right. it really bothers you, just don't say it. Who gives a fuck? And I don't know that John's in a position to be banning everybody. He really just needs as many people watching him as possible. Yeah, he's going to run out. And, and now he's got that substitute teacher money. He's just like, I don't even need this yeah, shit. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm too oh. good for my own show now. <laughs> well, here, here's something interesting, though, that I noticed is John is now losing money on this shit because I watched a good chunk of this episode. Yeah. Not on John's channel because he takes it down, so I couldn't watch it there. I just watched it from other people's channels. Yes. So now he's not even getting like views from me. Correct. And actually, I was watching another person's video because everyone's making videos about John now. Right. (laughs) That showed the social blade stats and how he's missing out on thousands of views a day because he took all of his videos down. Right. I don't know what his strategy is. And you know what? I, I should say this because John's been hacked before. We've talked about this where people were fucking with his videos and sending them to like safer children in the middle of a show and then people would get kicked out. Right. And then he figured that out finally and, and made some changes. I guess it's possible someone's fucking with him and taking his videos down because he claims to not know what's going on. And I don't know. Something's weird. My YouTube. I just find it implausible because I think he'd be throwing more of a stink about it. I think if if someone was really fucking with John, like he's claiming, yeah. like, yeah, YouTube's just taking all my videos down, I think he'd be, like, screaming about it. Yeah, especially and after w- having a great conversation with YouTube. <laughs> well, let's not forget about that. Yeah. After that big meeting, how could he not be an insider yet? <laughs> Mr. YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Your father who founded YouTube, would he be proud? Yeah, right. <laughs> all right. Let's just he watch- me on Stern. <laughs> let's just watch some of the John's... Dead air this is my favorite part of his show. I could string this together for days on end and just pop popcorn and never get bored. Uh, uh, hold on. Uh, it is strangely comforting. It is. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> oh, I, I used to go to sleep a long time ago with CDs or like nature sounds and tropical yeah. rainforest or rainstar or like whatever it was. Yeah. I could literally go to sleep just uh, uh okay. Uh, I mean, I'm not shitting you. I when I turn on before bed, I I go to sleep listening to Cardiff break these down. <laughs> That's great. It's very soothing. That sounds creepy, but I'll take your word for it. <laughs> So people start pointing out that John looks like shit because mm-hmm. he looks like shit. Yeah. And they're like, John, are you okay? I know the Yankees got swept. You had a bender. What's going on here? And John claims, no, he's fine. He got a ton of sleep last night. Uh, sure. Oh, man, did I sleep last night? I went to bed at 730. I was exhausted. I was uh, I was teaching P.E. And I don't know. I just got tired playing basketball with the kids. <laughs> What's okay? In fact, I'm still sleeping. Do, by the way, if he was teaching PE, yeah. how many times did he tell the students he beat Shaq at basketball? <laughs> yeah. Oh how many God. times did he tell that fucking story? I'm gonna every guess, time he blocks one. <laughs> first period, second period. Oh yeah, you know these towered over these seventh graders like yeah, right, block, yeah. Block. <laughs> every time he posterizes one of these kids, <laughs> he's blocking everyone. <laughs> <laughs> There's one thing I'm good at: it's blocking. <laughs> I gotta say, I mean, it's been a number of years since I was in school. I don't remember the gym teacher running point when no. we play basketball. You're not supposed to. That's not your your job. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "All right, shirts and skids. I'm shirts. Let's go." <laughs> <laughs> That's how that works. <laughs> but apparently, he was exhausted. Yeah. Not from going to the bar, but from playing basketball with the students sure. all day. Went to bed at seven thirty. Does that look like a man who went to bed at 7.30 the night before? <laughs> I ask you, Producer Chris. No. He looks terrible. That, that's not like a guy getting a good night's sleep. <laughs> it looks like a man who went to bed at 7.30 9,000 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great. I always love when John brings up little humble brags about what's going on in his life. Uh, just got off the phone with the producer of a show. Ooh. Actually wants me to come on. 
<laughs> and Can you believe me. it, folks? Yeah. Which is kind of cool. Did you hear that last part, Mike? Oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry, this. I missed the name. We play this again. And pay me. <laughs> which is kind of cool. <laughs> <I> thought... <laughs> all right, so let's say that this is a real thing, I, which I never believe because John yeah. lies all the time. But he said, I just got the phone with the producer of a show who wants to have me on. My guess is John. the first words out of John's mouth is, what does this pay? Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's not just like, oh, that sounds like a great opportunity. What you know? What are the details? No. I just pay something. What does it pay? Because that's John's first thing he says. He goes, I just got off the phone with the producer, and he's going to pay me. That's not what most people say about going on a show. But It's also not a thing he should be telling his audience until he can announce it. Right. Like, who gives a fuck? Well, right. This is a thing that John does all the time where he promises things that never come to fruition. And it just gives us more ammo. Like, are we supposed to write in our calendar? All right, John will be somewhere on some day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he didn't even say television show. It could be anything. Just follow right. the stink lines. <laughs> and honestly, there's a lot of interest in Centering John. He was just trending on Twitter the other day. There's a yeah, lot going that. on. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot going on with Centering John Melendez right now. I wouldn't be surprised. If there's a show that's like, we got to get this fucking guy. I got to talk to this guy. Yeah. Right? right. You would think there'd be a lot of phone calls coming in for that type of thing. If John was still had any type of representation and management going on, which he doesn't anymore, they would be fielding phone calls to figure out like, oh, you're the Internet's biggest train wreck. How, how did yeah. this happen? You know, like it'd be a fun question to ask. By the <laughs> yeah. way, with the way John looks, it looks like he already spent the money that he hasn't been paid yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's how he got his stutteringjohn.com t-shirt. He had quite a night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so then his mom calls in, not to the show, but calls him while he's doing the show. Oh, I saw so he's great. Uh, uh, this is my mom. Called. This is what cracks me up, and I love Uncle Rico. But they go back and they find clips from years ago, and all this just like just just watch the most recent episode. <laughs> I have more <laughs> clips that we could get through just from watching the most re- every fucking episode. This guy is the worst broadcaster in the history of it's, broadcasting. It's endless. So like, <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, tomorrow I'm recording an episode of Why Are You Laughing about uh, Joe Matarese's breakdown. Oh, that'll be fun. And well, I, as I was like doing prep for the show and everything, I thought to myself, Joe Matter, the Joe Matter story is not that different from Stuttering John. But right. Joe Matter got old after a while. Right. Stuttering John gets better every day. It's weird. It, I, it, it seems endless. Everyone's trying to predict the end of the Dabbleverse. And yeah. it's interesting because people are like, ah, I don't know. There's too many shows. I was getting oversaturated, but it just keeps growing. Yeah. And John gets so, worse and worse. Yeah. I really have a belief. Yeah. And may, I, I know I'm going to sound like every Opie and Anthony fan that says, like, ah, the, Opie, Anthony, and Jimmy are going to get back together one day. It's never going to happen. Right. But I truly believe that one day you, Shuli, maybe even Anthony, and John will be all on stage clinking your cores together. <laughs> I really believe at some point he's going to join in on the fun. I could see Shuli doing that. I would never do that. Oh, you wouldn't do it? No, because that, what fun would that be? Let's <laughs> goof it onto his face. What's the point? Right. What am I, I going to fucking pull a Patrick Michael clips and be like, hey, is this guy an idiot? Am I right, John? Like, yeah. If, <laughs> uh, if John was in a dunk tank. And, uh... <laughs> oh, my God. It's so funny you brought that up. I had a meeting this morning about a live event. And that was Ooh. brought up. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> a drunk tank without the R. <laughs> my mom... Hold on. Hold on. Mom, I'm on the air, Mom. Yeah, she knows. <laughs> she watches your show. <laughs> so what happened? Did you change something? So immediately he accuses her of doing something wrong. A guy who's blocked everyone. Who's, he's not supposed to be blocking anyone. He's blocking everyone. His mom's like, I can't see the show. He's like, well, what did you do? Did you <laughs> fuck it up? <laughs> all right, all right. I'll, I'll deal with it. All right, uh, I'll deal with it. Yeah. All right, I love you. Yeah, like he's Tony Soprano. Yeah. All right, I got it. <laughs> My poor mom can't get on. Yeah. Ma, you bungled this hit. I'll take care of it. <laughs> Leave it to me. I got to clean up again. That's fine. That's my role here. And by hey, the way, Carl, would you... I was talking through that because there was so much dead air as he's just listening to his mom ramble on about who knows what on his show. <laughs> I don't mean to keep interrupting. Would you give me five minutes? My aunt wants to find out how to listen to your show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now John's going to talk about people fucking with his family. 
and is going to accuse a certain type of person oh, yeah. for doing such a thing. Unless, you know, these cowardly trolls are, 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 are doing the best to screw with an 85-year-old woman out of one of her joys in life to watch her son show and this is this is their <laughs> cowardly poorly. way of 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 trying to screw with my family which apparently they don't seem to have any issue doing um but you know that's what cowards are that's what these right wing loons do they bully people as my mom told let's see maybe that's her we'll see <laughs> i'm going through all the block people sorry for this Sorry for this little, uh, you know. Oh, why, there. Why there. apologize now? I think she can come on. <laughs> By the way, his mom's name, her first name starts with two A's. How hard is it to find her? I mean, how many people are blind? He's like, Aaron. He's going through all the <laughs> AA names. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> how many could there be? It's all just AA sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So he claims that only right wingers. Go after people's families. Just last week, we documented this. John was celebrating, if not involved with, people fucking with Anthony's oh. brother, Joe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Calling him, spoofing Anthony's number, acting like he was in trouble with the police, trying to freak him out. John was retweeting that with screenshots and laughing about it. And now he's going, only these fucking right-wing lunatics would fuck with someone's family. Yes, I said it's not funny to go after my family. Right. right. His hypocrisy <laughs> knows no bounds, as they say. Okay. Can, so now, can I ask real quick? Yeah. Because I, I listened to this, and I heard him saying that, like, you know, you guy, you crazy racists, bounced his mom from the chat. I didn't understand how that was possible. What is he talking about? Dude. Do you think he knows what he's talking about? I'm oh, supposed okay. to know. All right. Good. I'm, I'm supposed to know what he's talking about. I'm just making sure. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, I have no I have no clue. He 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 obviously throws a lot of things out there because nothing is his fault. As they you know. banned my mother from YouTube. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now uh someone points out that he looks like shit. You know, his eyes are I've just never seen him look like this before. Uh what's wrong with my eyes? I don't know. I have no idea. Me you neither. You have no idea, John. Like, that's not a good excuse. That that's actually more scary. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then he elaborates on that. Uh, I know it looks like I just woke up, but I I don't know what it is. I really don't know. Uh, I slept like eleven straight hours. I was really tired. Rhonda Wilson, Miriam Chef. So it could be that. <laughs> I, got, I got too much sleep is why I look like shit <laughs> said no one ever yeah, what? Doesn't make any you know what it probably is I'm too healthy yeah I think I'm, <laughs> yeah, uh, right I just I've been, been nourished too properly <laughs> I've been spending too much time at the gym uh, I'm eating too many vitamins and supplements I mean the, the, I'm going crazy with vegetables I OD'd on broccoli yesterday it's a lot of reasons why I look like how <laughs> oh, yeah I hadn't thought about it much but now that you mention it that's what it is I think he claims he slept for 11 hours straight he said he went to bed at 7 30 i did the quick math that means he got up at 6 30 a.m this show was at <laughs> noon does this look like look like a guy who's been up for five and a half hours uh, <laughs> i mean i don't look, know he doesn't lie he doesn't like to lie he is, he's, uh, the man who spews truth from every orifice <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I, I guess it depends on what he was doing for that five and a half hours maybe it would look like that but wow not good. owning right. kids on the basketball court again maybe yeah so the problem here, which is always the problem on John's show, is that his guest is late and he has to fill time. That's always right. a problem for him. So yes. then he calls up Richard Ojeda and is like, <laughs> dude, what the fuck? Uh, uh, Nikki Free, now let's wake the Army Major up. I, this is always fun. Call Richard Ojeda. So he's making a phone call. <sighs> and I thought it was Ojeda, but it is. Okay. Hey, John. Where are you? Man, I'm going to have my, my, my wife needed me at the storage. Shit. Uh, <laughs> I'll try to get back as soon as I can. Dude, I, you were supposed to be on 20 minutes ago. Yeah, I know. Freaking my wife needed me at the storage. I wasn't thinking. All right. Bye. <laughs> All right. You're late for non-work. <laughs> <Major. laughs> That's yeah. in the top 11 lies. First Nikki could <laughs> storage. And now Leonie Major. <laughs> what the hell is going on here? 
<laughs> I got to say, it's a great way to maintain relationships. Mm-hmm. When someone's late to come on your show and they're volunteering their time so that you can make super chats, you definitely want to call them and reprimand them live on the internet. Yes. And, Where and, are you, you cocksucking prick? Yeah. <laughs> your wife, that smelly cunt. What's she up to? <laughs> John. But, and by the way, Richard Ojeda is a loser. That guy is a loser. The fact that he associates with John as much as he does, it, it tells you everything you need, you need to know. Mm-hmm. But even he's going to get sick of this guy. Yeah. And that's going to be interesting. When Richard's just like, all right, I don't need you in my life anymore. That's going to be a turning point for John, I have a feeling. You think that'll be the bottom? <laughs> he yeah. seems unhinged. Like, I almost want to cover Richard Ojeda yeah. <laughs> more, than, more than John. He seems like a loose cannon. Oh, Richard's hilarious. <laughs> He's a lunatic. Yeah, that could be a bonus episode. That could be my purpose in this world. I'll cover Richard Ojeda while you guys cover Stuttery John. <laughs> That's I'm fine with that. Curb stomping with Richard yeah, Ojeda. There, there's a lot. There's a lot to All talk right, about. <laughs> that guy is fucking a loose cannon. All right, this is more on. So John is complaining more about how Richard's late to his show. Uh, go here as I wait for the Army Major. Man, you're booked on a show, man. You say, honey, I'm booked on a show. Yeah, apparently he doesn't take it that seriously, John. Yeah, he's at storage. Tell your wife to fuck off. Yeah. (laughs) And also, I'm just going to say this. John, what you could do is maybe have a thought in your head. Do some type of prep for your show. You apparently have been up for five and a half hours. Maybe you could have read a news article or two and saved the link or watched a video and been ready to play that. Like, be prepared for your guests to be late or absent, have something else prepared and ready to go. And if he really, at the beginning of the show, he goes, we got a lot to talk about today. If he really did have a lot to talk about, this would not be a problem. Right. This <laughs> proves he cannot run his own show. He could wait it out and edit. He'll never do that. Yeah. <laughs> he does the opposite. He takes his, his show down. This yeah. is the only version of the show you could possibly hear. He's not even keeping up with the podcast anymore. I don't know what's going on with He's this He's always guy. one step ahead of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. To All Chris's right. to, to Chris's point about like editing and shit though, or starting the show later, or whatever. Like, if I didn't show up today, you and Chris would have been fine. I'm pretty. I'm a fan of the show. I'm pretty confident you guys would have done all right. Would have been. But sad. it would be wild if instead you started the show mm. and just for 40 minutes we're like, where the fuck is this asshole? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, just motherfucked you. <laughs> yeah. I'm like this, guys, I'm sorry. This <laughs> literally happened years ago. Ryan Long, oh yeah, did not show up. Yeah, and okay. I could not get a hold of him. And I go, all right, Chris, I just got to start the show. We oh, just started yeah. the show. We you did... were almost screwed with me co-hosting. We Holy did about shit. ten minutes, <laughs> and then all of a sudden Ryan messaged me, and I'm like, all right, cool. And then we brought him on. But like you, like your point there, Mike. It's like, yeah, it, the show must go on. Yes, if that's kind of the rule of show business. You got to figure it out. You got to wing it. When my you didn't say Ryan, didn't... you're late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When my computer didn't work in New York City, I didn't, as uh, Sean suggested, I didn't smash my computer like it's a guitar oh. and run off the stage. That is a good idea. <laughs> it would have been funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is a long clip. We can just let it play. We can pause it. We can talk. Whatever you guys want to do. But now John is talking about how Adidas has fired Ye over his yes. anti-Semitic comments. And, of course, in John's mind, he has to go straight to... Anthony Cumia and Shuli Egar and Bob Levy Natural. and Kevin from Why Do I Podcast and just talk about how we're all just as terrible and we should all be fired from every company that we work with because we're just like yay. As you can see in my chat, I do have trolls. <laughs> now, <laughs> most, of t- most of the time, they are harmless losers sitting on their mom's couches in the basement and the funny part is, is that John's in an apartment that's in his mom's name. Yeah. That doesn't have a basement. <laughs> his mom's calling in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know if you're the one who should be making fun of people for that, but okay. Have lived My mommy is late to the show today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you guys are losers in your mom's basement? Hold on, my, my mom's calling me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what's that? I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> I forgot. I mean, in so many ways, we already knew he was Rupert Pupkin, but him yelling at his mom on the phone. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Amazing. Mom, I'm doing a show now. (laughs) And need to lash out at those who have lived, obviously, way better and had a much better life and have done some amazing things like myself. 
So if they want to hate on me mm-hmm. and goof on me, that's fine. I don't care. Goof on me all you want. Clearly. I don't really give a crap. But when it comes to anti-Semitism, homophobia, transphobia. <laughs> Trans what? So <laughs> transphobia. Yeah, transphobia. <laughs> transphobia at the mouth. <laughs> so once again, John tries to do that thing that he can't even believe himself. I don't care if you goof on me. Mm-hmm. My issue is with uh, racism. Yeah, that's yeah. it. And uh, transphobia. I hear that. Those bad. who attack me are anti Semites. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's, th- this argument is so nonsensical. No one could possibly believe it. And what I love about this is that John did not have this prepared. He did not want to go into this. He was hoping Richard would be on the show. Right. He's very mad at Richard. So this is him winging it. This is him winging it. And this is what's going on in his head all day right. long. And I know people like to say, like, oh, you live rent free, whatever. I don't like to say that. This is what's going on in John's head. Yeah. He's broken. This is a problem for him. It's not good. But he might be living rent free. <laughs> <laughs> on the streets. Yeah. Racism. The use of the N word and R word on a regular basis. John, you got to get over that, buddy. You've yeah. used those words so many times. It's documented all over the internet. And John's like, look, I don't care if you make fun of me, but if you've used the N word ever in your life, then I have a problem with you. It's like, well, John. What I have to say to you is do do and do up, do do and do up. <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> then I would say that it's become it's gone above the level of of accepting well, you know, uh nonviolent, non hateful trolling. Now it's Stop become, calling me the N-word. What point was he trying to make right yeah, there? He's like, I don't care if you troll me, but if you troll me in these specific ways, and everyone's just writing it down, yeah, you hate this, you hate that, all right, got it. <laughs> like He knows that he's like antagonizing this, right? He's bringing John, more of this out of himself when he does John this. John has time. taken on the, the slurs of all mankind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they call me the R word, the N word. Uh, yeah. I like that he's like, oh, you guys don't like me? Here are the following ways you can hurt my feelings. <laughs> I'll, I'll provide a bulleted list at the end. You don't have to write it down. <laughs> you better not do this. <laughs> <laughs> These are the things that really get at me. Just hate on groups of people based on their gender, the gender identity, the color of their skin. <laughs> well, the color of your skin is from alcoholism, yeah. John. <laughs> it's not because of how you were born. Hint of yellow? Their religious that? beliefs. <laughs> the fact that their liver doesn't work. And whatnot. <laughs> and whatnot. So, <laughs> it's, I, a, it's always good when you're on a rant. Yeah. I don't like people who don't like people because of their race, their ethnicity, and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> Miscellaneous. Yeah, really driving the point et cetera, over that et cetera. one. <laughs> <laughs> the funniest part is, is that I'm sure are, are there bad eggs out there, bad apples? I'm sure that there are in the group. Of course, everyone's all having a good time making fun of John. It has nothing to do with anyone's identity. Or politics. He's the one who makes everything about politics and about different groups and identities. No one else is. No, that is no exaggeration. We are having a fucking blast. Yes. Yeah, but, no. I mean, like you said, I've gotten into I've read, I've seen the Reddit a little bit. Most of it is that my YouTube algorithm is in 78 stuttering John shows in different <laughs> variations. Sure. And like you said, I'm sure it exists where people are using shitty language and just being assholes for yeah. no reason, but I haven't found that person yet. All you guys are keeping it above board. Well, the best part about Suttering John is that he claims he doesn't read the Reddit or the Discord, he doesn't go on the hate sites, but then he also claims on the other side of his mouth that all they do on those sites is use the N-word and the F-slur and the R-word. It's like, well, that's not true, because I've looked at those sites. I look at them every day. It's yep. actually pretty entertaining, and that's not what's going on at all. And so if you want people to call you out on it, it's very easy to go look it up and find out that actually, John, everyone's just making fun of you. No one's even used the word Puerto Rican. No one even thinks of you as a Puerto Rican. No one gives a fuck about that. (laughs) You know why I think this is, is because the people that John is ranting to all day, whether it's the the other patrons of the Pickwig pub or Richard Ojeda or his mom, whoever he's, you know, filling their poor ears with this nonsense, they're not looking into it. So they don't give a fuck. They're just like, ah, geez, that does sound shitty. 
Well, yeah, but it's also all the buzzwords you would use to say, like, I'm the good guy, they're the bad guy. Cause yeah, they're so they just believe him because they, they don't care enough to look into it. <laughs> exactly. Talked about this monster known as Anthony Cumia. Okay, I, 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 I'm sorry I'm pausing so much because we're going, we're running very long today. But this is the thing. He's now claiming that Anthony Cumia is a monster. Yeah. Anthony right. Cumia, I know a little bit, is always going for the joke. He's one of the funniest guys you can hang around with. He doesn't take life very seriously. He does very well for himself, and he's hilarious. Yeah, right. And John wanted to be on his show. John was out there declaring that he was going to be the next co-host of the Anthony Cumia show before Artie got the job. And then Artie was the one to let John know, like, actually, no, I'm going to do that. Yeah. And John now <laughs> wants to pretend, like, I've never liked that guy. I said, John, you were on his show 10 times. You wanted to be the co-host. It's the same thing with Zumak. Zumak wanted to come on my show. He, he emailed me. I could show you a half a dozen emails trying to come on my show. When he did come on the show, he was all excited about it. And now he's going, Carl sucks. No one gives a fuck. He sucks at this. It doesn't work when you're not authentic. You're a liar. It's very well, obvious to everyone. I do have to say, prior to John going on Anthony's show in 2017, there is zero evidence of Anthony being a racist. What would possibly make <laughs> yeah, him think that before? Right, that? he just found out about it in the last three months. Yeah. 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 Good point, Mike. Anthony Cumia, just this year, used the N-word to a black man. And he has to throw in this he, year because he himself has done it. Correct. So he's like, I, and yeah. I this year, not seven years ago. And and <laughs> he didn't do it at the pub with his buddies like I do. He did it on his show, <laughs> trying to be entertaining. F you word. see how it's different, of course. Because he assumed this person was gay. Anthony Cumia has no problem trashing my transgender child. Actually, what Anthony has said is that you're a shitty father. Right. That's literally what Anthony has said, that you suck as a father. And then John turns it into, you're trashing my kids. No, we all feel bad for your kids, John. <laughs> yeah. Everyone just wants them to succeed because they've had a hard go at it. They're, they're, they're on an uphill battle. And people like, I know you're not going to know this person because nobody does. Shuli and Kevin from what? <laughs> no one's going to know who Shuli is. You mean that show that gets... Seven times the number of views as yeah. your show. <laughs> that guy. I don't want to spoil anything. Uh, the bit that John has working here. Yeah. But based on what I know it to be, big mistake pronouncing his name correctly the first time. Correct. Because yeah, right. <laughs> because now he's going to pretend he doesn't know who Shuli is. He, after he nails this. perfectly the man's name. <laughs> I don't know if you learned this technique from Tony Michaels, but it's not a good technique to pretend you don't know who someone is. That it's you idiotic. obviously know who they are. You talked about them many times before. Does Shuli and Kevin from Why Do I Podcast? They're okay with Anthony. And again, I'll point out there actually is a show called Why Do I Podcast with a host named Kevin. So that kind yeah, of stop fucks promoting up. them, John. <laughs> that kind Jesus. of fucks up the whole thing. Yeah. And this hack known as Levy, they don't care about the hate and anti-Semitism. They don't uh, care about. This, but can the I point racism. out one more thing? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Didn't he confront Bob Levy and say, I thought we were friends? Yes. So what, what did that take? Six days to yep. be like, ah, he's a fucking hack. Now he's, he's a, a hack, right. <laughs> John, if, if you would have caught John two weeks ago, he'd be saying Bob Levy's great. He's a great comic. They probably toured together. I know I saw Bob Levy with Artie. I'm sure John's done that too. So I'm sure they had some type of relationship. And now just because Bob Levy's like dunking on him like everyone else, now right. he's a hack. All but, right. By the way, which based on the story I heard with John hitting on Bob's girlfriend or yeah. wife, yep. he has every right to take a few shots at him. No, no shit. <laughs> Once again, John's the villain in this scenario. <laughs> right. Every fucking time with this guy. Well, what did Bob do to you? Well, he made fun of me on the Internet. What did you do to him? I tried to fuck his wife. <laughs> I, tried, I tried to fuck his girlfriend immediately after they broke up. Oh, well, you're kind Kid of a shitty that. person. All right. Yeah, right. <laughs> they don't seem to care about the transphobia. Homophobia, anti-Hispanic speech and rhetoric. What? They don't care. I mean, you're just making shit up on yeah. a thin air. Anti-Hispanic. There was a long pause there. He's I, like, I, I don't even know any good jokes that are anti-Hispanic. If I did, I'd have them written down in front of me. I don't. I don't have anything for that. What a fucking moron. He goes. They don't care. No, no, no. It's that you're lying. 
<laughs> it's the reason why we don't acknowledge any of this shit, you idiots. You know what would be awesome? Because everyone's so, you know, into canceling people and taking people down on the internet. Why doesn't John just take a few minutes to compile all yes. the horrible racist things you guys have said Thank and you. play it on his show? Thank you. Because literally his angle is he retweets Clamor and Carl. And what Clamor and Carl does is he says, a guy on this Discord server, which, by the way... <laughs> There's infinity number of Discord servers with infinity right. bad things being said on them. There's a guy on this Discord server that said this thing, and also Carl once hung out with Anthony Cumia. Therefore, it's like these are racist. <laughs> yeah, these are some stretches you're going for here. Why? It must be because they are that as well. They have the same vile beliefs. So, I will say this. For a place like YouTube and a place like Patreon to allow people like Kevin to give away the, as a top tier payment on his tier levels on Patreon, he allows them to host his discord that he is the admin of. Could you imagine just being a listener to this show? Yeah. Would you be able to follow this? No. Cause it's what not even he... correct. I thought we were talking about Trump and Biden. <laughs> yeah. No, it's like a Kevin guy <laughs> who's got a Patreon monsters with a top tier <laughs> for discord. You, you can host a discord. Like none of this makes any fucking sense. Could you imagine if at the height of his radio career, one day Rush Limbaugh just walked in and was like, <laughs> All right, uh, Kevin from Why Do I Podcast, I've got a message for you. <laughs> I mean, it's so transparent what John's trying to do. He's pretending that he's against racism and transphobia and homophobia. And then he's like, and I want YouTube and Patreon to stop giving Carl money. Like, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. What, what just happened? <laughs> that you're being so transparent what you actually want. You don't want good in the world. You want to take me down because we laugh at you, John. You have no sense of humor about yourself. And frankly, if... <sighs> If I were you, I wouldn't have a sense of humor about myself either. I'd be very ashamed, <laughs> and I'd probably lash out as well, because why would you have any confidence in yourself when you look yeah. like that and you put on a show this fucking terrible? I get it. You're, I get why you're bitter, it. right, John? <laughs> <laughs> the only result, other than what I said, where he ends up you know, clinking beers with Shuli or something, is he has to stop podcasting. Those are the only two ways this ends. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, if he stopped doing a show, there'd be nothing to... Well, there'd be a few things to talk about, but it would go away. It would go away <laughs> right, eventually, right. I'm sure. The and again... the pickwig every night. <laughs> again, I have to point this out because, yes, I did have a perk on my top tier on Patreon that connected to the Discord. I had to take that off because fucking Karen over here, Karen Melendez, complained <laughs> to Patreon about it. So that doesn't exist anymore, John. So what you're saying is not true. That uses the N word, the R word for the mentally. Um, yeah, you know, like I me. I don't know how to get it. <laughs> Is that perfect? Is that perfect? Play it again. The R Play it again. For the mentally, uh, the mentally uh, 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 brain dead. A word for the mentally. Um, uh, I don't know, you know, challenged. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, it's the one you're screaming at your computer screen right now. <laughs> Just say it, retard. John, I don't call mentally challenged people the R word. I call you the R word. Yeah. Are you saying that you're mentally challenged? <laughs> kind of. Is that what you're saying, John? Because I'm calling you a retard. Am I calling a mentally challenged person a retard when I do that? Tell me, please. I'd like to know. Well, yes. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't asking you, Mike. <laughs> I'm just saying. I got to defend the guy once in a while. <laughs> yes. That was defending him. <laughs> the great blind Mike. <laughs> I'm retarded, you jerk. I, but they don't where care. I fuck, where I fucked up is getting blocked by John on Twitter because uh, I feel like I could have infiltrated him. I could have been his partner mm, at some point. <laughs> I, think, I think you're right about that. All you have to do is tell John what he wants to hear. Yeah. A anytime right. he reads something... And it just says, like, uh, did you see that Trump murdered 17 Hispanic babies? He's like, I knew it. You know? Ah. Like, Judge just has to read a headline. If he wants to agree with it, he believes it to be true. <laughs> Excellent show prep. <laughs> you know why? Because they're making money. They don't care. Oh, this is where he's claiming that YouTube and Patreon 
are only allowing me to be on their platforms because I'm making them so much money. John, if you knew what type of drop in the bucket I was to Patreon and YouTube, I mean, you must know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, buddy. But, I mean, what is it for a guy that makes so much money? Why are you still living in your mother's basement? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's both things. <laughs> I'm, listen, I'm not Tim Dillon, okay? I'm, the Patreon's not going to miss me if I go away. And all these people that go on, like the person, you know, I don't know, Dooley, whatever this idiot's name is. <laughs> no, God, right. you got his name right already. Yeah, you blew it. And also, Dooley. Yeah. What does that mean? What does that even mean? Uh, it's a shame I never got to meet Shuli before he died, because after that burning. <laughs> yeah, watch <laughs> out. <laughs> Honestly, if he wanted to say drooly, that would be at least yeah, be something, but yeah. of course he can't say that. Stooly. Stooly. Yeah, Stooly would have been all right. Yeah. 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 He's, he happens to be Jewish. <laughs> he happens to be Jewish. Jewish. Levy. <laughs> Jewy. <laughs> <laughs> it was right there, John. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Shuli. <laughs> He happens to be Jewish. <laughs> I think, allegedly. <laughs> so this is where his entire premise falls apart. Because he's complaining about the fact that Anthony is an anti-Semite. Which, by the way, he leaped to very quickly. He used the N-word, and he's an anti-Semite. It's like, wait, what? What just happened? Okay. So now he's going to say that Shuli is a Jewish man and shouldn't even be associating with these people. Uza is Jewish. But yet they go on a show like Anthony Cumia. Yeah, it's almost like your whole premise is incorrect and you're an idiot. <laughs> yeah. The fact that someone who was born in Israel, who is very much Jewish, yeah. would go on Anthony's show and they're friendly tells me that maybe your premise is retarded. Right. <laughs> He's been duped, hence Dooley. <laughs> <laughs> who is still using anti-Semitic. Uh, remarks. <laughs> okay. Using the using the N word, and they not only go on, they have him on their show. It's great. Like this Honique, Honique Jeez. from oh. this show that's dedicated to trashing on Howard. All right, this is insane right here. Now he's pretending he doesn't know what radio gunk is. Mm -hmm. So now he's calling Monique Honique, which I thought he was like pro woman and a feminist. He's calling Monique Honique. That's offensive. Right. Not to me, but <laughs> somebody. We and then it. he goes, and she's on this show that, that trashes Howard. John, you've been on that show many, many times, and you wanted Monique to be the co-host of the Centering John show. You asked her on your show. You asked her out. <laughs> you asked her out before. You told her she's hot. Well, that and, statement, originally when I heard him say that, it clicked in my head where I was like, wait a minute. John tried to drum up business for his book and his podcast yep. by trashing Stern relentlessly, yep. mm -hmm. doing what you guys are doing to him. He did to Howard. Correct. And now he has, suddenly has a problem with it. Yep. Correct. He's like, this woman, you won't believe what she's doing. She's saying that Howard Stern's an asshole. John, you've been saying that for 15 years <laughs> she straight. She is mocking this poor man for only doing three shows a week. <laughs> the nerve. She goes on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And her husband is Jewish. <laughs> Shame. You it sounds imagine? like Anthony. It sounds like you and Anthony only have Jews on. I'm starting to think. <laughs> <laughs> could you no, imagine? Could you imagine if Monique's watching this? She's like, "Honey, are you Jewish? Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ! I gotta learn this from stuttering John Melendez." <laughs> and her husband is. Jewish. I said, I just want to be in the the brain of Benny Loco or one of these people is just watching his show because they like talking about how Trump's the next Hitler and they're going like what is going on right now <laughs> this seems like a lot of like personal vendettas and dirty Was laundry Kevin at the Capitol riots how does he fit into this <laughs> could you imagine this so when I see Adidas do that to Kanye West I ask you Dooley and Skeevy and Kevin. Yeah. Why do you tolerate it and applaud Anthony Cumia when he does it on a regular basis and posts pictures of my kids and trashes them with horrible transphobic rhetoric? He's been thrown off Twitter four times already. 
Or maybe I'm miscounting. Probably more. Watch Mike from Red Bar. He does a hell of a job oh, at no. exposing this freak. Yeah, that's a good point. You should be on the side of Mike David, who yeah. never trashes anybody. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, Mike David would never use any of those words that John <laughs> claims are so offensive. Def definitely, let's keep no. propping up Mike David from Red Bar, John. Listen, if I know one thing about Mike David from Red Bar, he would never focus in on one subject and embarrass and humiliate them until they snapped and deleted their social media. To Mike David went on his show recently and said, John's trying to reach out to me. I want nothing to do with this clown. <laughs> I want, he, goes, so he goes, I know what's going him. on in the dabble verse. I keep my ear close to the ground. I know what's happening. I want nothing to do with this. And John's still this week going on and praising this guy. He's so stupid. <laughs> I, but I mean, like Mike David's show is a different version of this type of show. Yes. And he's using him as like a pillar of the community. <laughs> Th that's why John will never learn. will never figure it out because he doesn't have... Any type of scruples or morals. He doesn't know where he stands on anything. It's just him versus the rest of the world, which would be fine if he actually used legitimate arguments rather than, I'm just a moral and just character. Right. And I just want to see racism wiped out. Like, I am just a pure person who just has love in their heart. <laughs> and these Anthony yeah. Cumia and, and Dooley yeah. and Skeevy guys are just bad people. He's a martyr that you Jews have crucified. <laughs> yeah. He died for our slurs. <laughs> Actually, it was cirrhosis, but. Also, I, I love that he goes, uh, you know, YouTube and Patreon don't even care that People are allowed to say whatever they want. It's like, well, actually, Jen, in this country, that's um, protected by the Constitution. It's called free speech. If companies did care about that sort of thing, that would be a problem. Yeah. You realize that, right? And it's funny because these guys always like to rail against fascism. It's like, well, that's literally what fascism is. If the government and corporations agree on which party is allowed to exist in their country and then get rid of the other people, you fucking idiot. But even worse, Patreon and YouTube allow this content to be on their platforms. Even after my big meetings with them. <laughs> now... We all, we all know this show is fighting for all of the marginalized people of this world. We are fighting for democracy. We are fighting for women's rights. Uh -huh. And every day we... <laughs> he was just calling Monique Cody. Cody. He's uh, fighting for women's up rights. Up with broads. <laughs> there, there is... I, I sent you uh, one of the episodes, Carl, but there's a, a, a YouTube channel. I think his name is like... Don Jaeger bomb or something like that. Okay. And he's just uploading <laughs> the early episodes of the stuttering John podcast. Yeah. And when I listened to this morning, it's 35 minutes of him trashing some woman. Absolutely <laughs> fucking calling her a slut and a bitch he's the because best. she didn't want to fuck him. <laughs> he's the best. The hypocrisy a knows no bounds rights. with this guy. He really is. Uh, he really is something. He's uh, such a treat. And I love right here where he's declaring that he's the hero that we don't deserve, but that we all need women's rights. And every day we fight against we fight against hate and racism on every single show that we do. Every single one. But yet. Patreon and YouTube allows these shows to do that. So I applaud Adidas. But uh, I'm just so confused by this, John. Like, what's the alternative? You want censorship? You're pro-censorship? Is yes. that what you're saying? Yeah. It's Captain Censorship! <laughs> uh, mommy, Captain Censorship just said the N-word. It's okay when he does it. Oh, okay, good. Also, I don't really understand how they relate. <laughs> like, Dude. the idea of you and... Patreon having the same relationship as Kanye and Adidas? It doesn't it's, apply. It's, it's very, very different. Yes. <laughs> I don't do a clothing line for Patreon. I have nothing right. to do with that. Adidas, and I applaud any company for taking down or not associating or doing business with Kanye West. But I frown on you. <laughs> uh -oh. YouTube, uh -oh. I frown on you. Wow. This is me yeah. frowning. Yeah. Consider because yourself frowning. Because you allow it. <laughs> Why? Because you make money off of it. 
<laughs> you make money off the hate. You make money. Off- oh my god! I'm gonna put this out as a 3D episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right, put on your glasses now. <laughs> Watch out! <laughs> I got my eyes poked out, and I was happy about it. I didn't want to be able to see anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. Holy shit! I, I just love the idea of uh, like Google that owns YouTube just announced earnings like I think yesterday, yeah. and I just love picturing at the end like they're wrapping things up with shareholders and they're like by the way one last thing stuttering john is frowning at us so we're gonna yeah. turn that around yeah so we gotta do something about that yeah. holy shit could you imagine if we had both 3d and smell vision uh, what we could do with just this part right here oh, no dare to dream you make money off the hate <laughs> You make money off the racism, the anti-Semitism, the anti-Hispanic, transphobia, Uh and homophobia. You profit, Joe Conti, from Patreon, and you do nothing. (laughs) This is like Tokyo pissing off Godzilla. (laughs) What a fucking moron. Joe Conti and your kids, Max and Elizabeth, who go to... (laughs) I know where you live. (laughs) Yeah. All right. So now Richard Ojeda finally joins him on the show. John's all worked up at this point. Yeah. Richard has some great advice for him. I'm tired again. Army Major, how are you, buddy? I'm doing good, man. Sorry I'm late. Uh, but just jumping in on what you were saying, I, got, I wrote two things down. First off, it said ignore them. Uh, let me tell you, you, all, write that you know, down? It's, it, it, that's what you want to do. You want to ignore these people. But so this is great because Richard's first piece of advice is ignore them. Now, we've documented that when trolls are in his chat, he immediately goes right to violence. Oh, oh yeah, come down to our fucks. island, motherfucker. I'll beat the <laughs> shit out of you. You won't say it's a my face. Like he's the he's the last person to be telling anyone to ignore anyone. Which that's by the way, that's why is, I love that's why I love this guy because yeah. he always comes in half assed. He doesn't know what the fuck John is talking about, <laughs> yeah. but he will go right to take a fucking crowbar to their heads, John. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but he actually is giving the right advice, but coming from him means nothing because he doesn't even follow it himself. Understand that these people they don't stop, they just don't stop, and they and they do everything in their power. You know, the mere fact that me and John have become friends and I'm on his show often, I now have 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 John Melendez haters yep. coming on my stuff and I throwing noticed. stones at me and and, <laughs> and and they say horrible things and, and I mean I, What they don't call you twitchy, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> what horrible things that they say in Blinky. What and on the next you? episode of the Blind Mike Project, I will become their leader on the Ojeda <laughs> cast. <laughs> you know, they, they start off by saying that, you know, Richard Ojeda and, and John's mother, you know, that's the kind of stuff that they do. And it's really hard. It's really hard to 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 just let that stuff go by when you know these people would never say it to your face. Wait, did he just say that they talk about John's mother and he gets hard? I'm sorry, right. I wasn't completely following that <laughs> train of thought. I'm not talking about my mother. <laughs> yeah, well, are you talking about my mom? <laughs> John's fucking falling asleep right now. Yeah, right. He, he got himself all tired out from that rant. <laughs> Holy shit. Well, thanks for coming on, Richard. I got to go sleep for 11 hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all out of baloney. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, uh, all right. Then they talk about how Tony Michaels is also getting shit from these people. <laughs> well, but yeah, but at, as you know, as uh, MJ said, Tony Michael does too. You know, Tony Michaels is getting the same hate from the, the same people. And the problem with that is Tony's co-host, Gabe, I always get it wrong. Gabe Sanchez ha- happens to be Hispanic. <laughs> on one of these shows, on his Discord, they post anti-Hispanic shit on a regular basis. <laughs> okay. So let's hear, let's figure out that leap that he just made. He goes, Tony Michaels is getting shit. Well, yeah, we talked about how he used to sell synthetic marijuana and he got busted and he did time in federal prison for it. And just got out in 2019. We learned all this stuff about him. No, 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 no. It has nothing to do with that. His co-host is Gabe Sanchez, who's Hispanic. By the way, Gabe Sanchez is doing better in show business than any of these guys. He actually oh, has a, right? a deal with Honda dealerships. He's doing TV commercials. Like 
he actually has something going on. All these other assholes have nothing going on. I like that John is championing Gabe Sanchez. He forgot his last name. He doesn't yeah. even know his name. <laughs> Gabe, uh, what's his face? <laughs> so, so John's trying to make this connection now. Like this is getting so convoluted. Well, they're uh, they're saying anti-Hispanic things in a Discord server all the time. I've never seen one, but sure, why not? I'm sure, someone could find an example. And so that's why Tony Michaels is getting heat because Gabe Sanchez and that kind of. I was like, what? what? Do you, does John believe this stuff? Does anyone believe it? What's going on? All right. Let's find out why censorship is good. Oh, good. Army Major, where is Discord? They that, that they allow it. Where? Yeah, it's, it's 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 bullshit. Where are these big companies? Like, where are these companies, Army Major? <laughs> yeah. Like, they allow it. They profit from it. Yeah. And. You know, yeah, for those to go, oh, oh, just ignore them. It's it's getting to the point that you can't because yeah. if, if anybody had a kid yeah. who's getting attacked, it's impossible to ignore at some point. Uh, okay, so again, John is going, why aren't corporations silencing these people's speech? Do I have to answer that for you for real, John, you moron? And then he goes right into the, well, listen, I wouldn't even be addressing this. I'd be ignoring it. But they're talking about my kids. So, Jen, you're talking about your kids. You're the one who brings up your kids every fucking time because you want to because that's your shield for this. I would love to. And I'm not saying I'm going to do this, John. I would love to talk to John's kids and say, do you know anything about what's going on on the Internet? Right. There's a good chance they don't. I bet, do you know your father? <laughs> yeah, I bet they're living carefree lives. Yeah. I bet they don't look at Twitter. Yeah. Like people that age don't look at Twitter. They don't give a True. fuck. Yeah. So this whole thing where it's like, Pac face put a photo up of my kid on Twitter. It's like, yeah, I bet their kid has no idea that happened. I don't think this is affecting them in any way. Also, I think the I know Anthony has had fun with it, obviously. Yeah. But like, other than that, I think across the board, everyone has said, hey, don't fuck with the guy's kids, obviously. Right. No, no one, no one thinks that's right or that should be done. And it's been said 10,000 times. It's just a lie that he's hiding behind. Well, right. And and somebody in the Discord just made this point too. Like he, he never cites an example. Yes, there was a time five years ago when Anthony when they were on a, having a battle and Anthony posted some funny tweets that featured yeah. John's kids. All right. Well, I'll I'll, I'll definitely uh, give him that one. Other than that, though, John loves to go on. Like, they're always talking about my kids, and they're bringing my kids into it to the point where he wrote a cease and desist to me saying, I got to stop talking about his kids. John, I don't talk about your kids. I don't know Deal. their names. I don't care about your kids. I don't give a fuck about your kids, John. They don't do a show that's terrible. I make fun of shows that are terrible. That's who I talk about. Anyway. That's the weird thing is week in and week out, you're talking about him. Yes. <laughs> and he's like, they're talking about my kids. It's like, no, no, no. <laughs> well, no. And then here again, he talks about how normally he doesn't even care about that. Just rolls right off his back. These are cowardly motherfuckers. Fact. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of course. But here's the thing. Like, I don't like, look, they're going to do this, you know, and they love that, you know, because I, I normally don't bring them up because I don't care. But I do care when it. I do care when it's about my kids. That's when I, you know, because then they cross the line. So I want to remind everyone when he started that 12 minute rant, he goes, I don't care if you make fun of me, but I can't deal with the racism and homophobia and all the isms and the phobias. And he's went through all the shit. And now fast forward 50 minutes later, he goes, I don't care about any of it, except for the fact they go after my kids. Like, which is it, John? Make fun of blacks, Jews, <laughs> yeah, Mexicans, right. all, you, all want. you want. As long as you have my kids. <laughs> so again, John, you're a liar. You're upset that we're making fun of you. And it's right. so transparent. And all the people who stick up for you, all your sock accounts, who pretend that they're like, well, I'm just against racism. I'm like, well, then guess what? You're starting in the wrong place. Yeah. <laughs> the fight's over. Yeah. You, this is not where one. the issue is starting or ending <laughs> yeah. right here. Fucking idiot. All right, this is the last clip I have. This is John showing off to his buddy Richard that interview he tried to do with Shuli. So again, John's going back and showing this video of John harassing Shuli in the lobby of a hotel oh, yeah. when Shuli was still working for the Howard Stern show. Listen to how drunk John is. John is so wasted. And this is embarrassing. I don't know why John shows this as if, like, he's better than Shuli. Now, before I bring on Brian J. Karam to join you, Army Major, and I thank Brian because... I was freaking out when you weren't here. I'm like, Brian, can you come on? <laughs> so, okay. 
Now, I posted this because this is one of the guys, okay? This guy sitting down is one of the guys that conspires with these other guys that that spew the N word, the R rate for the mentally, the R word for the mentally challenged. He has these guys on his show. He conspires yeah. with the other ones. <laughs> what does he get? I forgot. Conspiracy? I forgot I watched this part. It's <laughs> yeah. one of the wildest defenses ever. <laughs> All right. And they spew it nonstop. This is the coward that but he's one of the guys that that does this. Now I ask you, Army Major. Because th- th- this, I have two videos. Mm-hmm. Now this is this coward, Gooley or whatever his name is. I you know I can't remember. Oh, that's not a good bet. <laughs> Pretending you don't know Shuli's name, calling him Dooley and Gooley. Like these aren't even good jokes. Yeah, especially when you're about to show a video where you clearly know his name. <laughs> yeah, you know who he is, who he works <laughs> for. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Shyly, I came up. This is a guy. He just doesn't have any brain cells left. Yeah. John wants to be witty and funny and bust balls. He can't do it anymore. I, mean, I don't know. He never could, but it's worse than ever. <laughs> that I'm going to try and interview, right? Now, just to ask him some goofy questions like I used to do. This is from two years ago. Now, I, I'm i going to pose this question for you because you're ex-military or you or you are military. Um, Who would you rather have in your foxhole? Okay, that's the premise. Gross. Hey, man, don't you think it's funny that the guy that coined the frame... Run away! You know, coined the phrase... Jo- All right. Let's listen to John try to spit out this interview question, yeah. which is, by the way, a tweet he's proud of. He put this out as a tweet. Now he's going to ask Shuli, as if Shuli could even answer this. Like, don't you think it's funny? Is that an interview question? Don't you think it's funny that blah, 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 blah? Yeah, John, oh. I do. Also, this is all incoherent. Yeah, like, listen how drunk John is. Listen to if, this. If I'm Richard Ojeda, I'm like, what am I watching? Yes, exactly. If I'm Betty Loco or any, <laughs> Andrew Brown or any of these people who are watching this, and this is like John showing off. Look at this is one of my big moments. Listen to how wasted John is. <laughs> hey, man, don't you think it's funny that the guy that coined the frame Run away! You know, coined the phrase jump the shark now works for the show that jumped the shark. Run away! <laughs> What was he supposed to do with that, John? Yeah. Don't you think it's funny that the guy who framed the phrase and framed it with the sharks? Uh, do, do you like baby shark? <laughs> Come run, on, Shuli. Run, 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 sure. run, run, run. What are you? You're going to get me a copyright strike, John. What are you doing? Don't put fucking Floyd in these fucking videos, <laughs> you asshole. I'm more afraid of. You just give him a brilliant like, idea, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? He, he should do his show with Pink <laughs> Floyd in the background. He could. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Fuck. Don't, no one tell him. Hey, I'm looking at you, Discord. I'm looking at you, YouTube. Nobody tell John that that's... I've just taken down the whole operation. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, you should put like seven Mary three or something in the background. Yeah. Oh, so the, those guys are like, where are all these paychecks coming from? Holy shit. <laughs> should we go back on the road again? <laughs> Everyone's listening to Cumbersome all of a sudden. I don't know what happened. All right. Let's hear the second question from John. Come on. Run, we? run, 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 sure. run, run, run. What are you more afraid of? Run, like run, walking run, down Howard's run. hump. Hallway or watching Baba Booey eat shrimp. I'm just curious. Again, these are not interview questions, right. John. You're, you're, what are you more afraid of, walking down Howard's hallway or watching Baba Booey eat shrimp? Uh, Dooley, what did you do with the money? Oh, my God. It's like, John, fucking, these are not funny jokes. Watching Baba Booey eat shrimp is not a thing anymore. <laughs> It's funny too because this just you could analyze this bit and how bad his writing is, how bad the execution is of yep. trying to ask Shuli or whatever. But then you have to remember, Richard Ojeda is watching this and supposed to make some sort of judgment about it, yeah. right? And meanwhile, John <laughs> involving is, a foxhole, <laughs> and John is singing along with Pink Floyd as if this is this big triumphant moment. Yeah, as this is all going down, it just makes him look ridiculous. Well, it's a it's a, it's a hat on a hat for John because now he's just calling him a pussy for not talking to him at all. Right. Yeah. Makes no sense. Makes no sense. And I didn't even play the first part of the show that was all John's like Donald Trump fantasies and oh Donald Trump's gonna get taken down. It's like John, you've been saying this for six years now. I get, get over it. <laughs> oh yeah.
Kia. <laughs> Somebody put this together for me, Chris. You're going to enjoy this. Uh, this is when you had Southern John on your show. Ooh, and he was, was flirting time. with you. Yes. Oh. This is no, this is before he was Most bad. people remember the dabbler incident, but yeah, yeah, there was some flirtation going oh, yeah. on before that. So this was pre-dabble. Yes, well, the first is... half of the interview went well because yeah. we talked about his glory days. Oh, yeah. And he's like, if you're ever in California, ooh, oh, oh, yeah. yeah, but Carl, you played one of the grossest clips when he was talking about how he pre asked the girl to bang her in the morning. Do you remember oh, that? Yeah. Pre asked? Yeah. Pre asked? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. He's sitting there and he's being as serious as possible. Oh. He's like, oh, I, you know, I was going to say, hey, I, I want you to consider. I don't do it. Yours is pretty good. No, that's a good one. Everyone does a good stuff. Everyone does a good stuff. Wow. I want to fuck you in the morning. And, I, and like, uh, oh. it, it was just disgusting. And Carl was bashing it. But I mean, oh. and I kind of, I mean, maybe I don't know if I've ever asked that. Well, I, I, you kind of I think know. my theory yeah, was, I think, you know. I think my theory was ask her while she's drunk. She'll be sober tomorrow. Oh. Ask her now. You already consented. You said yes. I have it on you tape. Yeah. <laughs> but my head is so messed up. I'm like, what gargoyle is in bed with him? You know? Oh, what? God. Oh, oh it has to be. And a, what? A and fucking disaster. She has, she has a, I mean, and she's on fentanyl, and she's on methadone, <laughs> and she's on every kind of upper and downer, sideways. I mean, uh, if she's getting in bed with his gnarly feet, and you see his toenails. Oh, no. God, dude. Oh, well God. documented. If a girl would touch his penis after seeing his feet, <laughs> Uh, and she's not. She's for the streets. She's not a human. She's, she's for the streets. Street. She's a street woman. I have an arthritis, uh, arthritis uh, knuckle for your pleasure. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go one oh. knuckle deep because it stops. <laughs> I can't get any further. Oh. I mean, he can't even finger bang her. His, his fingers will give him herpes. He has yeah, all these yeah. sores oh, on his no. hands. I like uh, diddling a girl because I pull out my finger and my nails are clean. Oh. <laughs> No. <laughs> I feel queasy. Yeah, it's so disgusting. Oh. You gonna go yeah, down on me, John? Me. No, I just figured you. I'm definitely not. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh. Disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> I know where those fingers have been. Yeah, I'm not putting my mouth in there. No, but I literally gag when when they when you play that video where he's hung over and he's chugging orange juice. Yeah. I just uh, don't know how. Uh, and you know his refrigerator is probably you know not even set at the right temperature. It's probably warm, 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 you know, oh. it's really warm. Tropicana, all the Half backspin at the bottom. Things. At the bottom of it is just oh, God. Oh, He's brown water. Just like, oh, this is what I need because he doesn't want to drink the sink water. Just you know, oh. the backwash Ugh. drool. Oh. No. oh, that is terrible. Oh, poor guy. It probably pours like that spit from that chick the other day. The oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I know, but worse. I mean. She's at least, if certain John would have spit on me, I would have punched him in the face. Oh, you know, yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. girl, I was kind of turned on. She's just know, a little pixie, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pixie That's not spit. the first time a co spit. <laughs> spit. That's All cool. right. So this is just some fun audio from when John thought that he had a, a shot with you, Chrissy. Oh, yeah, I know. You're There's lost, so Chrissy. Those, but no. but uh, it, it sucks because I can't feel, like, you know, the whole left side of my body. It's, it's such a pain in the ball. Can somebody else feel it for oh. you? Oh, <laughs> that's a joke. Hey, if you want a baby, when hey. I come to New York, I, so I'll come Wait, on your show. In New York? No, I'm in L.A. I I, I moved out here for the uh, the Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Oh my! Oh, God. No. Oh, oh no! I like that he says, "I'll come on your show." Yeah, yeah. He bites himself onto the show. That's how he's. I going. can't feel the left side of my body. It's pain in the ball. Yeah. Uh, oh, get it? Yeah. It was pretty good. And then I moved out here for the yeah. Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Is this from my podcast uh, with him? Uh, Holy shit. Oh, cool. wow. Well, next time you're in the city, you should come do my show. Uh, oh, I definitely will. What days do you tape? Uh, Mondays at 8 o'clock. Okay. Do you do you work with Keith or no? Yeah, yeah. I do. He's like the program manager. Keith I love Kyle. Keith. Kyle. I mean, yes, you know, Anthony, I've done Anthony's show a billion times, and we were like really good friends, and then we got into a Twitter war for a while. Oh no! Yeah, no, no. Now we're all good. I mean, you know, uh, are, I are mean, we? John? <laughs> now we're all good. Remember uh, how you tweeting a photo of his kids was the worst thing ever? Yes, he was already. Did you tweet one of his trans kids? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. uh, I've never oh, seen yeah, the yeah, photo. Yeah. I want to see the photo. Can out we there. pull that up? No, yeah. I, I don't pull it. I don't yeah, talk yeah, about yeah, John's yeah, kids. John yeah, talks yeah. about oh, yeah. my kids. <laughs> <laughs> how funny is that though? Because John likes to pretend. That that was so upsetting to him that he's still mad yeah, yeah. for it. And meanwhile, this is proof that he was already over it. Yeah. Wow. He was already over it. No, we're cool now. I've done a show a billion times. Yeah. Two, two or three. Yeah. <laughs> Legendary shows, but yeah. 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 
I, I love doing his show. I, we, we always had a great time. But then when he brought Artie Lang over there, it all got <laughs> ugly. I mean, the whole I mean, Artie was on yeah. heroin. And I don't know if you know Artie. Uh, no, not personally. I mean, I've been, you know, following his story, but I know he's, you know, a lot so more retired. cleaned up now. And no, yeah, know. yeah. But but that's, and then, so then. <laughs> so you don't listen back to your own show ever? No. You no. Do you listen to your show? No. I can't. I, 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 have to listen, I listen every second. I edit every fucking episode. Oh, well, oh yeah, right. I don't edit it. Yeah, 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 it sucks. Like, like, I hate hearing myself. Yeah, it's hard. It's brutal. Do it. People are like, Carl, I hate your voice. I'm like, yeah, I know. Me too. Me, too. <laughs> Me, Anthony, and Keith got into a little bit of a tiff but now everything's fine you know so uh, the next time i'll come out there i'll do anthony's show and i'll do your show yeah he's booking himself yeah, on my I'm, show i'm working on a couple of like you know bigger names fair, like Jesse Dane, I mean, I'm hoping to get her yeah, on soon. I, I know she was like big on the howard stern show dude you should have Sorry, John, on just take calls. Don't even talk. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, my See, God. Anthony, you're not really part of the dabble. I mean, you are because you come on this show. But yeah. I feel like you could still interview. I probably study. could. That's what I'm saying. You still could. Don't in, you he'd come on in a second, yeah, I yeah, bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to be oh, all. <laughs> all right, I have a, a song parody that came in. I oh, love it. From Pike Vanderbilt. This is a song called The Other Pike. Let's give it a chance. If you guys want me to kill it, I Down will. Let me know. All right. How long, how long have I cried? This ruling can't be right. <laughs> I don't. I don't believe it's fair. Stealing my content on the repost it Kevin and Julie are obsessed with me Without my show they make no money Now YouTube refuses to whack I gotta take a lawsuit down the pike Down the pike Jealous is what they all are of me Well famous is what they will never be and I'm the one who should have followed God. I gotta take a lot. Now, Sonny John did have a record deal. He's one of the best yeah. artists ever, isn't that? Tell the cops you're coming down the pipe. Take it down. I, I, I get the gist. Yeah, yeah, it's we good. get the gist of it. Yeah. A lot of uh, people commenting uh, the shoehorning of yeah, the words. I know. Mm-hmm. Jealousy. <laughs> yeah, you no. Know, people good, don't talk Good that try, way. though. When good I got try. that Not email, bad. he said in the email, I don't know how to mix things. I'm like, okay, I get it. Yeah. I appreciate it, though. Keep sending in song parodies. We love them here. It's cute. Always good for a chuckle. Oh, too. yeah, yeah. Especially when John is the uh, sub- uh, subject, of course. All right. Let's talk about Suttering John's latest beer on the balcony. He finally did a beer on the balcony. He's missed three weeks in a row. Oh, man. Because, I know, this is the Chad Zubak roast. Oh, God. Or, I mean, the Kevin Brennan roast, Chad bombed so hard. It was this. unbelievable bombing. That? Oh, yeah. He was disheveled. He didn't have his When notes. was this? Yep. Was this 2019? Uh, what it's a legendary that? roast. I mean, it's oh, yeah. yeah. Oof, it's funny. Anyway, I got to get to that because we were going to do that last week and I ran out of time. Oh. I just can't get to all this Chad Zuma content. There's I know there's much. so much. It's insane. <laughs> um, all right, I can find this. All right, so this is beer on the balcony. Uh, Centering John comes on. He has no guests. He's been trying to book these guests. He can't Uh-oh. get a guest, so he's got no guests. And he reminds us that we can't watch it. Anyway, skull everybody, welcome to beer oh, on the balcony. Skull. This content is only for my Patreon and YouTube members. This is. All behind my paywall. Any unauthorized use, <laughs> i.e., posting any clips of this He's show without this the bit. express yeah. Still, yeah. written consent of the Stuttering John podcast, is strictly prohibited. Like strictly. he has an LLC, <laughs> like he has anything correct. prohibited by who? Who's yeah. prohibiting that? Who's prohibited? The Stuttering John podcast. <laughs> yeah. Who, who is that? Me. <laughs> yeah. Right. We get it. I. I Appreciate if you didn't make fun of me. It's what we should say. I just put it Written out there. Consent. Uh, I have to draw an X on the piece of paper. <laughs> He's uh, yeah. It, hasn't he tried already? Like suing people, yeah. getting the yeah. content taken down. Yeah. He's try- and it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So what are the consequences if you don't get express written permission? I did get a copyright strike on YouTube that got overturned. Right. 
Uh, he did get my Patreon episode taken down for a little while. That got overturned. Right. Wow. He's so busy with the copyright strikes. He's yeah. constantly doing it to Shuli and to us. It's like, John, when do you learn this doesn't work? <laughs> he, go, he, he goes, uh, he goes, it's not transformative content. Yeah, no, it's, it's not your daughter. Uh, ah! Carl, you sound came uh, ready. But my <laughs> <a joke. laughs> mm-hmm. All right, let's. Uh, all right, so immediately John has to start blocking trolls. Remember, this oh. is the broadcast this is where people who are paying him money to see right us. behind the paywall. Yeah, and <laughs> this shows you how many trolls are actually paying. Yeah, just to see this. they they make fun of him. Yeah. Well, how many people all right. are behind the paywall? Well. So from what I've heard, he has 133 people on Patreon mm. and less than 100 on Paying YouTube. Paying five bucks a month. Paying five mm. bucks a month. That's what I've heard. Now, he declared that he has 500 on Patreon, but he's a liar. Mm, yeah. <laughs> but he's, <laughs> as we know. <laughs> but he's lying. He's a liar. So, so there's that. But yeah, I, I would imagine 70 to 80% of those people are goofing on him. Yeah. They're dabblers. They're in Dabblers Anonymous. <laughs> They're pulling the clip. Well worth their money to just well worth, oh, be able yeah. to fuck around with John. He's Live. the most unironic funny guy on the internet. Correct. Right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Oof. Well, I, uh... Uh... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no. No, Shecky. You're a troll. So oh. Now let me block you here. What did Shecky do? Uh, do, 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 do. No shirt is just mm. sad. I mean, oh yeah, that is stretched out. Look at that. Uh, uh, he's put that shirt on. So if he had oh, a yeah. neck, <laughs> and you can see the sweat stains, yeah, just, uh, yeah. ever so slightly. He needs a higher camera angle. Yeah, he, he literally goes, yeah. like like that's the cartoon idiot. <laughs> Like in cartoons, uh, they made people go, dar, dar. Dar. he does it. <laughs> I don't know. Does he have a dime spot on his head? Because he's at least he's got a head of hair. I mean, let's give him that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I he mean, does. He's got that. Uh, we can find one good thing liver, about it. I mean, liver spots. He's got the liver spots. His tits are huge in that shirt. He's yeah, wearing yeah. his shirt the right <laughs> yeah. way today. I know. It's not inside out. That was bad. Did you guys hear recently he was talking about how he doesn't work out anymore? He's like, for 30 years straight, I was running every day yeah. and working out. Going to the bike Wait, boxing what? gym. Yeah. He's like, yeah. I just, I just can't do it anymore. It's like, yeah, John, we can tell. We can tell. <laughs> and no one was accusing you of working out every day <laughs> since the cabbie fight. Every, no one's going, Sir and John, what are your secrets? Yeah. How do you get, How those, I get that face and body? How do I get those gains, you ask? <laughs> All right, so and John. He eats a bologna sandwich every stream, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right before the stream. He's, he's chewing it as he starts the show. He looks like a grumpy oh, peanut, G. somebody said. I need a G. Bologna sandwiches like on my rider, like M M&M, and M's for Van Halen. It's got to be Oscar Mayer, yeah. not generic. I want a bologna sandwich on every flat surface of the green room. All right, <laughs> quick survey. I'm going to chat Zoom market right now. What? When's the last time you ate a bologna sandwich, Alex? Oh God. Oh God. I mean, I don't eat meat, but I, I liked a bologna sandwich when I was a kid. When you were a kid, mean, all right, yeah, Chrissy. Yeah. Maybe college. Maybe college, Anthony. Uh, put it this way, my mom made it for yes. me. <laughs> all right, Jen. I long couldn't time possibly ago. 10, 10 years old, probably. Yeah. Missy B. Wow. 1999. Yeah. 1999. Wow, she remembers it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Once the new millennium came about, bologna sandwiches went right out the window. It's so fucking yes. weird that this adult They're man. In the 21st century. I can't bologna eat bologna sandwiches. All right. So now he's going to explain he doesn't have any guests and, and why that is. But um, so I was going to uh, say on this beer on the balcony that I have. Been trying desperately to get guests. Oh, My trolls have boy. been contacting, you know, any guests that they see me. If I reach out on Twitter, they contact them and, you know. And, Why would you reach out on and, Twitter, and, though? Uh, you know, tell them not to go on the show. What do they well, say? Yo, well, to be fair, I've reached out to Hal Sparks and, you know, added Hal Sparks. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've Hal trolled. Sparks is done with yeah, John. Yeah, I've, I've definitely trolled he Hal Sparks. Done so. so, yeah, Christy, that's what I was thinking, too. So what he does is he just at mentions people on Twitter yeah. openly. Oh, is he, he verified? Does he think that's going to just help him get guests? I guess. Do my show. So he's constantly telling people to do his <laughs> yeah. show. Do my yeah. show. And it's like, that's not a good way to book for your show. No. No. <laughs> that's why. But whatever, like, I understand if, if I announce a guest sometimes, yeah. the trolls, whatever, <laughs> they'll, they'll go like, oh, why would you go on this guy? He's a racist. He's a pedophile. He's a homophobe. He's a, yeah. and, and some of the guests get, you know, scared away. Um, but what would they say about John? 
Like, yeah, don't do John's show. Yeah. Why? No, uh, I, 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 I right, wanted, there's I no wanted to do John's not show. not to do his show other than, like, yeah. you know, that many people are going to see it. He's an idiot. I mean, you could say that, but yeah. it's I mean, like you, scary. You smell him through StreamYard. That's other true. Than that, <laughs> there's no reason yeah, yeah. Like, uh, stink yard. <laughs> you know, and, and uh, you know, <laughs> tell them not to go on my show. And whatever the case may oh. be, I don't really give a crap. Yes, you do. By the way, this John has so many tells. He's so transparent. Yeah. When he does the, uh, you know, you know, uh, so, you know, you know, he's lying. He's lying. Yes, yes, he's yes. Lying. Because yeah. there was a time in this show, and I almost clipped it, I'm like, it's boring. But he starts telling the story about something that actually happened to him. Not a single stutter. Yeah, yeah. Stammer, wow. Just blah, 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 that's how you know he's always lying. Right, when he's trying wow. to pull a fast one. Well, well, have you heard the conspiracy that Stevie Wonder is not blind? Uh, oh, yeah, I, I actually might yeah. believe yeah, that I mean, one. Did you see that when he oh, grabbed wow. the, the mic, mic stand? stand? Times, and he's been seen driving a car. And <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal on TNT said, I saw Stevie Wonder taking a picture one time. They're on a boat. Stevie Wonder's like using a camera. Dude, oh, also, also that reading oh. rainbow guy could see the entire time on Star Trek. Oh, come oh. on. I know. It's crazy. It's, I can't believe but, it. He didn't but, need but, this. Back to the point that yeah. I'm going to make is that I think this. The, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> the trolls. I mean, like that. Yeah. I mean my dad's yeah. like the trolls. Like, he'll stammer on like a word or something, you know, just randomly. I could be yelling. So he's like, oh, oh, oh. Like, well, John admitted this so. recently when he was talking about private parts. He yeah. did that scene at the end of the movie, and they made him take it a second time because they're like, well, you know, you were kind of stuttering and stuff. He's like, no, I, that's what I do. Yeah. Because he was doing it on purpose. Yeah. It's not. Right. So they didn't, they, he was doing too much on set? Well, right. I think the director didn't realize what the. I think Alex's was. mic is off for some reason. Oh, I oh, know. Right. Jiggle the handle. Wait, Jesus I fucking it. Christ, I don't Alex. Know. I'm an idiot. Guys, give Come me a break. That's good. I heard that. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, we got. got, got people yeah, are paying yeah, attention now, that. Sarah. That's hey, people news. are listening. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. There anyway, goes. what Alex just good said now. is that he wants to have gay sex with Stuttering John. I don't no, know why he said that. Wow. I don't know why he said, said that. Wow. He's gonna fuck me. I'm not the gay one. <laughs> <laughs> You're on the receiving end. It's not gay. No, yeah. Right. I didn't do that. I didn't have a boner. You so. consented to it last night. <laughs> While you were drunk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm starting to think that this guy does care. Uh -huh. That the trolls are fucking. With I them. think so too. Because he says he doesn't over and over again, but it kind of seems like maybe this isn't going well for him. And on Saturday, I will have a guest. I didn't anticipate this happening today, but who the hell gives a shit? The trolls have run. Oh, have won this round. You. That's what beer in the balcony <laughs> is. I don't really care about. You know, I love having guests on, but if I don't have a guest, I'm fine. I hope you're fine too. <laughs> Oh man, what? this is this is a oh, defeated man. Wow. He is broken right now. He's like, I, I just want to wow. do the shit. Is this with a you. two hour show? That he's it's doing? an hour. Okay, so Beer on the Balcony is on it. Because I, I thought he did back to back hour long guests. He does a two hour show on Saturdays at noon, and then at two o'clock is another hour Beer on the Balcony. Oh, I see. Okay, so. Now, let me, let me make clear what I said. <laughs> This is behind a paywall, <laughs> and I don't care. <laughs> and I, and I don't care. I'll register. I want you to pay for something that I could give two shits wow. about. <laughs> All right. So John decides he's he's a movie buff. He's like, I'm going to talk about movies. This whole episode is about oh, movies. cool a topic. Nice. Yes. And I can't think of a worse way to talk about movies than the way that John does oh, on this no. specific episode. One too many. I do love. I love movies and. You know, I talked about National Lampoon's European, not European, uh, National Lampoon's Vacation, which to me, by all accounts, is the best Chevy Chase movie that, he's, you know, that he's ever made. Now, Foul Play was great. For those of you who don't know Foul Play, that was with Goldie Hawn. And, um, hold yeah. on. And? I, Someone the else. famous dwarf. By the way, this is the first thing he brought up. I want to talk about movies today. The first thing he brings up, he doesn't even know who's in this movie that who's he loves in it. so much. And 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 like he's is he talking about Chevy Chase movies? I think so. He said it's his favorite Chevy Chase movie is Vacation. But he didn't preface it by saying today we're going to talk about Chevy Chase movies. No. He goes movies. Uh, <laughs> vacation, yeah. greatest Chevy European Chase. European Vacation. I mean, not that one. That other one with Goldie Hawn <laughs> and the other person. Yeah, what's it this? It gets you worse. Oh God. Hold on. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Ah. Oh, my God. Let ah. me guess it on my own. Oh, it looks like he's taking a shit. Damn it. 
Oh. Anyway, famous. It was at the tip of my drool laden tongue. Later. No, no, Chevy Chase is a giant. He's over six foot tall. It was Chevy Chase, Goldie on. And um, <laughs> he's trying to rev up for I it. I forget who oh. the other people were in the oh. movie. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Move on. Yeah, I know. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. I'll think of it. I'll Don't think of it. Me. Why would you think your brain would start working now? It, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why would you think that, John? <laughs> Assume it's not going to ever work. Uh, so then he figures it out and he's very proud of himself. Oh, okay. And then there was Billy Barty. Billy Barty. Barty? The it's Billy Barty. I knew Barty. it would come to me at yeah. some point. Uh, oh, oh, uh, oh. Oh, no. <laughs> That's like the OP. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, right. It's, uh, <laughs> equally as douchey. Yes. What's going on with our, our video right now? I feel like it's lagging a little bit. No, that's just John. <laughs> just, it just, oh, I yeah, am yeah. John. <laughs> Sometimes it looks like I'm paused. <laughs> so this is hilarious. So he brings up, he's talking about movies that he likes, he's talking about comedies that he likes. Oh, uh, comedies, of course. And he's talking about the movie Arthur. Oh, oh. the original one? The original one. All right. Love it. Now, please, does he do an impression? Oh. No. But... The main character reminds him of someone. Oh. Not him, though. For some reason, not him. This is hilarious. Oh, boy. That's great. Arthur, by far. You want to laugh, smoke some weed, and watch fucking Arthur. Dudley Moore is so damn good as a fucking drunk. He reminded me of my (laughs) brother-in-law. Oh, my God. (laughs) <laughs> Every he reminded pause. me of my brother in law. My brother in law. I know some drunks, by the you way. Know. Just so you know. A, dr- a, a drunk guy, the, the loser, thinks he's having a good time, but he's fucking his life up. <laughs> but why would you even call someone out in your family like that? Yeah, yeah. Even yeah. if it wasn't so obvious that John right. is the biggest drunk in his family. Of course. I wouldn't call it out and just be like, yeah, my brother, woof. Yeah, he's got, he's got the worst self-awareness of anybody. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. It, He's the, devoid of any self-awareness. Law. Yeah. All right, so let's check out some expert analysis on oh, the movie cool. Arthur, because if you're going to talk movies, you're a movie buff. Yeah. I want to hear why this movie's so great. What what about it <laughs> Sure. makes it so good? <laughs> and um, it was awesome. Awesome movie. Um. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that was a, that was an awesome movie. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Oh my god! It's an awesome, awesome movie. movie. <laughs> that was, it was an like, awesome movie. It, 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 I swear, that's like Fetterman the other day with fracking, <laughs> yeah. fracking, fracking. I like fracking. Fracking's good. Fracking. <laughs> awesome movie. Awesome. Awesome. In in summary, awesome. Uh, awesome. <laughs> in case you're just getting here now, you remember, Arthur, awesome. You remember. When you said you must have hated that moose, that was awesome. <laughs> awesome. Dude, dude, yes. This is literally the Chris Farley The Chris show. Farley bit. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, but he's not doing it on purpose. No. He's literally Fire. doing, yeah. Did you guys see that movie? That was that was great. That oh. was really great. That was the best. That's that was the best. Yeah, oh, also, oh, you God, heard it in that it. clip, but he does it throughout the show. He talks about how, like, if you want to laugh, smoke a bunch of weed. Yeah, always. And then do It that. has to be prefaced with that, smoking yeah. a bunch smoke of weed. Smoke a bunch of weed. Yeah, because that's what a 12-year-old says. But uh, what's the <laughs> <Yeah>. deal? <laughs> what is the deal with his weed deal? I mean, is that is he always talking about smoking weed? Is that This is, is actually that more recent. Yeah, he doesn't that, normally that talk new. about smoking weed so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That seems new. Yeah. That's just what it's, I noticed as a doctor. New. I'm like, all of a sudden now he's – because I know he smokes weed. I think yeah. he's talking about running out of weed. Yeah, really. sure. But that's kind of his first, like, just smoke a bunch of weed. You know, like he's kind of – that's someone that can't be uh, by themselves watching a movie, right. enjoying it without having something to take the edge off of remembering who the fuck you are <laughs> oh. and, and how awful it is to yeah. be that person. Yeah, it's like misery loves company vibes. Like, smoke, yeah, yeah. You know, like, yeah. I smoke a bunch of weed. I shoot up some heroin. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's remember that John is a feminist. Of course. Okay. Uh, he's he's a, a champion for women. He's a liberal. He's a champion for women. Loves it. Um, Julian Andrews had a rack. Oh, that's <laughs> a <laughs> Whoops. A rack. Carl, what is your opinion of why is he such a liberal like that? Because his daughter transitioned? I mean, what do you think? That's Anthony's opinion. That's my opinion. <laughs> yeah. I think since his daughter transitioned, 
uh, he needs to get her to love him, yeah. him to love it, whatever. The fuck. Yeah, right. And and uh, so he's just gone completely mad with liberalism. Because he doesn't it's like, know look at me. About he doesn't know anything. No, no, yeah, when he, he talks about politics, he doesn't. Oh, know. he's an idiot. He can't even talk to these congresswomen when he randomly, you know, finagles one on a show. So yeah. it's just he's not like dialed no, in. No, no, no. It's just weird. So I have a theory, and this is something that I actually read. Somebody posted this somewhere, but centering John, everything with him is personal. Everything. With yes. Him. And he talks about in his book how great Trump was to him. Dude, he loves Trump. Uh, Trump flew him out on the helicopter. Yeah. And took him, wow. got him spa packages, all this stuff. Trump no longer talks to John like everyone else because he's not famous. Yeah. Who cares? So he's pissed at Trump personally. Yeah. I think that's where this all came mm. from. Oh. And then he saw there was a money-making opportunity. Like, yeah. oh, other people hate Trump too? All right, let's go. We're the Trump bashing people. Yeah, I, I I think it's the only guests he can get, are, well, or or he thinks like Opie yeah. also thinks that he can have liberal people that he talks to, and it might uh, give him a, a doorway into fame again. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, that's they'll be what like the status quo, right, or right, right, power yeah. all have that. You know, oh no, exactly. they, being brave and actually talk, speaking your mind, if it isn't the most popular thing, uh, that he has none of that. Right, yeah. he needs to do the company line and hope. And dream that someone in Hollywood's going to go. He's a liberal. Let's give him a gig. Oh yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. He's trying like, to oh, fit in. Oh, same thing with him. Trying to fit in. Yeah, he's trying to I fit. Mean, he has no clue about a thing mm. about politics. Oh, and, the, the, Trump... the political parts of these shows. Like I watch them sometimes, not very often, but every now and again I will watch it, and it's you can't even like clip it because it's so horrendously bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because he wears a Ukraine shirt. Unironically. Oh god. I mean, how can a guy struggling like that with inflation and just how terrible things are, yeah. seeing the border crisis? I'm not even trying to get on my soapbox, but unironically, where? But you uh, don't understand. It, inflation is a global thing. Does not know what Biden. I mean, that's what he says. He yeah. actually believes that. And, yes. and he says, "Oh, let's give more money to the Ukraine." I yeah, just, yeah. I can't believe. Well, don't you want to defend democracy, but Alex Stein? Yeah. Even less Isn't that oh. important? But all right, you Putin fucking. <laughs> yeah. He's a Russian talking point. Yeah. Even all these leftists now are saying we're giving too much money. Yeah, right, no right. Shit. Like, you know? No shit. Yeah, at some point, it's too much. <laughs> Holy shit. I've been to LA recently. What a shithole. That's a disaster, yeah. What a fucking shithole. If anyone lives in LA and they see $80 billion going over to fucking... Right. I mean, Obviously, this is all part of the military industrial complex. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that on the list over here? Can right, right. It's on. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, complex. wait a minute. Yeah. No, I don't <laughs> no. think you can talk about it. All right. No, I'm for it, too. Good. All right. I'm for it. We're all for it. All right. Let's see what John's up to. <laughs> <laughs> let's get back on track. Whoops. I'm going to get in trouble. If you raised a Catholic like I was, and you had a father like mine who told me that, you know, the Antichrist is going to come I go, Dad, how am I going to know who, you know, if in the form is, of a, a bad yeah, podcaster? You're going to have to figure that out. Like, what? Dad, I'm a kid. Uh, he's cracking himself up. But Skull. because of that whole antichrist, like, so the exorcist to even think that a the demon can exorcist. empty your body? The exorcist? The exorcist, yeah. So he's talking about scary the exorcists. The exorcist. And he says that my dad taught me oh that I will God. be confronted with the Antichrist. Yeah. How will I know, Dad? You just have to figure it out. Uh, Turns out, Anthony Cumia. I'm the Antichrist. <laughs> <it> awesome. <laughs> His dad knew all along. Nice. Go figure. All right. So <laughs> like then old man told me. More trolls. More trolls and how John copes with that. If you were a kid and watched Jaws, dude, I wouldn't fucking go in the water. Oh, I was afraid a, to take a bath. What an original thought. I'm sure he was and still is afraid. Wow. It's hilarious. Even a shower. I mean, can a, can a shark come it's, in through the shower head? It's I don't the know. shark. <laughs> That's why I'm filthy. Sure. Uh, Thank you, Chrissy. That's so fucking oh my funny. God, dude, what a fresh take is... on Jaws. Hey, by the way, if anyone's watching down there, Gino or Missy or anyone wants to pop up, we have an open seat right now. Sure. People have just dedicated. I mean, it's it's so sad. I don't feel bad. Their whole lives, all these guys' lives are about me. It's just all about me. Uh, God, I feel like Christopher Walken. Like everything I oh. do or say, it's a it's, everyone's watching. 
Guys, it does have to be a weird feeling. Pause. Uh, I'm great. just saying, guys, this I has agree. to be a weird feeling. It has to be very weird. I get it a little bit, but he gets it way worse. Yeah, yeah. Everything, because people go back and watch my videos and they just micro why. I mean, yes, you know, yes. Every little thing. It is, a, I mean, like, I almost feel like that's why he's getting rid of all that back stuff. Because yes. he's afraid he said the N word or he said sex. Oh, stuff, or, yeah, or, you know. Holy shit. Yeah. Yes. Because everyone's going through all of those videos yes. and everything that Johnny Cage of people are doing, he's done. Oh, yes. And so they're pulling those clips yeah. and they're yeah. they're showing that he's a liar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's a hypocrite. <laughs> and that's why he took it all down. But you're right, though, Alex. When I started making fun of Stuttering John, it was a one-way communication. Yep. I would watch John. I'd make fun of him. Now it's become this two-way thing. <laughs> Where it's actually crazy. Oh no! It's insane. It's insane. It's insane when it's become because right. now, because now him doing a podcast gets you know uh, of course micromanaged and just every little detail <laughs> is you know uh, talked about and obsessed over. But it's a good way because this is the thing is if he and we say this all the time. You said if he leaned into it, he could benefit. But and sadly, everybody yeah. else, yeah, everyone else is he benefiting. Fucked, he fucked that up. Yeah, he, he missed can't, that one because he can't. Steven really do anything self-deprecating. Steven he, in the chat says he he's been afraid of shower since Psycho. <laughs> <laughs> Skull, by the way, I got a coolest light, silver bullet. <laughs> oh, so gross. Uh, God, I feel oh, like Christopher shit. Walken. Like everything oh. I do or say, it's a it's, everyone's watching. Was that an impression? Uh, Greek Latin. Oh. Thanks, Squeegee. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's watching. The skull. So the kicker on that clip was at, at the end of that, he goes, yeah, yeah, thanks to Squeegee. To Squeegee is one of his trolls. No, oh, he doesn't. No. Yeah, I swear I only played this guy. Gross so jack off joke at the end of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this guy became to Squeegee to make fun of his. Oh, yeah. Bit. His Squeegee yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Squeegee yeah. Legendary so, so he's sitting there jizz going, Squeegee. He's sitting there going, geez, I, I just can't believe it. Everyone's a troll. They're all destroying me. Thanks to Squeegee. Me. It's just all about me. <laughs> uh, God, I feel like Christopher Walken. Like everything I do or say, it's a it's, everyone's watching. I don't even know what that means. Uh, Greek Latin. Thanks to Squeegee. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks to Squeegee. Thanks to Squeegee. You're one of the good trolls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, at least there are some people that support me. Yeah, exactly. The Squeegee. All right. This is John talking about his lifestyle. This is one of the things that I enjoy about his show. When he actually lets loose, tells you how he lives his life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gives you an insight. No guess to get in the way, sure. Right. See, that's the kind of thing, like, when I come home, you know, I'll smoke some weed. Uh, <laughs> and then I go and, uh, and then I'm like, if I don't, sometimes I'll try, like, a new movie, like, I like to get to new movies, but if I'm like, if I'm like, all right, I'm ready and fucking stoned, I, you know, it's going to be hard to focus on a, you know, yeah, I'll you're high. something old because I could watch fucking old movies all day too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's so profound, isn't he? I get high. I, get I high. put on a new movie. I don't understand it because I'm high. <laughs> so I'll put on an old movie I've seen a bunch of times. I'm a movie buff. What can I say? <laughs> yeah. You know, he's really got the life of Riley. Really <laughs> uh, also, I know it's a very liberal state, but you're a substitute teacher, and you're like, when I get home from work, the first thing I do is smoke weed. I would leave that out. Yeah, yeah. I don't I know. know. Seems... I'm a regular sistle and egret. Yeah, but I love the other day he was talking about how I got back from school. So now he's now he, you know, because you exposed him for that, he just yeah. leans into it. And, you know, he, oh, yeah, now he's like he's benefiting society. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's doing yeah. it out of the goodness of his heart, <laughs> Alex. Isn't that great? I love how he can turn things around from embarrassing to he's the hero <laughs> in point one two yes. seconds. He it's has really gills. He has gills. Gills? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. I drink so much cores yeah. that I have to be able to breathe while the liquid's going down my throat. So much like a fish. Amazing. Uh, There's so many shows and films. I don't know how you can keep up with it. And there's so many new movies coming out. You're not obligated. I'm getting sick. Are you guys getting sick as... As I am uh, <laughs> at the... Um, no, we don't have cirrhosis in the living room. <laughs> you guys also hate vegetables. <laughs> I hated broccoli as a kid. <laughs> then I started liking it. Uh, at the... Um, oh, my God. 
Oh my all these Marvel movies, like Marvel Black movies. Adam. <laughs> <laughs> all right. He goes, are you guys thinking of all these Marvel movies like Black Adam? That's yeah. a DC character. Oh, oh, I don't, listen, I'm not here to be the, the geeks and gamers. Right, right. Yeah, the nerd, the but, nerd guy. That's but I mean, that's call something that we should fucking know. You should probably know it. And by the way, you had a 50-50 chance of getting it right. <laughs> that's what, how much of a loser John is. <laughs> I mean, he's watching a lot of movies. He's watching all the superhero movies still. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Marvel. (laughs) Well, it's a good thing that John studied film in school. He went to NYU. NYU. A degree from NYU. Got a degree from NYU. He He wanted to be a director. Yeah. He studied. And and you can really tell. How many many superhero movies do we need? How many? It always ends the same way, you know. the villain gets thwarted in the end, and then thwarted, and then it's over. thwarted, <laughs> and then another drink. Oh, is he great? Superhero movies. It's the good guys always win. The what good the guy point? wins. What's the point of that? Uh, Do you understand that. story structure at all? I I don't know. <laughs> That's why they're called the protagonist. <laughs> you moron! I just wish one time the antagonist <laughs> would save the day. <laughs> <laughs> That's how that works. Every pause is gold. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. This is just no. It's not gold. It's silver. Silver bullet. That's what I love about um, Shuli Show. They have so many screen captures. Oh yeah. Of John just, just John crazy faces, and they will just pop them on anywhere. Any <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> pop them on randomly, and it's hilarious. Uh, all right, this is John uh, once again dealing with trolls. Go. Uh, 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 Oh. Uh, Troll. He gets so distracted by the chat. Yeah. Um, oh boy, these trolls are just trying. Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so I'm so scared. Uh, John, you are a troll. You're physically a troll. Your <laughs> arms are not proportionate with your fucking torso. Was You're you so disgusting. Like a, a gay guy? Arm? Yeah, I think that was a yeah. wait. Wait a minute, right? Oh, you can't I'm do that. So scared. Yeah, yeah, being very feminine. It's trolls like when trolls are making fun trying. of the retarded guys. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so, I'm so scared. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow, limp wristed, very stereotypical. <laughs> he told us, all right, very good. All right, so now we get into rom com talk. Oh, nice. Oh, right. John is a big fan of rom coms, and as you guys have already heard. He goes deep with movies. He tells you they're awesome. Oh, no. awesome. Yeah, he tells you they're awesome. Awesome, awesome yeah. movie. Why? Because it's Let's awesome. take a walk down that road. <laughs> Let's go walk down that road. Um, oh, God. When Harry met Sally. Come Harry met Sally. Awesome. <laughs> no. Notting Hill. Awesome. Ugh. Oh. How about your show, Nodding you Off? Really? You've got me. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Sleepless in Seattle. Oh. Awesome. Awesome. Is there the something same, about like, Mary? Come era. on. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah you're but, right. It's, it's kind of the same the era. It's all awesome. Things are good. Right? Love actually. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. What is this? This is a show he, people have to pay to watch. And then behind him is a kitchen so gross, even a refrigerator repairman won't even lay <laughs> down, down uh, to fix not look on, on the floor under yeah. the refrigerator. Like, this is literally the Chris Farley show. Yeah. Do you guys ever see that awesome. movie? Awesome. What about this movie? Awesome. Find awesome. Awesome. out a, a different fucking yeah. Not something. Yeah, not talking like, Jim, about Jim, when you were crawling on that, on those broken shards to Bruce Willis, that was awesome. That was, yeah, that was awesome. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this next clip, John's trying to remember a movie that he can't remember. He should write notes down or something for himself, I think. And then there's the other one. Um, <laughs> Drink. Uh, oh, boy. Uh, oh, my God. The one uh, with um, uh, Ricky every time he says, uh. Rob Lowe uh, and Kevin McCarthy. <laughs> And, and Jacqueline Bissett, was it? Jacqueline. Oh, and, and they're college students? Cause he's well, slurring on, guys, everywhere. Yeah. Rob Lowe, come on. Kevin McCarthy. Uh, <laughs> Kevin McCarthy. <laughs> oh, my God. Paul McCartney. Uh, 
and and McCarthy ends up wow. sleeping with Holy shit. Wow. Rob Lowe's mom. <laughs> yeah. That was a good one. <laughs> oh my god. My that favorite part about John, he doesn't understand why people <laughs> goof on him. He's yeah. like, he's like, I'm just a D-list celebrity. Yeah. Why are you guys gonna be? Because you're the worst broadcaster in the world. I swear, it's amazing. I, I have to say it for the millionth time. <laughs> if this was a character yes. he was doing on purpose, it would be brilliant. Yeah, it'd be like Andy Kaufman. Yeah, right. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. Where he just never breaks this character. Speaking of Andy Kaufman, I heard you're wrestling a, a woman. I am. Supposed to Ralph's to, event yeah, yeah at, at, at Ralph Mania. I'm supposed to wrestle a woman, and it's going to be insane for the Ukraine. So, you know, prime time <laughs> uh, 99. You can't say that. Yeah. No, it's going to be wild. We're going to be yeah, I'm wrestling. I forget her name. I think we're, her and I are about to start. Uh, Causing some heat, but she's supposed to be some. Does she have a penis? No, she's okay. got a, she's got total tits and a vagina. I'm gonna yeah. slam her ass to the ground and Sweet. fucking knock that hoe out. So Sweet. and that, that, that's all you know kosher because yeah. they're signing a deal before, and it's gonna be fun. I might you know grab her butt or boob, whatever. But it's just uh, no holds bars, mask. Can so. she spit at you? Yeah, she can spit. Oh, she, can right. use <laughs> she can use weapons. That's can it. you do oh, the nice. bowling ball? Yeah. Can do you, you want to rehearse with Chrissy yeah. Mayer? Maybe we might. Have Maybe to we could do that on the stream. But yes, I am rehearse his wrestling match. Oh yeah. I'm wrestling a woman. All right. In February, yes. So, how, how diverse of you? Well, that's diverse. what I'm saying. It's inclusivity, and that's what people don't realize. And I'll be wrestling probably as Alexandria Stein. So it'll be the oh inter- nice, yeah. It'll be the Intercontinental Transgender Championship. Perfect. Of the world. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Can't wait. Good All right. Uh, so let's fly through the rest of these clips because there's some fun things going on here. First off, John has to bring up his kids. Yeah. I don't want to talk about his kids, but he kid. insists on talking about his kids. Yeah. But it's hard to keep up with all these movies and all these shows. I mean, my kids tell me, like, all these different, like, series and shows that I'm like, I, oh, God. Well, I just finished so much water Squid Game because my son told me to do that. My son. And then my daughter told me to see Parasite. The same, same person. So, so he I had that. two sons originally. He started off with two boys. Honestly, I don't even know. No, he no, three, no. He, he had kids. the daughter. He has three kids. Yeah. Brothers. And the daughter transitioned. Well, and I was listening to a thing about how, you know, I think it was your bit where he had to borrow a hundred dollars from his attorney because his oh, wife, oh, you know, did yeah, you yeah, yeah. was that recently when yeah, you played yeah, that yeah, clip? Yeah, yeah. Gosh, that was hard. He wanted to take his daughter to lunch. I was so oh, his attorney God. felt bad for him and gave him money. Yeah. He was he was on a podcast. Like, I don't even know why I'd say this publicly. He's like, Yeah, well, and then, you know, I got an insurance deal and I was paying something for a Calabasas hat. Like, uh, trying to act uh, like he still uh, yeah. had some money in Calabasas. He had to borrow hundred bucks in return. Oof. The list of John borrowing money from people is longer than Chad Zumax. Uh, yeah, that, yeah. so, that gives you so much anxiety thinking like, I don't have a hundred dollars. Like not even a credit card. Not even. A, yeah. I think uh, if John tried to borrow money from Chad, it would end the universe. <laughs> like it's sort of like matter, anti matter. Yeah. yeah. It just the whole place implodes. And, yeah. So the reason why I played that clip though is because people speculate online. I don't think this, but people online think that John doesn't talk to his kids anymore. Mm-hmm that they don't really care to right. converse with them. So John goes, well, I had to watch these two things that my kids pointed out, Parasite from 2019. Right. Yeah. The, uh, they won the Oscar. Yeah, the, the movie with the Chinese family living yeah. in uh, the house. Th- three years old. Yeah, yeah. And then Squid Game. Squid Game. Which yeah. is over a year old. Of course. Yeah, so but, it's like, are you having recent conversations with your kids oh about this God. shit? Like, that seems... But, you know, this is the thing. Obviously, he's not close to his kids. He's got no money. You know what yeah. I mean? You know, and that's what it is. With kids, you got to pay for stuff. If you're not supporting them financially, they're yeah. not talking. Yeah, they have nothing to do with you. That's well, what I'm well, saying. They're, they're they're all, they're all, uh, two of them are adults, though. Okay, so well, they there's then. no more of that, you know. Child well, a lot support. of times because a single mom's like, "Yeah, punk dad's not giving me money. I'm paying all yeah. the bills." You know, their mom turns you against a dad. Dead beat so. dad. Yeah, no. you know that's the thing. that's why they radicalize yeah. him a little bit. <laughs> now we forget that John was a signed musician. Oh yeah, right. he had a record deal. Yeah. He was the front man of a rock band, and then he reminds us of how good he is <laughs> at music. <laughs> and it's called a wild thing. Uh oh. Yeah. Just a wild thing. Oh, it's great. <laughs> Whoa, it's awesome. That's like when he sings Howard's theme song. It's so bad. Is he just that serious? Because he thinks that we're going to hear that and be like, oh, shit, that song's bad. I don't even know what song he's singing. but I, I don't even know what that song. is because I know there was the Wild Thing song that they did, redid with like Kinnison yeah, and, right. and all it's that. It's not that, obviously. Then there was, uh, you know, Wild Thing. Uh, yeah, there's yeah, a yeah. few versions, but 
I don't remember and when then this goes, wow thing, thing. <laughs> bam, bam, bam. <laughs> yeah. like the, the wow right, thing yeah, is yeah, that yeah. one. Tone load. I don't know what he was fucking doing there. I have no idea. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, is that brutal? All right, so we know that he does the skull thing. He does yeah. it over and over again. On Beer right. He's got a new move on this one. This is great. Skull! <laughs> <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Oh, wow. Lip. Going to the Kill. side with it. Very impressive. Oh, wow. All right. This is an example of John just getting distracted by trolls again. <laughs> I mean, that made me cry. <laughs> everyone gives in their paychecks, <laughs> uh, you know, to see. <laughs> What is so he they doing? Out, I'm just looking at this guy. What? No, I can see you, dummy. I can see all your trolls. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. But but I feel bad for you. But when they all give their checks to try and what? save this guy. Okay. What movie is he, what talking, is he about? talking about? What is he talking about? I don't know. He's talking about movies that made him cry uh, for oh, a while. God. And he's trying to tell the story, but he can't help himself. No. He's reading. What he's reading. And he's going, <laughs> uh. I mean, it's so insane. It's it's madness. This is his paid. Yeah. He's, he's asking people for money to sit there and talk about shit no one cares about in it with with an attitude like yeah. he could be bothered fucking you know Dude, he could be bothered to actually put a show together. Some people can multitask. This guy can't even task. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> he gets so easily distracted by everything. He, I think he realizes we're just watching like an animal in a zoo. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He yes. realizes. That? Yes. I mean, we're just watching. I realize that. Yeah, I don't like think a, he. Does. Yeah, yeah. It's like a fish in a fish tank. He's, a, he's yeah, we're waiting for him to just throw his feces at us. Yeah, yeah, at us. Yeah. All right. Now he's going to talk about a song that makes him cry. Oh. And apparently his mom is a fan of Pavarotti. Oh. Listen to what he says right here. Oh, no. And, uh, oh, and she told me about it because she's a big Pavarotti guy. Like, my mom loves Pavarotti. <laughs> she's a big Pavarotti guy. She's a big Pavarotti guy, my okay. mom. Oh, I Everyone forgot. knows my mom, the big Pavarotti guy. I got my daughter confused with my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Right. <laughs> big Pavarotti guy. All right, guys. What I've been waiting for this whole episode is for John to tell me what the funniest comedy movies are. Oh yeah, like John. We just uh, tell me what, what are the funniest. Finally, comedy? a list we could. Can we write these down so I can watch yeah, them later? Right. Uh, and now let's get into our funniest uh, movies of all time. We've already uh, covered the case like a gorilla. He's scratching. <laughs> okay. And now. Uh, uh, he's clicking well, his I would say uh, meet the parents. What? Took him that long. Meet Animal the House is hands down. It's oh, hands, down. Hands, hands down. down what? It's hands, 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 hands down. Hands down. Do you, you wouldn't get it. <laughs> you, yeah, it's hands. And you have down. to go to NYU. A film. Could school. you imagine going? What are the some of the funniest movies? And you're like, ah. Oh, you couldn't think of one fucking movie. Uh, uh, meet the parents. Caddyshack. Uh, yeah. Caddyshack two. All right. Well, yeah. Here's more more funny <laughs> private movies. Private parts. Why do you say private parts? Private parts. Oh my God. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> funniest <laughs> movies of all time. <laughs> oh, oh, my oh my god! And the chat has to be naming movies, right? Yeah, I mean, it has to be. I mean, airplane. Monty. Monty. We just. I think he's like seconds. literally listing yeah. like m- funny movies, like from like a top ten funny movie of all time. He has the list of a funny movies of a dad, like of like yeah. a boring dad. Yeah. 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 Yeah, where is his and and if he knew he was going into this, yeah, have a list before the show starts. <laughs> it's called prep. A little prep would have gone prep. Away Not, for this one. Prep isn't just Holy AIDS crap. medication, by the way. <laughs> you might want to. Holy shit. All right. So good stuff, John. God, that's brilliant. Wow. I know it's not easy to do a show by yourself. Uh, I know that that's difficult to do, but what the fuck? Oh, man. This is insanely bad. Well, you could argue it's one of his best shows ever. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes. shows ever. <laughs> I actually enjoy doing solo shows. Yeah. I really oh, think no, you're yeah. great. two hours. You could talk about whatever you want. Sometimes guests are great. 
if they're great guests. Sure. Sometimes it's pulling teeth. Yeah. They interrupt when you're kind of on a what roll. What do you mean by that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I love doing it. Two hours. You can talk about whatever the fuck you want. But but how about you have a, a sheet with some stories, clips that you want to play? Do, this fucking guy is ripping off the audience that is paying him to make fun of him. Or so he? it's almost like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's giving them exactly what they yeah, want, by the way. Right. All right, maybe I'm wrong here. He's giving us exactly what we want. <laughs> yes. yes. I, mean, <laughs> I mean, you have monologues. Has he ever had a monologue? That, no. I mean, does he ever have like a cohesive, no. you know, uh, this is why Ukraine, why we need more money, blah, blah, Right, blah, right. Blah. He's yeah. not. He doesn't have a monologue, but he definitely is waterlogged. Yeah, <laughs> no, he couldn't even have a monologue about m the movies. He didn't yeah, even know like, nothing. Oh, awesome. I just nothing. can't believe that. this is his that... professional sign-off. Yeah, well, this is uh, how he ends. Uh, you should just read the back of a. Hope you enjoyed this beer on the balcony without any guests. I was just guess. And uh, now I leave. Saying, <laughs> giggy. Oh. oh my god, that was the saddest gig yet. I swear, I if I saw that live, <laughs> if I was actually watching that live, I would call the police and do a welfare check. <laughs> that looked like a man who was ready to hang himself. I know. Like, like, oh, all joking aside, stuttering John was stut Joe was here. All, all joking the aside, it's it's bad. Oh, yeah. When he got in that fight at the Pickwick and he got kicked out for the Trump thing, I thought he was going to die. Never you know, got kicked out. suicidal after that. Oh, know? yeah. Do you think that's what he does? you think he just goes from here to the Pickwick? Or do you mm -hmm. think he just sits in, in his... Yeah. There's a middle school in between, unfortunately. I, I know, but, <laughs> yeah. but you know, right after this, he's going on, you know, yeah. your side. I'm, he's going I'm on gonna smoke he's a going joint. On, he's going on shoelace. He's just, I bet he just sits there and listens to it all day long. Oh, yeah. Do you I think he's it. had um, beer know. before he's done... Like substitute a, teaching? Do you think he's had? Oh yeah, oh, are you kidding? Sure. Smoke some weed and teach. I was the like children. actually trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, but that only way to cure hangover is to drink again. That's true. Like, true. That's, that's true. true. By the way, yeah. I cut out one of the best parts of the show. He goes, now I'm going to tell you my top five guitarists of all time. Oh. Like, just out of nowhere. Is that what Van Halen. Uh, yeah, Van Halen. Okay. <laughs> Van Halen Eddie is number Van one. Halen. Richie Sambora. Randy Rhodes is number two. Jimmy Page is number Jimmy three. Page. David Gilmour, number four. No, number five. Uh, no, okay. number five. Oh, you can say oh, anybody. You should think of one more guitarist. Carl Hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, what a buffoon. I love what it. What a fucking I, buffoon. Ch the children. Best, you, know, dude, you know when you had me dying the other day is he had Larry the Cable Guy, a guy that he defended yes. already, oh one of the most legendary things. And it says Dan Whitney is Larry the Cable Guy's name. Everybody knows it. That's even, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. it's now it's he's basically made that his new brand almost. And on his big castle chair, I mean, like a throne, <laughs> he has DW. <laughs> and Stoney John cannot figure out that's for his initials. Oh, my Why God, yes. I, I mean, dude, that, I'm like, are you kidding? You don't even know that's his Dan Whitney? What does he uh, say again, Carl? He goes, what does that mean? Is that what, what, is, what he said? Yeah. Why would you even ask that? What the fuck else could it possibly be? I know. Yeah. It just, that's what he was my dog. Like, he would not. <laughs> It would be his initials. A I mean, what else could it be? Oh, my God. Just, it's my mother's maiden name. <laughs> uh, uh, when he did that, that's when I was like, wow, he's like, he's actually autistic now. I mean, he's the Fred is totally. He's there the is something kid. going on. Yeah. Brain cells are not with him. Yeah. 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 You can watch video clips of John from a few years ago, and he's a lot sharper. At yeah, least. he was even less sharper back when he'd go on your show those few times. Yeah, before. yeah. He was getting crushed by Artie, but he was at least had a little. Right. Right, because so, like what got him so mad is when he used one of his jokes from his stand-up set and already called him out. He just lost it. Yeah, he so lost his. At life. least he had jokes. He couldn't say a joke now to save his life. No, there's oh, nothing. Yeah. He needs more energy. <laughs> Big announcement, everybody. Centering John is a dunzo, but he did do a beer on the balcony on October 31st. <laughs> Did you know about this, Chrissy, that John is taking a break from podcasting? No. So what he did was on November 1st, he said he was going to have like a Kardashian on or something, which, you know, he was just trolling people. And he's like, well, the Kardashian postponed, but instead of really fun, three funny people you're going to love. And then he just played Three Stooges. He never hmm. went on, just played Three Stooges. Is he taking a month stuff. off to like 
wash all his clothes, wait for his bruises to go away, <laughs> like exfoliate. Take no, he's going to gonna start spa. doing some serious drinking and all this podcast. He's going to get in the way of it. <laughs> Maybe he'll come back in a month looking svelte and healthy. Could Maybe he's going to do a detox. That'd be, that'd be, I'd be amazed if that were the case. Yeah, there is speculation online that. <laughs> Maybe he's going to get his place fumigated for bugs. Well, I did see a lot of speculation. Some people think that uh, he's going to be making the move with, into uh, his mother's house. Uh, ah. He's selling his apartment in Canoga Park to move back uh, to Long Island. Um, I don't know if that's the case or not. I, I think, this is my humble opinion, he's tried every which way to try to thwart the troll, <coughs> surely the trolls, from the trolls. getting clips of his show. So he took down all of his YouTube channel. That's what he's been doing over the last month. Wow. And now he's got this new idea. Check out this. This is brilliant. Yeah, baby. Welcome to the world famous stuttering John. <laughs> Let me just point out real quick, because there's stains all over his shirt. And oh, I, I think that he's trying to lean into the joke now. I could be wrong. He might be this disheveled. But the last few episodes, he's wearing his shirt backwards. Sure. He's kind of like trying to be, he shaved his yeah, the mustache, mustache trick. in half and then yeah. the other half. I think he's trying to be quirky now to get people like talking about him. The thing on his microphone. Right. So I'm not buying it. Yeah. I'm not buying the stains on his shirt, but it also is possible. I'm not buying the forced quirkiness. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's too obvious <laughs> for yeah, him. A little too fun. On podcast, beer on the balcony edition. As you know, I've been posting different links. Why? Because some assholes on my Patreon have been posting the links and giving it out for free. They think they irritate me. They don't. <laughs> I don't give a frog's fat ass. But they must love this show. You can't say... That I'm doing this thing so that they can't post the links anymore. I sent out fake links and fuck them up. And I don't even care if they do post the links to the show. Yeah. Those two things don't compute. There's In the same sentence. Cognitive it, dissonance going it, yeah. on. I don't give a frog's <laughs> fat ass. Please stop posting it. <laughs> so since this episode, he has posted. So where was this? What this secret? channel is this on oh well yeah i know go figure he still has to put out the link at some point so people can watch it yeah. so it's not like it's like fuck i can only click two links a day he got me uh, i'll it's try the third one get. too oh there it is there we go okay so john put out on his patreon he goes no one's gonna be charged uh we're taking a break we'll be back in january of 2023 now again that could be a misdirection oh, we so don't two know months. yes he's saying that he's taking off the next two months I just no John November sounds better than no John December. So I just, that's why I said it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so John brings on his guest. This introduction is something else. Chrissy, you can only hope that one day you'll be on a show and this is how you'll be introduced. He has a special place in my heart. Why? Because when I decided I wanted to start doing stand up comedy, I saw this person not only perform in the K-Rock comedy contest, but win. <laughs> he win. <laughs> but, and but win. He won the comedy contest. He came in first place. <laughs> he had the best score. Not only was he in the contest, he win. Yeah. And he and he win? And he won a comedy and contest. He beat, it. He beat is what everybody. He, just said. <laughs> he said smugly. <laughs> <laughs> the K like Rock he, comedy like contest. Could credit. you imagine? <laughs> oh, guys, today, very special treat for you. Christy Mayer, she won a radio comedy contest once <laughs> in the 80s. <laughs> Let's bring her on. <laughs> uh, poor John. Very impressive. And then he goes on to say that he, when he watched this guy do stand up, he got advice from this guy on how to do stand up. And this guy instructed John on how to do stand-up. I wouldn't want that credit. No. This is the guy who taught me how to do stand-up. <laughs> <laughs> let's, yeah, let's keep that on the DL, buddy. Come on. All right, so now he finally brings on Joey Cola. I know we've all been anticipating who's going to be the next guest on Beer on the Balcony. Is it going to be Betty Loco? Is it going to be Mark B? No. Joey <laughs> Cola. Here's the guy who taught me about hygiene. Oh, I like Joey Cola. He's really <laughs> funny. So, without further ado, from Belmore, Long Island, 
I used to date a girl from Belmore. She was dumb as a wall. I called her a Belmoron. But without Bad further boy. ado, Joey Cola, everybody. Hey, can you hear me? I can hear you, Joey. <laughs> hey, where Joey's are you? so funny. How you doing, my brother? I'm doing good. Look, look how good I look. Look, look. <laughs> He looks like a guy who goes on shows a lot. It's real he comfortable like, with that. He got stung by some bees, Joey Cola. Yeah. His eyes are usually more open. He goes on to explain why he looks the way he looks, uh, so I won't spoil that one for you. reaction or something? Okay. But it's interesting because this guy has had a career in comedy. I, I'm, I was actually surprised that you know who this was, Chrissy. He's so funny. Yeah, I've done shows okay. with him. Oh, okay. I, I was wondering because he's, he's a New York guy, so I was wondering if maybe you'd cross paths. Yeah, he's a Long Island guy mostly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. Yeah, well, genuinely funny. This is this is what makes this guy so interesting right here. You know, so I'm 61. My wife and I are married 35 years. And to be honest with you, I like to eat a good meal, watch Wheel of Fortune, and just go to bed and just hang out with my wife. Now I did it all. <laughs> I did. I did it all. I know everybody. I did it all. You know, and that's and that's it. He's done it all. Yeah. And what else is there to do? Wheel of Fortune, Dinner, Jeopardy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was actually going to ask you about supper, but that's coming up later in the show. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> so are you fucking? <laughs> 31 years. I know we didn't ask him that. <laughs> oh, no. All right. So then John has to tell his guests about his trolls and oh, about how, course. yeah, and about how he's thwarting his trolls. Oh, John. Uh,. Oh, my son's texting me. Sorry. Uh, All right. So I'm going to pause wait, it there. Go ahead. Chrissy. Son, isn't the son a daughter now? Well, he does have a son. He has two oh. sons. Oh. He okay. has two sons and a daughter. I keep getting that confused. I'm not trying to fuck with John. I really don't care about no. his kids. I don't pay attention to him at all. I know other people are interested in him. Like, John can't shut up about his kids, but I don't really care. But this is where people get suspicious of John because he's distracted and he says, oh, my son just texted me. But then listen to what he says right after that. It makes me think that he's lying about that. Uh, oh, my son's texting me. Sorry. Uh, yeah, well, the guy, you know, these guys love this show, so they post it. So the guy finally has figured out the, because I, I sent out two two fake links so I could have this guy fucking scrambling all over to yeah. try and get the real one. See, what you're talking about now is even Greek to me. I don't know what the links are. I don't know where you're going, how you send out I don't know thing, what links Patreon, are. <laughs> and all of this stuff. I have no idea what any of that is. Yeah, it's Greek to everyone. So what I do is people who pay me money, I send them fake links so they can't I find my show. <laughs> that's into not watching the show. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, yeah, that's confusing to me, too. Uh, don't feel bad there, Joey. It's Kind of stupid, but why would John? I have people who pay me money, and I want to confuse them into <laughs> I quitting. Yeah, I don't want them fighting the show. Why would John say, "Oh, I'm sorry, I'm distracted. My son's texting me." Yeah, yeah, I guess they found the link. Is his son telling him that the trolls found the link? What, what's the right. connection there? It doesn't make any fucking sense. So yeah, I was confused. Good point. I was confused by that. Okay, so now I'm going to explain why I don't know who the fuck Joey Cola is, and I'm going to give myself a pass on this one. And then I got a bunch of heat, and then I uh, I did the cruise ships for a while. Almost had a nervous breakdown on the cruise ships, and then my wife said, "No more cruise ships." Why? I did have a <laughs> so so caring and compassionate. <laughs> and then I almost had a nervous breakdown. Why? He's smiling. I know. I know. Tell me about your breakdown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Were I the trolls? Feel better. Yeah. Were the trolls yeah. on the cruise ships? Was it the trolls? Did the trolls <laughs> follow you onto the cruise ship? Yeah. So he was a cruise ship comic. For a while before that got to be too much for him, which I'll spoil it for you in case you were planning on watching this episode, which um, I don't think a lot of people were. This is my transformative content after all. But it goes on to say that he's so good on the cruise ships <laughs> that he would be on there for a week and then they wanted him for two weeks and they wanted him for four weeks. And he's got a growing family and young children at home and he got overwhelmed. And I was just thinking like, well, you could just tell him he can't work 28 days straight if you want, yeah. you know. That would probably be the solution. But, hey, what do I know? I'm not a cruise ship comic. I don't Maybe plan on being one. Maybe on his wife on a cruise ship. Ah, interesting. And that's Because what would be the reason to never do it again? Dude, holy shit. I didn't even think about that angle of it. When I work too much, Frank is just like, oh, yeah, now we know. I can't be gone for two straight weeks. Like, next trip, 
I'll be gone 10 days or something. But he wouldn't say, don't go on the road anymore. Well, that's interesting because I never thought about that on a cruise ship. You have all these women who are looking for U.S. citizenship, yes. right? Oh, shit. And they're all drunk and they want that D. Well, I'm talking about the employees. But oh. I, well, I mean, they also might be that. drunk, too. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I did see Titanic. Um, all right. This is how I want to be a cruise ship. Comic. <laughs> I know. Right. I was starting to make a little bit of sense. <laughs> so then he says after the cruise ship thing, his wife made him stop doing that. He was Rosie O'Donnell's warm up person. And John has to explain to his audience what a warm up person is because we don't know that, John. C- Captain Showbiz is going to explain to us when there's a live audience. You know, I used to do that for the Leno show. I was the warm up guy. I'm like, oh, God. Anyway, he goes on this list of shows that he was the warm up guy for. So, again, the reason why I wouldn't know who he is because he's just entertaining studio audiences for TV shows. And then he goes on to say, America's Got Talent. I was the warm up guy. For AGT, back when Howard Stern was on that. Now, America's Got Talent films out of L.A. until Howard Stern got the job. Then they moved the whole operation to New York for Howard. And John mentioned he knew this guy from him winning a K-Rock comedy contest. So this is a really dumb question out of Centering John's Mouth. I did the, uh, the, the, uh, the AGT years when Howard was there because Gary called me and said Howard wants me there. To be there, so I did that at Radio City. How did Howard know who you were? <laughs> John, Jesus. Howard is the reason why you were on K-Rock. I noticed he's not smiling anymore. <laughs> yeah, well, Howard, <laughs> Howard requested you? <laughs> what does he request me? Did he lose my number? <laughs> did he give you popcorn? What a fucking idiot. So this guy goes on to explain that, well, because I, I was on that K-Rock contest... That's how you and I met, too, John. Remember? Yep. Like, yeah. Remember I, the intro? I, 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 know, I know the people <laughs> on the Howard Stern show back in the day. Like, holy shit, what a fucking idiot. <laughs> so what they keep talking about, the reason why he won that contest is because of this Bob Ross bit he used to do. That's the painter, right? I almost said Jeff Ross. Mm-hmm. Bob Ross, yeah. the painter guy. And so this guy, Joey Cole. Are you familiar with this bit, by the way, Chrissy? Mm, what bit is it? I don't know, because John was trying to find it before the show. He tries to find it during the show. They're constantly trying to find this bit, because John wants to show off. Oh, you're going to love this bit. And this is... uh, It's a bit of Joey's? Yes. This is one of Joey's bits where he pretends to be Bob Ross, and I guess it kills. Oh, no, I know a bit of his where he pretends to be, like, I think a parrot or something, or or a cat. That's... uh, But I don't think I know this bit. Bob Ross is not a cat or a parrot. He was a man. Chrissy, don't disrespect Bob Ross. Happy trees. I knew Bob Ross. Happy trees, exactly. (laughs) So this is, I I love John because he's constantly, you know, we were talking about uh, multitasking when we were on the content house. John cannot multitask at all. So as soon as he gets distracted with one task, he just ignores his guest. And his guest is going on and on, and there might be some interesting anecdotes going on, but John is not even listening. And George Carlin and I became good friends. Uh, we would actually talk on the phone, and I don't want to say that I wrote for George Carlin, but we would we would run bits together and stuff, and have conversations. And some of them wound up in his act, as well as some of his stuff winding up in my act. Is there wow. any place that I could find it? I don't know. Uh, I, I I don't even know. I don't know where you'd go to, to see it. He's talking uh, about being friends with George I'm, Carlin. I thought I would... I thought for sure it's out there. Everything else is out there. Yeah, everything else is out there. I mean, but I don't, I don't know. I can't even find it myself. Yeah, his wife's tenderizing chicken in the fucking kitchen next door. <laughs> so that's annoying. And then you got this guy talking about how, like, yeah, I kind of wrote some of George Carlin's bits. You know, we used to talk on the phone all the time. The question is, oh, w- which bits? We all know Carlin's bits. Which ones? That's amazing. Yeah. Instead, it's like, oh. where the fuck is this thing I've been looking for? It, Figure out before the show whether or not you're going to be able to find the video you want or not. Once the video starts, that ship has sailed. Yep. Move on. If you want to talk about it, explain it, great. But he's continuing to look for it and fucking up what could have been an interesting conversation. Which it sounds like what you're describing, Carl, is show prep. It's, it's, it's called show prep. And then, Chrissy, what you want to do is if you don't do show prep, you pretend that you did hmm. by saying, yeah, I was going to play that bit, but that's not important. Explain hmm. to us what that did for you or, you know, mm-hmm. just make it seem like you didn't even want to do that instead of going, yeah, yeah, yeah George Carlin, Schmarlin, uh, where's the link? Do you have a link to this fucking thing? You fucking idiot. All right. So then this is a really funny thing. Joey 
pays John a compliment. John is not used to this. <laughs> he does not know. Wait, what? Not- <laughs> I haven't had a reason to clap yet. <laughs> you look good, man. You're, you're morphing into an old comic, uh, an old mafia don. Is what you, that's what you look like now. Look like you're playing mafia. Do you see how John wasn't trying to take that? Yeah, he's, you look good. He's, he's like, like oh, where's this going? Yeah, he's waiting for the other shoe to drop. <laughs> yeah, where is this going? You look good. <laughs> I'll fucking murder you and your family. What, yeah. what, did, you, what did you say to me? Because <laughs> John's looking at himself while this guy's going, do you look good? He's like, uh. Yeah, <laughs> he's already texting denim guy with a cane. <laughs> <laughs> you know what to do. Yeah. Because I know some trolls who could use the cement blocks right about now. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So. Now we're, they're going to talk about this is John Glory Days, his band, what he was in back when he was on the Howard Stern show. I guess this guy was saying he looked just like Anthony Kiedis with the long hair, and he gave him the idea of doing an Under the Bridge parody that I guess John performed on stage or something. Anyway, none of that matters. I'm just setting up this next hilarious joke. And you had a band. You yeah. had Rubber Beaver at that point, right? Yeah, Rubber Beaver. Yeah. Yeah, that's what the name of your band. Howard loved that name. He oh, would plug it and just laugh. Everybody Rubber Beaver. Did. Yeah, it was great. And- Howard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what's great about that joke? Howard would laugh at it. That's how I know it was a good joke. <laughs> so, Chrissy, uh, Rubber Beaver's pretty good. I used to be in a band called Finger Her and Her Pussy, which wasn't as subtle, but also a great band name. <laughs> And then you went on to the isotoners, my favorite type of glove. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> He's so proud of himself, Rubber Beaver. Oh, yeah, Howard would laugh. Everyone, Jackie. Yeah. Oh, name all the uh, people who would laugh at that, John. Fred, Gary. The we got goes it. on. Yeah, we got it. Telling people that more famous people who have laughed at their jokes. That's so cringe. <laughs> oh, God. How many times has he talked about Obama laughing at one of his bits? Oh, no. Obama doesn't know who the fuck Severing John is. <laughs> I promise you that. Obama's not a fucking so dabbler. Fun. Made Big Mike get a little hard. <laughs> Could you imagine Barack being in the Dabblers Anonymous subreddit? <laughs> uh, Michelle, get over here. <laughs> oh. good. You got to see the latest from oh. B Dabbler. <laughs> All right, this is. Uh, so now we're going to get to Joey, why he looks like garbage. That's what Chrissy was pointing out earlier. Apparently, he's had some health issues. This is what we all have to look forward to, everyone who's not uh, 61 years old yet. So, Uh-oh. you know, and I'm 61 now. I, got, I had Bell's palsy on this side five years ago, and then I got it on this side two years ago. Well, I, I got two like stents in. Now. I just had my appendix out. I'm, I'm taking a physical beating, you know? So. But the, the Bell's Palsy, you really can't tell, right? You can't All right, I think speech. we found it. <laughs> Joey, thanks oh to my, my great God. fucking moderator, Andrew Brower. He doesn't give a fuck about double Bell's Palsy. <laughs> this poor That's guy. That's like one of the worst things you can get. It's like it's, your whole yeah. face droops. And he's lucky to have had it on both sides, so it's evened out. And he looks Good better point. than John. Yeah. yeah. Somehow he looks better than John. He could not have given a fuck about that whole story. Wow. Once again, John cannot possibly listen with one ear to his guest even just to pick up some keywords just so you could be like oh yeah bell's policy that sucks all right i think i found the video we're looking for he's so preoccupied with the chat and what people are doing because i guess andrew the great andrea brower found this video well, for the him. kind of ocd i have makes me rude <laughs> <laughs> it makes me bad at hosting a, a talk show i'm not an asshole i just don't care <laughs> right <Yeah. laughs> All right, let me back that up again. Now that we know that John's ignoring him this whole time as he's explaining poor all these. Joey. I know. This poor guy. Oh, and then I got it on this side two years ago. I got two stents in. I just had my appendix out. Look at John's eyes. They're just darting back and forth. He's just staring at his chat. I'm, I'm taking a physical beating, you know? So, mm-hmm. but the, the Bell's Palsy, you really can't tell, right? You can't. All right, I think speech. we found it. Joey, thanks to my great fucking moderator, Andrea Brower. Okay. It's that gif of the person trying to figure out the complicated equation. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. him like 30 times an episode. All right. So now John's found this bit. And this bit is from 1992. All right. It's, it's 30 years old. Mm-hmm. And so John has to explain to his audience, there might be words being used in this bit that aren't acceptable anymore. <laughs> All right. Okay. 
Because, listen, we need some trigger warnings here. I don't know if there's going to be like an R word, an F slur. Whoa, whoa. I know. <laughs> don't even think about what I'm trying to say here, people. Uh, <laughs> now, let me tell everybody. Now, first of all, don't forget, people, this is in the, this is in the 80s and early 90s. And yeah. this is when some of the words you're going to hear in those days were acceptable. Now they're not. And you know what, Joey? I get this shit all the time. Yeah. Do you know why you get this shit all the time, John? Because you're trying to get people's lives ruined for saying retard. And now Jeff's in a soapbox going, I, I mean, I used to use these words too, but that's what comedy used to be. I mean, I, <laughs> those are the rules. Before right I was now. woke. Yeah. So go fuck yeah. yourself, John. You fucking asshole. And then they explain that this is Howard's favorite bit. John interrupts yet again. But uh, but how, it was Howard's favorite bit. And it, oh, I fucking Joey, I fucking laughed my ass. I'm like, who the fuck knew to goof on Bob Ross? I'm like, yeah, because he wasn't <laughs> even in my like. I knew who he was, but he bought yeah. the fuck out of me. Yeah, I could set it up. I mean, I, I don't want to give the bit away too much. No, 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 no. I'm just gonna play it. I, all right, go ahead. Go ahead, and then we'll talk about it. <laughs> so the guy's trying to say, like, yeah, it's the reason why I got on Howard's radar, because of this bit. I did it at the contest. No, 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 I liked the bit. Right. I'm the one who liked uh, the bit. John, okay, I you get credit. I don't like, Joey is saying, I don't want to give the bit away, meaning, like, I don't want to give away my material, like, on air. Like, well, it's usually actually, something you want to save for a I'll, show, I'll right? I'll put it in context, Chris. He said he's, he hasn't done it in 30 years. He stopped doing this bit. Okay. So I guess, I guess right. maybe it didn't age well. Because he's he's he, fine. He cycled with, it out then. Yes, he's fine with John playing the bit because John's like, "Oh, I found it," and, and he was even asking Joey, "Do you know where this bit is?" He's like, "I don't know. I did it on MTV in the '90s, and I was in Montreal, and maybe be somewhere out there for that reason." Because Joey's done some TV work, but it's not like he was out in Living Color. You know, you can't just go find these old skits and things with Joey Cola. So, thankfully, as we just heard, Andrea Brower found the bit. There's all this build up for it. They're ready to finally play it again. The last time he did this bit was in the early 90s. This is how stupid Andrea Brower is. <laughs> so here is Joey Kohler. Is this on Late Night with Jimmy oh, no, Fallon? That's that's, that's, no, that's my Jimmy Fallon set. Oh, so, it does, so it's not that's Bob not Ross? It. That's not it. That's not it. <laughs> oh, it's not that, it. Keep playing it. Keep playing it. Go he's scrubbing through it. Like he's going to find it. Yeah. Wait, are you sure? <laughs> Wait, are, are you, you sure? sure? You know what you did? Jimmy Fallon was in high school when he was doing this bit, John. Why would you think he's doing it on Fallon? Uh, wow. Let me keep playing it. Maybe it'll come out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, my moderator never steals me wrong. I'll find <laughs> it eventually. No, you won't. You mean I brought this clip up for nothing? <laughs> so... That is part one of John's last ever beer on the balcony. I'll be doing part two on uh, Saturday. It'll be out on Sunday. Right. Because wow, you're really rationing it out. I got to ration it out, Chrissy. <laughs> there was so much to get to in this episode. I couldn't do it all at once. What's funny, though, is like right after this, he goes, I got a good Jimmy Fallon story for you, though. And so he says, uh, Joey tells a story about giving a 17-year-old Jimmy Fallon stage time. And he goes, and Jimmy never forgot it. It's the reason why I was on this night show in 2010 is he just remembered me and he wanted to help me out. And John goes, oh, I have a similar story. So I'm just waiting for John to be the hero. Now, John has two types of stories. One's where he's the hero and one where someone else is an asshole, right. but not him. Where he's the victim. <laughs> so he says, yeah, Jackie and I were hanging out. We ran into an 18-year-old Jimmy Fallon and he came up to Jackie and he asked for advice. And Jackie said, here's some advice. Quit comedy. <gasps> oh. <laughs> it's like, John, that's not your... <laughs> I, I got a, a similar story. Jackie's a dick. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Pretty good story, John. Wow. <laughs> Fucking prick. It had it all. <laughs> what an asshole. <laughs> all right. Let's, uh, let's officially get into it here. When we last left you, <laughs> Stuttering John was performing his final beer on the balcony with his good buddy, Joey Cola. Let's get back into that, shall we? Because they were talking about Jimmy Fallon. And 
Joey Cola told the story about meeting a young Jimmy Fallon, helping him out, and then Jimmy brought him on the Tonight Show years later, and then John told the story about Jackie the Choke Man being a dick to Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> and now we have to bring up the fact that when Jimmy Fallon took over for Jay Leno, he did not bring John over as a writer on the Tonight Show because Jimmy Fallon is a smart person. Yeah. <laughs> so he knew better than to do that. But then... Jimmy's on the show right before he takes over for Jay. Yeah. While he's, I visit him in the, in his dressing room. And while I'm in there, they play one of the bits that I wrote, a video bit on the thing. And, and he's looking up, he goes, wow, that's pretty funny. I go, yeah, that's me, Jimmy. I wrote that. And he goes, oh, that's awesome, John. So I go, hey, Jimmy, I'd love to write for you now that Jay's leaving. Cause I was Jay's, you know, I was a yeah. staff writer. Yeah. And then, yeah, sure, to just contact my head guy. They blew me off. Yeah, well, that, that happens, man. That's, you know, whatever happens is just meant to be. And, and if it, something didn't happen, it didn't happen, whether it's in show business or your regular life or whatever, you know? All right. I love when John gets rational people who understand how life works on his show because they immediately realize they have to explain this to him. Yeah. Like, John, okay, well, he didn't hire you, but so what? There's another opportunity out there. Go do something else. Make something else happen for yourself. No, aren't you going to get pissed off yeah, on no. my behalf? Yeah, no. So literally, Joey has to explain to John that being bitter about it is doing him no good. <laughs> this is not helping him in any single way. Yeah. And, of course, John's not hearing it. So he goes on for a while about how, like, yeah, I've had opportunities. He actually tells his whole story about how he was going to be in this movie, and then he wasn't in this movie. John's not paying attention to any of it. So as Joey's talking here, Watch John just typing and reading the chat and just doing anything but listening to his guest talk. <laughs> to the junior jumble. I'm in the backyard one day in my shed, you know, sharpening my lawnmower blade or whatever. He's trying to figure out his wordle for the day. Yeah. He, <laughs> he couldn't be bothered. Matchbox cars. <laughs> <laughs> Vroom. <laughs> I what? hope that's what it is. I hope there's no keyboard. He's got two action figures. Yeah. He's got one of Jimmy Fallon, one of Jay Leno. Yeah. Over him. All right, but hold on. Who do you think will win, the Firebird or the Corvette? Because I got a sweet track in front of me. I'm in the backyard one day in my shed, you know, sharpening my lawnmower blade or whatever, and I got the radio on, and Rocky Allen is talking to Matthew Perry. So Rocky Allen says... To Matthew Perry, hey, a good friend of ours, Joey Cole, is in your movie that you're promoting, that you, that you got coming up. So Matthew Perry goes, no, he's not. I, I knocked him out. So Rocky Allen was like, what? He goes, yeah, I knocked Joey's him. waiting for a response. He yeah. realizes that John is not paying any attention. He's not even pretending to pay attention. No, he's making a sandwich. He's doing something completely different. <laughs> him out. He's not in the movie. Joey's before. interviewing he's himself. Yeah. He literally stopped and answered his own question, which is great. <laughs> yeah. All right. We knew this was going to happen, Pat. It happened? It's happening again. All right. I, I should bail on you guys. I will figure out a better Fuck. way. And I'll be on another it. time. I apologize to everyone listening. I'm poor. I'm terrible. Call me names. It's fine. Dude, I, I will. <laughs> I'm going to bail on you guys. You can do your thing. Listen, I will start a fundraiser to get a new laptop for Pat Oates from a, a very beloved uh, co-host yeah. of the show. <laughs> All proceeds, a Patreon. A, a mini iPad. Get a Groupon. <laughs> All, right, goodbye, yeah. All right, see you, Pat. God damn it. I love Pat. I know. That sucks. I want to make it work, but not so badly that I'm going to try fucking Zoom again. <laughs> that, was, that was super annoying. Zoom mock. Oh, I see what you did there. Yeah. All right. Let's finish this clip up. I knocked him out. So Rocky Allen was like, what? He goes, yeah, and I knocked him out. He's not in the movie anymore. I'm using John Tenney. Is a friend of mine, and so I got kicked out of the movie. And at that point, I had the William. I was with the William Morris agency. I was, you know, I, I was. I had a lot of heat going on, and I called my manager, and he said, "Yeah, it's his movie." So, you know, he knocked me out. So that whole time, he's explaining to him how he missed an opportunity on a movie that he thought he was cast for, and then he wasn't cast for it. Mm -hmm. And he goes, "And for for a moment, I was bitter about it, and then I got over it. And it turns out that was." A great thing for me because I ended up doing this and this and this. And, yeah, another and, door opened. And John is not listening to a second of this. He refuses to learn anything, pay any attention. So as he continues to explain to John how to be successful in life, 
This is so insulting. We were talking about that bit that John wanted to play where he was playing Bob Ross. Oh, yeah. And he couldn't find the yeah, bit. Right. So finally, because John's not listening to this guy at all, he just interrupts him with this. Because as you get older, you know, you get wiser and you, you get burnt to a certain extent by, by other people and circumstances. And then what you have to do, the only ones that survive and the only thing you really could do is take it in. Use it as an exa- uh, as an experience, and then roll to the next thing. That's all you can do. And that. Hey, Joey, could you do? We can't find the Bob Ross. Can you just do it? <laughs> what an the asshole! Bob Ross thing. I'll I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. Yeah, okay. do it. Do it. I'll do the bit. I'll do the bit. <laughs> can you just fucking tap dance for me, asshole? Why yeah. are you explaining to me how to live my life? Yeah. I obviously am not going to learn. I'm 57 years old. I haven't learned yet. You're gonna teach me how to fucking live my life now, Joey? Come on, just do the fucking bit. What a, that I mean that. By the way, th- this is the last beer on the balcony ever. I think I don't think John is ever going to come back to doing this again. I think he's just a broken man. I mean, we can talk about theories later. Okay, but this is such a perfect ending for him because this shows how terrible he is yeah. at doing this. He can't even listen to a the, self-deprecating story where yes. he should his ears should perk up and be like, "Oh, well, I'm not the only one." Honestly, if he went, hot sucks for you, that would be better. <laughs> he would be listening. <laughs> At least he's yeah. fucking listening to it. That would be better it than him just going. For you. <laughs> than him just going, just do the fucking bit, asshole. Yeah. I don't have you on here to talk about your life and your history. Yeah. What are you, what are you doing? Acting like I'm interviewing you? No. And, and Joey even <laughs> says, I'm older and wiser. You know. Yeah. He, he's actually giving him a compliment. And here's how John proves that he's wiser. Do the bit. Yep. Yeah, John, you've been around a long time. You've probably learned this stuff. No, I haven't. No. Do the bit. (laughs) Say the line, Bart. (laughs) That's exactly what that is. All right. So Andrea Brower, still looking. This is what he's typing, by the way, while this guy's talking. He's like, could you find this video? I think I found it. Okay. So apparently she finally found it. But that's the bit. I mean, it gets drawn out a lot longer than that. Yeah, I know. I think Angie, Angie, if you found it, send me the link because it is... I can't it, find it. I got people on my Instagram and Facebook texting me. Can you do the paint a bit? Can you find me the paint a bit? Can you put it up? And I can't. Because you're not it. doing it justice. Because oh, so he makes him do the bit, and then he goes, "Yeah, I did it wrong. Yeah, you did it wrong, buddy. Let's keep finding. Let's keep looking for it. I think Andrea found it. Now we'll show you. So now he's already done the bit, so we know what the punchline is. Yeah, and he's still looking for it, and now he's found it, and. They're they're going to play it, but before that happens, it's funny because John's talking about how he didn't go into stand up comedy because he has a stutter and he wasn't sure if he could do stand up comedy. And it was Joey who really actually helped him out and taught him how to be a stand up. And so Joey goes, "Well, you know, there are other stuttering comedians," and this irks John. This triggers John. Say fuck it, because I was afraid Joey that I would stutter. You know, on jokes. Yeah. There's you a be, comedian no, that just belch. Down, like, you should be afraid that you fall over. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. There's a comedian that stutters now that does stand-up. I forget his name. Young guy. He was on HGT, I think. And he no, I know, well. I know. Yeah. Oh, and it killed me when Howard goes, oh, wow, he, this guy's an inspiration. I'm like, an inspiration, Howard? You had a stutterer on your show. For fucking, <laughs> fucking 20 years, and then he becomes the announcer on The Tonight Show. Yeah, That's yeah. an inspiration. Yeah. He can't let it go. No. And Joey, after this, even says, well, you can't think that way, though, John. That's kind of unhealthy. You know? Whatever. I'm sure John just agrees with him. Yeah, you're right. John is not an inspiration to anyone. No. I can't tell you, and I mean this for real, how many notes I get from people... Who stopped drinking? I was going to say that's the only thing he could the, inspire. Yeah, because of the centering John clips we play, yeah. people in their twenties are like, "Oh, I don't want to end up like that." Yeah, I have caught drinking out of my life because of what I see from your show. All right. So, and of course, when he's explaining to John, like that's not a healthy way to live or think. John again is not listening to him at all. So now he finally finds the clip. He's going to play it, but John fucks everything up. Of course, like he always does. Because <laughs> even though, even though you were like. If you were disrespecting somebody or doing some kind of setup or whatever, um, the stuttering made it funnier, you know. So, oh, there it is. That that might be. Yeah, I think. Uh oh. 
<laughs> we just lost Joey. I finally found the clip and we lose Joey. Yeah. So John finds the clip and then takes that off the screen and then takes Joey off the screen. He's just fucking, whoa, Jesus Christ. Can't make it happen. I'm sideways. <laughs> He's fucking sideways, of course. Um, so then this is John. He has to set up this bit. He's going to play it. But he has to explain to you, again, because we played these clips before, that there are words used in the early 90s oh, Jesus. that you shouldn't use anymore. You know, now they're offensive. Back then, hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> now, now offensive. I'm going to, well, I'll say it. it. It rhymes with kook, but it was a derogatory term for an Asian person. <laughs> yeah, chink? <laughs> what word do you think Let's lay off the Asian. <laughs> Spook? <laughs> what, what, what's he talking about there? I'm not, not 100% <laughs> Sp- a spooky. Uh... Yeah, just come out and say it, John. <laughs> so as he's lecturing or whatever he's doing, he's explaining away the reason why you're about to hear something offensive on my show, but I don't condone it. Then Joey comes back in, and John gets him caught up on what he's explaining. I'm explaining that, you know, you use a word that... <laughs> In today's day and ages, yeah, considered obscene. But keep in mind, Joey, and I've said this on my show, <laughs> that when we were on Howard, He's so drunk in the eighties and nineties, yeah, yeah, that's when you could use the term Oriental. Now, you could only use that term if you're talking about a rug, right? I guess yeah. <laughs> if you say so. All right. The way that John explains things to people as if they're children is insane yeah. to me. And this guy's going, yeah, all right, no, I know. And obscene is not the same as offensive. Correct. All right, so I gave John the benefit of the doubt when we saw the stains on his shirt, yeah. but there are new stains there are. on his shirt now. And as I'm watching the show, I go, wait, where the fuck did this come from? Why was I giving him the benefit of the doubt? He's bleeding. <laughs> this is the moment that he actually spills beer on his shirt, uh. which is what we're looking at right now. Watch this. All right. <laughs> but what I was telling Joey, <laughs> hey Joe, what happened? He lifts up, he lifts up his beer and just pours it down oh. his shirt in front of him. Why the fuck did I think for a second that those stains were like, oh, I'm getting out in front of it, guys? Of course they're not. He's a disaster. He's a mess. All right, now is actually a good time to talk about some theories. Okay, about what's going on with John, because honestly, nobody knows. It's it, John's turning the fucking Artie Lang. Where's Artie? Is Artie coming back? What's going on with Artie? Is he using? Is he not using? Now it's like, where's John? What's John doing? What's what's going on with him? We know he's trying to sell his apartment. Mm-hmm. And we know he's going to have uh, some cash when that happens that he can do something with. He's probably going to move somewhere. He said he's going to stay in California. That's where his kids are. So if he does move away, it means maybe he doesn't have a great relationship with them. But I don't know. We'll see. And uh, I think one of the theories out there, and this could be true, John's alcoholism is on full display. Mm-hmm. And there are people who love John. He has family and friends. It's possible that someone got to him and said, John, you got to shut this down. Listen, I'm going to get you some help. Let's spend the next 60 days. Let's get you some help, buddy. We're going to do this together. We got you. It's possible that John's in rehab. I hope so. I honestly, I hope he comes back uh, yeah. in 2023. And he's like, guys, he looks, I hope he looks way better. Guys, Southern John show is back on. I'm not drinking anymore. I realize I've been making an ass of myself the last couple of years, and now we're going to go. Because I would actually love to goof on John when he's coherent and sober and trying to do a good job. I was thinking the same thing. You know what I mean? Because this is too easy. This is ridiculous. I am rooting for him to not die. Correct. We all are. Yeah. I hope so. I hope we all are. No, honestly, I think think all all of uh, the Dabbleverse roots for this guy to pull through. But I just think that... You can't be this much of a disaster on full display every week to not have someone, whether it's his mom, his ex-wife, right. even his kids. I don't know. Someone in his family go, listen, buddy, you need some help. I would hope that someone would fucking do that for me if I was doing shows like this. <laughs> Holy shit. Maybe it's fucking Joey Cola who afterwards is just like, dude, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> All right, let's talk more about the words you can and can't use. Oh, yeah, I need to hear the list again. <laughs> yeah, this fucking guy's insane. <laughs> First of all, if you watch a movie like Platoon, yeah, they use these words in that movie all, yeah, yeah. all the time. 
that's what you're talking about <laughs> Vietnam, yeah. like a person in Vietnam. He's portraying a person who's racist. We get it, John. We yeah. fucking get it. It's fucking context. He's trying to explain this. It's like, yeah, in the Dire Straits song, mm -hmm. it, it, it's not Mark Knopfler calling the guy an F slur. It's the guy who's putting in the fucking microwave oven. He's playing a character. Why are you looking like that? Did I say the wrong name? No, I was thinking about the song, <laughs> uh, so I got sidetracked. There. Sorry. Yeah. I, he's talking about uh, Nikki Six. Okay. <laughs> and he's watching him on MTV. All right. And he's like, look at that so-and-so with the earring and the makeup. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Okay. I don't know, what are we going to talk about? Dire Straits all day? Sure. All right, all right let's do it. Chicks for free. <laughs> <laughs> all right. This is great because John's going to be in uh, New York visiting his mom mm -hmm. for Christmas. And obviously, Joey lives in Long Island. So John's going to go ahead and invite himself over to Joey's house. It's <laughs> <laughs> always a classy move. Yeah. I make hey, sauce. Joey, I'm, I'm coming out for Christmas. Please, please. <laughs> invite me over for an Italian yeah. dinner. Please. When you come. <laughs> please, please invite me over. See, I got an invite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst thing ever. Okay, uh, Chris. I feel like I've been teasing you. I don't know what your blue balls are like. We're finally <laughs> going to get to the fireworks factory Yay. here. He's been talking about this fucking bit. They found the bit. They're going to play the fucking bit. So yeah, everybody a, kick back. 1989, I think it is. This is one of the funniest bits from Joey Cola. And again, people, this is what? 1991. Is so it don't 91? be offended okay. about what somebody <laughs> says in 1991 oh, because that's 30 fucking <laughs> years ago. Here we go. Okay. So John has a very soft audience now. And yeah. He has to explain to them right. 18 times not to be offended by not, the words you're about to hear. Don't cancel me. It's, it's fucking insane. So then he plays the bit. I'm not going to play it for you. It's, it's basically Bob Ross is painting a picture, and then it turns out he's having flashbacks to Vietnam, and he says a lot of ridiculous things about those commie bastards. Okay. Let's put it that way. So then, after they play that bit, it turns out Joey Cola never used the word gook. Uh. He, all of that setup, all of that buildup, and he never even said anything offensive in the fucking bit. <laughs> and that's the bit. That, and that's the bit. That's the cleaned up version of the bit. Yeah, because when, yeah. when I did it in the clubs, like I, I would do it at Rascals and, 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 uh, in front of 400 people going crazy. I, I, I pulled all the punches and I went completely, you know, crazy. Yeah. And, and that's where you use the, uh, the term. A little bit of Asian yellow. That's when that, and that was, the, that was the one thing, you know, like that. Yeah, but you also said the word that rhymes with kook. Oh, but, yeah, yeah. I say, I, every once in a while, I would say that, too. Yeah. <laughs> John, he's like, yo, maybe it didn't happen in that video we just watched, but you definitely said this thing that's super offensive and should never be said. It's like, oh, why do you keep bringing it up then? How much time did this take <laughs> cumulatively? <laughs> I mean, it, this is 30 minutes worth. To of, achieve what? <laughs> to achieve what? They've destroyed this bet. Yeah. By the time they finally played it, I'm like, all right, I know exactly what's going to happen. It's not funny. And then. For John to like make excuses for the guy, and then he doesn't say anything that's offensive, and then he comes back and he goes, "Yeah, but you, you have before though, right?" I mean, I'm disappointed. God. Yeah, right. Just tell us some gook jokes. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> All right. Uh, but didn't you have a bit where you were talking about a guy whose name rhymes with bigger? Like, what's, what's that bit again? Uh, <laughs> All right. So this is again. Let's talk about. John's mantra in life because we poke fun at him and we act like he's a bad person. But I mean, obviously, it's just a goof. We've had some laughs at his expense. <laughs> John's actually a great guy. <laughs> you know what I admire, Joey, about you, you know, is you're always willing to help people. And that's like my mantra is. I'm here to help people. What the fuck else am I here for? That's right. That's right. We're, we're only on the planet to help people. You know, my mantra is those cores aren't going to drink themselves. Yeah. <laughs> I love that he pretends that he's this charitable guy just giving back to society at all fucking times. You're a selfish drunk, John. Yeah. <laughs> You're selfish in every fucking way. You won't even listen to your guest talk. That's how selfish you are. You don't give a fuck about anyone. And addicts never are. Addicts don't give a fuck about other people. It's fine. That's just how that works. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I hope John gets cleaned up, and I hope that it does become his fucking mantra to help other people. All right, so this is great because they grew up in the same area. And so Joey's explaining that, yeah, when you grow up in this area, you have two choices. Mm-hmm. You either got to be tough or you got to be funny. Because yep. otherwise, you're going to get your ass kicked. And he actually insults John in a way he doesn't even realize he's insulting John. Uh, the best kind. <laughs> they all come from this tri-state area here because it's a survival technique. If You, you better be tough or be funny here, you know? I and know. that's it. You know, I mean, you know better than anybody. You're, you know, you're one of the toughest guys I know. <laughs> you either got to be tough or be funny. You're pretty fucking tough. <laughs> Holy shit, that's Jesus perfect. Christ. That is perfect. <laughs> Joey, Joey, Joey. <laughs> yeah, this guy's slaying it. Fucking nailed him. <laughs> Holy shit. All right, so now that John's been called a tough guy, mm-hmm. he's like, <laughs> look at his face right there. He's yeah. like, oh, you don't even fucking know, bro. I am. Super tough. I don't even have to do laundry. <laughs> I know. I, I'm I know. You're, you're the real deal to a detriment sometimes. <laughs> I know. I will. <laughs> Unfortunately, some of these assholes that fuck with me don't know that. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. I would. I would never fuck with you. I would never I even. Yeah, they don't seem never. to care until until they see me in person. That's right. And then it's. Uh, I would never. I would never do that. That's because uh, you're. Yeah. Yeah, these people who fuck with him, they don't realize that what a tough guy he is as he's falling over drunk. Yeah. <laughs> you don't intimidate anyone, John. <laughs> I just want to tell you that. It's fun, though. It's fun that you pretend that. So, guess what, producer Chris? What? To be continued, there's going to be a part three of this. Oh, cool. I couldn't get, I can't get through this episode of Beer on the Balcony. It's so insane. John, there's another theory going on that it's not just booze, mm-hmm. there might be some pills involved as well. Mm. Because the way that John gets wasted over the course of this hour yeah. is not three beers. There's something else going on there. Something else is kicking in, it seems like. I could be wrong. I would never want to slander or libel someone. <laughs> right. I wouldn't want to be libelous. Yeah, let's not go there. Yeah. So I don't know what's going on, but holy Yeah, he does shit. go zero to 60. Like, he yeah. hits the wall quick. It gets bad quick, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, let's get into it. Part three of Stuttering John <laughs> with Joey Cole. Just, just John's face alone already makes me laugh. So Joey Cole is telling John this story because if you remember how we left off last time, John was talking about his mantra is giving back and helping people. And he's like, why else are we here on earth if not to help other people? That's so, why he's a substitute teacher. No. Of course, not because he needs money. He just wants to help others. Yeah. So, so <laughs> this is great because Tony says, yeah, you know, he knows uh, Rosie O'Donnell really well. He says, yeah, Rosie used to do this thing where she would go down to the hospital and just write checks for people who were suffering from cancer. Just here's $10,000, here's $20,000. Like she knew people needed money and she would just write checks for them. And then he goes on to talk about how that inspired him to do charitable work. And you've never seen... John was less to say than when this guy's talking about real charity yeah. and how you actually do give back. So she's got she got me into charity work, and I'm, I, at one point I was involved in about thirty different charities. I'm still with the Guardian Brain Foundation with people that get brain tumors. I'm still with uh, Breathe Believe, it's cystic fibrosis, juvenile diabetes, um, the autistic uh, autism speaks. Um, I still do a ton of those, but I also. Uh, you know, if you got a friend who's got a kid who's got leukemia or whatever, and you need help, uh, you know, I go to go to those places. Who remember the firemen ran into the building on 9/11. They didn't run out. They ran into the building on 9/11. So I, lost I try to live my life that way. A friend of mine's a fireman that died. And a 9/11, right? Yeah, that's a hero. So. You try to be a hero as much as you can and do the right thing for whatever's next, I guess. You know, I mean, there's something is next. All right. So John always wants to one of everyone. He couldn't until he brought up firefighters, which, by the way, John couldn't be less connected to. He's like, oh, yeah, I have a friend who died. Like, okay, but I was talking about the 30 charities I was involved in and all the work I was doing. Now. That was just a metaphor for why... We're charitable and how that works, John. He's like, no, no, no. I want to talk about how I knew I had a friend who died in 9-11. Like, what a fucking asshole. 
Well, and subconsciously, you want to trauma bond with somebody too. Like, there's just a, like where I want to like give him the benefit of the doubt and say that he's not making it about him, but he's so making it about him because he's bringing up his friend that yes. died. Like, it's not and with him. It's never. I, I can never give him the benefit of the doubt because it always is him trying to one up. You know, like uh, like in that in that uh, parody song, how oh my third grade teacher said I was the best actor. Like he remembers this yes. this most innocuous random shit, and then actually regurgitates it like it's like oh your teacher said that. Oh, you're a really good at NYU like we're gonna actually be impressed by this shit he's just so delusional I mean this yes. guy's talking about charity you're talking about some guy you he probably didn't even know that fireman that died he probably met him one time from I the know. radio some bullshit oh, by the way all of John's friends are people who've heard him on the radio and are excited to be hanging around with him aside from the guys you grew up with who threatened Shuley's life. Aside from those people, <laughs> everyone that John knows is someone that John is using because they think that John's famous and they're excited to meet him in person. Anyway, this is Joey's a very spiritual guy. He's like, I, I don't have a specific religion, but I do follow Christ. And I also follow the, the Torah and in, in Buddhism. And he goes through all this stuff and he goes, but I have friends who are atheists and we can all relate that there's a, a bigger thing than us in this world. And he's like, we, we can all kind of like break this down. Now, as he's going through all this, John can't comprehend this at all. And, and we've talked about this. John, at this point, is out of it yeah. on this show. It's, it's just not going well for him. And so Would I just John like talk about being an atheist. Does he talk about his? Does he? Because that's one thing I, don't, I never hear him talk about. Like, he never no. talks about God or. No, listen to what John transitions this convert. The reason why I pulled so much of this clip is because it's masterful what John turns this conversation into. And the fact that Joey goes along with it is something, something to be said for him too. It's, I would have like been a, what? what are you talking about? Joey does deals with autism charities. They, yes. they John's a walk in the park. <laughs> that's, I mean, this that's is a good point. <laughs> yeah. This is part of his charity work. for the week. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you take the time to lean back and take a small piece of what Christ said, or what the Torah said, what Abraham said, or what, what Muhammad said, and, and just take a small piece of it and just read it and and, uh, and, po and ponder it and dwell on it, then you'll you'll start to find some inner peace instead of attacking each other. You'll find the, the peace within before you can have the peace without. Outward, and also, you know? Joe, you know, there's a time, like, I don't mind, look, you and I have been in the public eye, right? right. I don't right. give a fuck if you're going to goof on me. I don't care. Where the fuck did that come from? This guy's talking about spirituality, inner peace, inner peace, coming to grips with like there's a bigger thing than you in the universe, and we're just here for a short time. Let's do the best we can. And John goes, "Yeah, but also there's trolls." What? <laughs> I don't know where he's going with that. Maybe <laughs> yeah. it's uh, yeah, I can let it roll off my back. That old one. So John then turns us into a deep conversation about people talking about his kids. I love, <laughs> yeah, because this is how John thinks. I love where Joey takes this, because uh, Joey's the man. I don't care. Yeah. You can for me all you want. But these new breeds... Alex, do you think that's true, that John doesn't care if you goof on him? Uh, no, he cares. I but he I cares. also am so sick. I think he kind of likes it, the new bump that he's gotten. I mean, he hates it. Everybody else is making uh, money off him. But I think he kind of actually likes that, you know, he's being talked about and that he's a celebrity again in a way. Yeah. These new breed of scum think it's okay to goof on our children, especially kids that are minors. And they think that's okay. Right. And you know, Joe, being Italian, like, like you know, even the mob doesn't goof on, doesn't fuck with people's kids or wives. Yeah, as and, long as it remains words. If it remains words, that's fine. Correct, Joey. Hey. And it was funny because John slipped right there. He goes, even the mob doesn't goof on, I mean, fuck with. Yeah, nobody cares yeah. if you goof on people, John. Right. Like, this isn't a real, like, when you're talking about the mob, you're talking about actual physical violence this is not a tweet that you find offensive or a rant that anthony kubia hilariously delivers <laughs> about what a shitty father you are and joey and, and, and says anthony, that 
And when Anthony goes off on him, that is funny, but I don't think of, like the shuddering John hate goes after his trans children. You know, no, I mean, like, John's the one who keeps bringing up his children. Yeah. I would never talk about his kids, but John's constantly talking I, about his I kids. Never, that's what I'm saying, dude. On the Reddit or whatever I look in Dabblers, I've been very rarely. I mean, has there ever been a joke about his kids? Yes, but is that like a, a reoccurring theme? No, not at all. So I don't know why he does right. that. I mean, also, John's too stupid to realize that most of the jokes are about John being a shitty father. Not about his yes. kids per se. Of course. And it's like, yeah. we're still going after you, John, which, by the way, you've stated you don't care about and it doesn't bother you. So I don't know why that's a problem. Like, you know, but if you physically do something to hurt my family. No, but if they start posting pictures of my kids. Right. And saying disparaging things about my kids. Yeah, that, that's offense. I mean, you you can get offended by that. You know, it's offense. It's offensive. But that's the world we're in. You know, I mean, you if you want to if we're in that realm, we got to know that that's a possibility. That's why I don't really, really do it that much. I, I put myself out there a little bit, but I don't really like my wife just came on. uh Jackie Martling's and Peter Bell's got that the podcast they got, and it's the first time in 42 years my wife came on the podcast with me to talk about what it's like to be married to a comedian. So this is great because there's a few things happening here, and you can tell John's getting pissed if he's paying attention. Who even knows? So Joey says, "Well, yeah, that's if you don't want your family fucked with, don't put him out there." John's the one who keeps talking about his kids. He's the one who's putting it out there. He's the one who put his ex-wife in a cameo spot in his movie. He's constantly bringing his family into things and then complaining when they're part of the conversation. So Joey says, yeah, if you don't want your family fucked with, don't talk about it. And then he goes, but I did bring my wife on Jackie Martling's podcast. And Joe's like, oh, yeah, you're doing Jackie Martling's podcast, <laughs> yeah. huh? Yeah, you can, see, you can see that he was jealous. And yeah. He kind of had that weird look in his eye. But at the same time, you know, this is the other thing. If Senator and John, you'd be able to tell if he actually cared about his kids. He just doesn't like it for his ego. He doesn't like how it makes him look bad yes. that he yeah. has a transient. It's all his personal thing. He doesn't. He doesn't actually care about the hate or like the, like theoretically this happening. Somebody doxing his kid. Like he's not worried about that. He just doesn't like how he looks. Correct. Uh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. this all, is obvious to everyone him. but him. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. And, and yeah. What Joey's trying to say, and I think it's pretty obvious. But Joey's just saying, well, yeah, you can play the victim, but what that, what's that going to get you? Yeah. And that's pretty much what he's trying to explain to John, who obviously will never understand that. He said, you'll be offended by it. It is offensive. It is offensive. And he's like, that's the end of it. Right. <laughs> so now so now Joey's trying to explain to John the concept of forgiveness and how important <laughs> that is go in great. life. <laughs> uh, I can understand why you get very mad at that. But, you know, again, the hardest thing to do is forgive. And that's what the Bible says also. It says to forgive. Like Peter said to Christ, how much do I forgive? Four times? Seven times, and Christ said no. Seventy times seven, which is the number is four ninety. What he what he meant was an infinite amount. Yeah, that Bible was a little a little quirky when it comes to things like that. <laughs> Solve for X. <laughs> yeah, it's like well, my interpretation though is not it's not a specific number. Yeah. It's just trying to think of the biggest number they do back then. So <laughs> seventy times seven. Whoa, times seventy. <laughs> Who would even know what that is? Yeah, there's there's no way to solve that <laughs> equation. So, all right. So now Joey, who's talking about forgiveness is the most important thing and you can't get worked up about words because that's not going to help you in any way. He decides to bring up, I don't think he wanted to, but the conversation is going in this direction, which is weird because it took a 180 from where it was. So now Joey's going to bring up the fact that he actually did have an issue with a person actually hurting his daughter in real life and how he uh -huh. had to deal with that. And that's, and I, I'm going through some stuff now uh, somebody who wronged my daughter, uh, and that's my kid, like you said, that's my kid. Somebody hurt my daughter bad, and um, that's my struggle now. But what am I going to do? Be angry? I mean, I'm not going to totally forgive the guy. First, you got to come to the facts that you got to live with it. How am I going to live with what these people did to me or my family? And then try to get to the chad's got the look on his face like he's pretending to listen and understand but you know he's just thinking as soon as this guy shuts up i'm gonna have, I'm gonna have my next thing to say to me or my family <laughs> and then try to get to the point where you know the race is almost over whether again whether you're nine or 90 we're only here for a half hour am i gonna take this with me to the grave or am i gonna find some uh a little bit of a little bit of happiness even though that guy did this or this one said that or whatever it is. At one point, you just got to let it go, 
put it in his hands and say, you handle it. I'm out of here. I'm not a religious guy, but that's very good advice oh, yeah. that I think John should be paying attention to and listening to. But it looks like John's reading the chat, though, Carl. Like, I'm of trying course. to look at his eyes. Yeah. yeah, John's not even paying one iota of attention to this guy. Well, I'm sure he's not understanding it if he is. But all that John is hearing is this guy's not agreeing with John that he should be offended and upset. So now John has to put Joey in his place. Uh-oh. Yeah. This is a shitty thing to do if you're the host of a show having a guest on your show. <laughs> but wait, Joe, now, it, it's interesting because you're like a season warm-up guy, and people don't really give season any credit warm-up to warm-up guy. I mean, I mean, let's face it. It's like... For the most part, it's looked. Blind. It's a, you're like an unsung hero, but yeah. Martha Stewart called me her warm up artiste, Joey. This is Joey, her warm up artiste. Then she, Martha, would put me on camera a lot. Rachel puts me on camera a lot. Yeah, Joey still works in the business, John. Yeah. Okay, you could say that. Yeah, he warms up studio audiences for TV shows, but Joey's still working in the business. And John's going, yeah, well, you know, you're not the announcer of the Tonight Show. You're just a warm-up guy, which is really a shitty thing to say to this guy who came on your show. He's trolling you, Carl, 100% by saying warm-up guy. Because, first of all, it's like uh, there's a certain amount of people when I first moved to L.A. where you can go basically be an extra yeah, you can just go to Central Casting and be an extra. But there's a few extras that get the SAG card and they work and they make six figures because they get in with the right TV production and they always need you to be yep. like whatever the teacher for this show or something. So my point is like of comedians, this is like the extra work of comedians because you're not really you know getting a lot of credit. But it's hard to get that gig. You know, yeah. you can actually make six figures doing it that. Pays, you know, it's it not pays like, well. It's consistent. Yeah, you, you get all the I'm benefits saying. from it. And I don't even know what that question was going to be. So, so John goes, you know, well, you're a seasoned warm-up guy. I don't even know where he was going with that. I think Joey yeah. knew that, too, which is why he jumped in. Yeah. So then this is interesting because John wants to know if you do get those benefits from being the warm-up guy. And John can't believe the answer that he hears. From 61, hopefully we'll do it for a few more years. And then, and then I'll retire. Do, do the warm-up guys have a union? Yeah, we're in SAG and AFTRA. It's yeah. SAG and AFTRA. Even though you're not on TV. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, John. Even though he's not on, on TV, <laughs> they have a union, SAG AFTRA. Yeah. It's, SAG it's, and AFTRA, you do what? It's a position in SAG and AFTRA. But is John so has guess, to be yeah, SAG? But is, what's yeah. he deal with his dues? Because he, he's been in those movie stuff. Oh, yeah. Sorry. So actually, Alex, this is a big payoff that I've been waiting. This information I've been waiting for for years, and it finally comes out. So I get, yeah, I get paid to AFTRA, so... Uh, just like you know, you were so I got you know benefits, pension, all of that, and then you get yeah, paid for show. Coming. All right, so John finally says, "Yeah, I have that coming." His pension. He's talked about this before. He's got a pension, so we all think like, "Okay, well, you're set then, right?" Or you at least you have some kind of income coming. So I, I looked this up. We talked a little bit more about how he, he can't do that yet, and I don't know why I haven't looked this up sooner. But apparently. SAG-AFTRA pension will pay out at the age of 65. If you try to pull it out ahead of that, 25% gets taken off for every year before you turn 65. John is 57 right now. So he's nowhere near getting to this pension. No. That explains a lot. Even if he gets a pension, Carl, it's going to be like 20 grand. It's not going to be, I mean, I I don't know. I don't know what it is. I mean, he was making a half a million a year on The Tonight Show for 10 years or so. So he might have some money coming his way, but he can't touch it for a while. I mean, it's going to, it'll be almost nothing if he tries to touch it in the next couple of years. So now Joey is talking about how he hosts a Sopranos show that they do live. And John interrupts him with this story. That dude, try to follow this one because this is insane. So yeah, so and then, and then I'll travel around with the Sopranos. We do the live in conversation with the Sopranos. It's me, Mike Imperioli, Steve Sharippa, and Vinny Pastore, and we got the Keswick Theater coming up in uh, two weeks outside of Philly. You no, know, I've been trying to get Steve on my show, and it's an odd thing, Joey, because it's so weird, honestly. And I'll tell you what, yeah, you know, it's just one of those misunderstandings you know right they they booked me at the riviera not like like you know like k-rock would have all these sponsors so they had yeah you know and our vegas person they had me at a car show uh i mean a car dealer doing sign autographs in another place 
And they said, oh, and they want you to just go, you know, and just say hi at the Riv, you know, like at the yeah. army place. Joe, I didn't have an act yet. So, right. you know, I went on. I said, hey, how you doing, everybody? Stuttering John told the... Remember, this all started because he's talking about Steve Sharippa and how he does shows. And that's the guy who played Bobby mm-hmm. on uh, The Sopranos. And now Very John's familiar. talking about K Rock sponsors and doing these auto dealer things. Like, are you following this? <laughs> well, well, yeah, but was Joe in an episode it. of The Sopranos? Was he in an episode or something? No, he looks I don't think familiar. so. So I don't know. I don't think well, so. He was, didn't have like a bit part or something. He kind of looks familiar. So he might. How did he get connected with all them? Like, I wonder why he gets to do the the like. Uh, that would be an a interview question you would ask someone as a yes. follow up, yeah. yeah. Alex. Yeah. If you were running this show, you might say like, "Oh, you got you have a live show you do with those guys. How'd you meet them? What connection do you have to the Sopranos?" Those would be good questions. Instead, John goes, "Oh, that fucking asshole." Yeah. You know, like a funny story or two, and then I just brought on a comic, yeah. and Steve was fucking angry at me. I didn't know he was until. Right. Um, until Baba Bowie told me, and I'm like, he's like, well, you, you, you know, you didn't do your time. You didn't do any time. Right. And I'm like, Gary, I don't, I haven't started doing stand up yet. I don't have any time. I love that in his anecdote, mm-hmm. he explains that he told Gary, I haven't started doing stand up yet. That's not how that went down. You don't say that. You know, if you had talked to me in 2014 and been like, Carl, why aren't you making money off a of podcast? I haven't started podcasting yet. <laughs> no, he didn't know he was going to do that. It's so stupid to say that. So this is going to be from 30 years ago. I guess. Yeah. What he's talking about. So then he says that he had Steve Sharippa was on The Tonight Show. And so John confronted him about this thing that happened. This is so bizarre to me. I'd love to know the real story here. And Steve always yeah. was angry. So then Steve yeah. started doing... Bits on the Tonight Show, and, and I pulled them aside. I go, Steve, what the fuck are you mad at me for? Well, you were at the rib, you didn't do time. I go, Steve, I, I wasn't doing stand up yet. Well, I don't know what they told you. I, so again, does this sound plausible? Because both characters in this sound like stuttering John to me. Where he goes, Steve, I heard you're mad at me. Now, this is when he's at the Tonight Show. So we're talking years and years later. And he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm pissed because you didn't do enough time at this event thing, which I don't even know how Steve is connected to it. Right. Which is not something that someone would even say. It's like, oh, John, who cares? Water under the bridge. Even if he was upset with him at the time. So now John's explaining that, yeah, he did say that he was pissed at me. So I had to explain myself. Don't stand up yet. I don't know what they told you. I... You know, I don't. By the way, his guest is gone, and he's still going on about this. So Josh is like, like in a manic phase right now. He's just like reliving this moment. I hadn't even started doing stand up. They just told me to come out and say hi. The fuck you want from me? He seems and a little then defensive. He goes, oh, I didn't know that. And I go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Edgar, you can't send a super chat on Beer on the Balcony. We lost Joey again. <laughs> this is a disaster. <laughs> this is the worst I've ever seen, Senator John. <laughs> this guy is gone. Yeah. This is not just Coors Lights at this Look point. Look how bad his shirt is. I mean, with the stains <laughs> yeah. on it. I mean, and I'm not saying I don't have shirts with stains on it, but he just looks extra bad. I mean, Let me just recap what just happened there. Joey says, I'm doing the show, Sopranos. I got uh, Michael Imperioli on there. I got Steve Sharippa. John goes, whoa, Steve Sharippa. I want him to have him on my show, but he's pissed at me because this thing that happened 30 years ago. But then I confronted him about it on this night show, and then he's like, oh, I didn't know that, John. So it sounds like you guys made up. So if you're trying to get him on your show, that shouldn't be a problem. He shouldn't still be pissed at you about you're not doing enough time at the Riviera, right? And Joey just tapped out. And Joey's just like, I'm yeah, out of here. I've been polite long enough. So then John goes back to talking about what a great guy Joey is and how when John started doing stand-up, Joey taught him how to do it. And John is just wasted at this point. This is my nightmare to have a Wait, webcam so that's on how me. Joey leaves? Joey didn't even get a goodbye? I mean, so he's done. So I thought he accidentally kicked him out of the room. So that's the end of Joey's interview. That's oh, you'll, it. you'll see, Alex. You'll see what happens. And, you know, I'll never forget. I reached out to him to, you know, just when I started going, all right, I got to start doing stand-up again. And Joey was the first to come over 
and fucking come to my house, hang out in my bedroom, and direct me on on how you know putting an act together works. I never forgot it really. It comes naturally, like you know, when you have a chunk, you go, okay, like with me, childbirth. I have a lot of stories about when my wife gave birth. Now I combine, you know, all three and I make it one, I don't know, one five minute chunk. I love when John explains to us things like, you know, I'll put this in layman terms for you guys. Like you should know about that just from watching standups. Yeah. That that's how that works. Yeah. And he's going, well, so this is how it works. As if he's telling us what a pilot is or a cold open. Now, you guys don't know this, but what a cold open is. Like, no, we don't. John, we know what a chunk is. We know about this. You're not as special as you think you are, this show business guru. He thinks he's Rodney Dangerfield. He thinks he's Chris Rock right <laughs> yeah. now. Like he's giving us some like secret information about what it takes to become a stand-up comedian. Like, oh, uh, everybody's supposed to have an act. Duh. I mean, what the fuck? I mean, <laughs> John, I just want to know how did you come up with with that uh, your wife giving birth bit? Because that was unbelievable. <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked. What I did was <laughs> okay. So I have a couple of longer clips. These are the last two clips possibly ever of Stuttering John. This is his last show, October 31st. He never came back. Maybe he will. Right now we're in a no John November, <laughs> as you know. But uh, we are watching the demise of John. He is an angry, angry man. But then you just put jokes in and out of that, you know? Joe is trying to get back on. It don't matter. It's been awesome. Mark P. Joey has a very moving story. Dude, he is the nicest guy in the world. And I apologize to everybody by sending out these fake links. Oh, here we go. And you know what? It's just because there are people who are obvious huge fans of mine. I want to point out, and I didn't even realize this when I first clipped it, John's wasted, but he's not stuttering. He's not stammering. He's not saying uh or um. Oh, yeah. Because right now, he's telling the truth. He sent out multiple yeah. links to try to get people off his scent for some reason before he did beer on the balcony because he's pissed that people are putting the link somewhere or streaming it. I don't know. I, honestly, I don't even know about that part of it, but mm. he says that's what's happening. That will broadcast this live and give it out for free. Now, that's not really legal. But they do it anyway. And I don't even think they do it, you know, I don't know. It's like this crying dude. Like they do it just to, oh, look what we got. You know, you know, we took, you know, we fuck with Stutter and John. No. You know, you just. It's only- starting to sound like Biden. Holy shit. Yeah. Are you going to finish that <laughs> sentence or no? Nope. Okay, that's fine. Moving on. It's talking about Ryan Sherman, his uh, former mm-hmm. mod or admin or whatever, who uh, <laughs> realized the error in his ways. All right, so now we're watching. I'm uh, just paused there. We're going to continue on with this rant. But now we're watching Joey trying to reconnect here because Joey's having some tech issues, and he never does <laughs> reconnect. Spoiler. All you did was, you know, take my show and, you know, and put it out to try and fuck up me from charging people on my Patreon so they can go see your fucking link. Now, yes, I have have reported you, but you know what? You're anonymous. Why don't you do something like that to my face? Oh, Why not? Come on, you're a big fucking tough guy. Post a link to my face. Dude. What the fuck? You steal my show to my face. What does that even mean? I know. How would you even do that? No. But, and are you going to acknowledge the guy, Joey, trying to get on the stream? No. The no. Like, he's not even acknowledging that. Dude, he's got tunnel vision well, at this point. He's wasted. He's angry. Let me just play the last part of that again, because when he gets into his tough guy talk, yeah. this is very telling about how John actually is processing information in his brain. When he says, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. This is the real John right here. Why don't you do something like that? To my face. Why not? Come on, you're a big fucking tough guy. Do it to my face. That is truth serum. 
what he's drinking right now, whatever he <laughs> swallowed earlier. Because now you can tell how angry he really is. Why don't you do that fucking to my face? Huh? Why don't you why don't you try that? <laughs> that was and, pretty good. <laughs> anyone can do anything to your face, John. Yeah. There, there would be no repercussions to it. <laughs> this is, Alex, my final ever beer on the balcony clip. This is how John ends his show. This is how beer on the balcony, the stuttering John podcast, this whole story arc that we've been dealing with over the last five years. These are the final moments of John, and he is chugging his beer. <laughs> Joey can't get back on. You know, I told him, do it from your computer. Don't do it from your phone. But I guess it's, you know, I guess he couldn't figure out. It sounds like me with Pat Oates. You know, I told him, like, fucking figure out your Wi-Fi, asshole. But I guess he couldn't do it. <laughs> I love when John blames people for not understanding tech. Meanwhile, John's the worst with tech of anyone I've ever seen. He had to have Hell Sparks drive from Vegas to his house. Show him how to use an Ethernet cable, for Christ's sake. How to do it from his computer. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm only, like, three sips away. Then I'll get out of here. Got to take my clothes out of the dryer. I got Wolverine who's obsessed with me when I do this show. We'll be, we'll be. Oh, it's his cat. Alex Stein's dealing with that right now, too. Yeah. Now <laughs> I got cat life. And, uh, uh, where are you, Joey? Where are you now? Uh, anyway, any questions? Because... <laughs> I'm three sips away from getting the fuck out of here. Way to invite questions. Yeah. <laughs> Still no Joey. So it don't matter. I hope you enjoyed this beer on the balcony. I know I Oh, did. I did. Joey's been a great guy to me. And I hope you guys all enjoyed his story. I mean, he's just been. Ch- this is not a natural way to drink a beer. Loved and respected by almost every comic in the world. He had a full beer everyone. to start this segment. He's just chugging it. When he said three oh, this sips, is, this is sip number three. <laughs> yeah, I mean, these are not yeah. sips. All right, I'm out of here. So everybody, that was the third sip. Enjoy- man. That was the third one. That was. I wouldn't call them <laughs> sips, though. <laughs> You're right. No, he can chugging. he can measure how long it takes him to drink a beer. The hour and seventeen minutes from this Monday. Uh, beer on the balcony. This part right here I thought was very interesting because I thought for sure October 31st, he knew he was taking a break. It just seemed like when he put out the information on his Patreon, the very beginning of November, guys, I'm not going to charge anyone. I'll be back in January of 23. It seemed like he had that figured out for a while, but listen to this. Uh, Guess for tomorrow. I think it might, well, I don't even want to say. This guy's trying fucking my guess, but Let's just say, if it all works out, it'll be a good show. So I'll see you tomorrow, Tuesday at noon PST. And this is Stuttering John saying, Kiki, yeah. <laughs> pretty good for his final Kiki, if you ask me. Oof. That's a pretty that good way to go out. Yeah, that's a nice <laughs> Gia was legendary. It really was. If you were gonna, if you're gonna end this whole saga, this is the way to do it, right Stutter here. John saying, "Kiki, yeah." I went to the <laughs> Yeah, he's had a few. I went to uh, school with kids in wheelchairs who sounded like that. Yeah. Oh no, <laughs> it's not good. Okay. Carl, I had to predict this. I had to say this, and this is just me. You know, I had to counter signal everything. You Please. know, W A T P is saying, yeah, the redemption arc will be. He's going to go to his mom's house, and his she's going to make him get sober, or more soberish, soberish. He's never going to be fully back, but I think he comes back and does his show. And I think yeah, the New York has a rejuvenation a little bit. It just you know, and, and I think this will be better for W A T P because it'll give you more content. But right now. He's like just all he's at rock bottom. I think this really helped him going to his mom's personally. Mom! I, Take it easy. Lower it. I'm, I'm not gonna lower it. I have to do this now. <laughs> you were waiting to find a spot for that. You nailed it. <laughs> so yeah, I, 
Alex, I hope that's true. I truly, yeah. truly hope that that is true. I mentioned on the show last time, maybe a family member saw this and they said, all right, we it's time to get John some help. He has been spotted at the pub since then, so I don't think that's the case. But, God, I really do so hope. you got Pickwick spies? Carl, you got spies in the Pickwick? <laughs> no, I don't. This has gotten away from me now. Yeah. <laughs> the Dabblers. Oh, well, the Dabblers, yeah, so they know. So anytime he goes to Pickwick, there's like, oh, shit, John, or whatever. I know he goes to multiple bars. Yeah. So then they go on the Reddit, and they, they'll say that he was there. Well, they'll send a, they'll, oh put a, they'll post a picture of it. And the oh, Dabblers, as much like the universe, is ever expanding. Yeah. It just keeps getting yeah, larger yeah. and larger. There's nothing you can do about it. There's some guy reading the newspaper with the two holes. <laughs> he's, he's got a phone on his shoe he picks it up <laughs> get stupid yeah seriously it is get stupid not get smart i i do think that and i, I mean obviously he's never gonna be I, I don't think if he if he stopped drinking i think he would die but him going to mm. his mom's i think he'll he'll have to drink less and then he'll want to podcast more because this is the thing that we like about John the most is that he has this self importance about him that he still thinks he's like, you know, the announcer from the tonight show. So that'll never go away. So as long as he's talking to a microphone, he'll always have that cringe. Yeah. Like, Oh, uh, Steve Sharippa doesn't like me because of this thing in the Riviera 30 years ago. That Steve Sharippa has no recollection of. Yeah, like, no uh, yeah. Dude, he's lived a full life. He's got a lot of credits to his name. He doesn't remember that. Yeah. He doesn't care. No way. Dude. Hilarious. No way. I do want to give a stuttering John update. I saw that you have uh, a stuttering John clip. Yeah, I just I brought one clip in. We never got the chance to talk about this, but towards the end of the stuttering John era that we've just witnessed, yeah. there were all these shows that were coming out that were re- reviewing stuttering John content. There were, and that's there was, my thing. <laughs> there was one that came out that. I loved it. I thought it was really special, and uh-huh. it, it didn't get the chance to flower and develop like I wish that it should have. But it's called The Watcher. Yes. It's very mysterious. No one knows who The Watcher is. Sure. But when you watch The Watcher, you're fucking watching The Watcher. You know what I mean? Yeah, and The Watcher's watching you. And The Watcher is watching Stuttering John. All right. Before I hit that, though, I feel like we should do this. <laughs> Fuck you, YouTube. <laughs> you can't hear this shit. <laughs> Goddamn algorithm! Copyright strike my ass! <laughs> yeah. Almost forgot to win. Yeah, work. baby! Welcome to the world famous stuttering I'm John watching podcast. you, John. Hold on, let me just do <laughs> one small thing here. I'm watching right. you do one small thing. <laughs> check, 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 check. Got to change the microphone setting. How are you? Why did you what change your microphone day. setting? <laughs> Just to prove that there's now, a tea bag in there. As Andrea Brower figured He's out. using a clear cup. Why am I late today? Well, uh... Because you're a drunk. Maybe I had something to do with the, <laughs> the final Jan 6 hearing. Of this course. hearing totally, totally points the finger at you. That's a disgusting finger. The orange... <laughs> Filled, Look at the wearing, garbage underneath there. Heel lifting, girdle wearing. You're obviously. Belt-tod. That's right, Donald. A butthole gardener. Just you. <laughs> <laughs> Digging in the old butthole garden. Uh, again, very mysterious. We'll never know who the watcher is. No, <laughs> right. no one could ever find out. But my God, that was compelling content. I miss you. That was fantastic. Uh, so, just quick updates on Stuttering John. The mods are pissed at him. Oh, boy. And this is being well documented right now by Muttering J. Muttering J. On the case as always. As always. If you go on Twitter, Muttering J is finding these chats between Benny Loco and Andrea Brower and Carlene Martin. And they're all like, what the fuck? I got charged? Yeah. Carlene Martin's the funniest one. Yeah. She got charged five bucks for Patreon for November. And she's like, I could have used that money for food. <laughs> well, you should have. Yeah, <laughs> if five bucks have. means that much to you, yeah, don't give it to Stuttering John. Oh, That's Jesus. for damn sure. So apparently, people are pissed at John because everyone got charged in November on his Patreon and YouTube. Yeah, but there's no new content coming out, and no old content. And the old content's gone yeah. as well. Also, let's not forget he missed three beer on the balconies in a row in October. Yeah. So he really wasn't delivering that month either. He came out and said the November charge was for October content, which is not true. Yeah, that's not how that works. He's just an asshole. 
And it's great that these people are really turning on him right now. The other Cedric John news. Oh, go ahead. Motherfucker doesn't have a friend in the world. No. He doesn't have a friend in the fucking world. He's ruined every single personal relationship yeah. he's ever had. Yeah. He finally has a circle of people that like tolerate him and like him and, and show up every week. And he completely fucking alienated him. Yeah. And like just ghosted him. Just uh, thanks for the money. Fuck you. Yeah, no, he literally we we played this on our show. His October 31st episode of Beer on the Balcony, which all of these mods are watching because yeah. they're all part of that support group, they're watching him say, tomorrow, November 1st, we got a great show for you, uh, I got a great guest lined up, yep. and then he disappeared. So oh. it wasn't like he was telling people, by the way, I'm going to take some time off, yeah. I got some personal, because now we say he's got personal shit going on, which is odd, he's got personal shit going on, and yet he just had a camera crew over to his house this week, and apparently... He's filming some documentary about Howard Stern or something. That Howard wants uh, nothing to do oh, yeah. with, by all Of course. Right. It's it's going to feature Grillo, Jackie, John. From what I've heard... Yeah, guys that worked there 35 years Correct. Ago. And from what I've heard, John's the only guy who insisted on getting paid to do it. Oh. So John got like 500 bucks oh, for geez. that. So that's like right. two weeks worth of Super Chat. Well, Classy fuck. Move. That's a month's worth of yeah. Super Chats. yeah. So no wonder he's not giving the content anymore. And he doesn't have to give YouTube 30%. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. That is uh, net cash he's pulling down. Wow. Good job, Johnny. All right. So stuttering John, uh, you know, he's still still out there, still uh, still tweeting at people and, and putting out messages on his Patreon and stuff. But um, no new episodes. Yeah. He says January he'll make his return. God damn it. That's the update. Impressive that he found a way to piss off even the few people <laughs> left on the planet that aren't disgusted by his every breath. All right, guys. I am excited to tell you that we have a very important update on one of our long lost friends. Stuttering John Melendez is doing stand-up shows this weekend, including one tonight at the Double Z Bar and Grill. That's in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And then he's going to Davenport, Iowa on Saturday night to do another stand-up show. This is a guy who said that he retired from stand-up. This is a guy who said he had personal issues, why he had to stop podcasting. This is a guy... Who can never play at a comedy club instead he plays bars and grills that don't actually normally have comedy. <laughs> what I'm excited to tell you guys, and I don't, Christian, I don't know if you know this or not, but just this morning, Stuttering John was on KMRY doing an interview to promote his stand-up gig. Oh, I did not know this. This oh, is great. <laughs> you are in for a treat, my friend. So we are going to now listen to the complete interview. With stuttering jazz, about 20 minutes. And uh, stop me anytime you want, Christian, because there's a no, lot of greatest I, it, hits going on with this one. It, the only reason I'll, I'll stop is uh, just to let it soak in, you know. And mm -hmm. before you start, I'll say I saw that post that he had a comedy show. Yeah. And I was so excited. I'm like, Wednesday afternoon, all I got to do is drive up to Canoga Park. I was going to tell you, like, yeah, I'm going to go right after this. And then I'm like, oh, no, he's in Cedar Rapids. I just, you know, I didn't think he, anybody would pay for him to travel. You know, yeah. so I was very disappointed that it wasn't just somewhere local, just a little bit north of L.A. That would have been cool. Basically, this is what's going on. The guy who owns the bar hired John to come and do the show. And John's actually staying with him at his house. Of course. Now, John's very close with his kids, yeah. as you know. Yeah. And Thanksgiving is yeah. a very important holiday. But if you do get a gig at a bar and grill in Iowa, then it's worth missing the holiday. Obviously. Stay with someone else's family. <laughs> It's literally what he's doing. So what you're going to hear is John's on this show with this host who's, by the way, missing both of his legs. And uh, he's on there. You're going to hear another voice come in from time to time. That's the guy who owns the bar and grill. Mm. So he has, a, uh, obviously, a relationship with the radio station. So he got John on the morning show to do this interview to promote the gig. All right. Let's get right into it. Good 
Good morning, family. So I'm here, and I've got a special guest that's already demanding this and demanding that. So <laughs> stuttering John Menendez. John, uh, M- <laughs> yeah. Already, he's already pissed off the host of the show before his segment okay. even Record begins. Record time. Record time. So. Stuttering John is big shotting everyone. Do you know the fuck I am? You call this a radio station? Where's my locker? John Wait. hasn't even spoken yet, and I've already got three thoughts. The first, yeah. you hear that music. Music. I'm like, all right, they, clearly this show is called The Jungle. That's why they have that, that <laughs> yeah. music bed playing underneath it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, some people might think that it's a joke to be like, oh, he's already got demands. No, that's a very passive aggressive. Like, yep. can you believe this guy's already asking for shit? Yep. And then calling him John Menendez. Yes. I, and you know. You, you'll be shocked to know, Christian, that John takes offense to this. And uh, immediately comes back at the host. This and demanding that. So, stuttering John Menendez. John, uh, M- in my I, I didn't kill my parents. It's Melendez. <laughs> I said Melendez. <laughs> you said Menendez. You, you said Menendez. I know how to say your name. I said. Let it go, John. Move on. It's fine. I mean, we all make mistakes. You're not a very popular person. You're not a big celebrity. Someone pronounces your name wrong. It's going to happen. The Menendezes are actually more famous than you, so. That's what's going to happen sometimes. <laughs> and way more successful. Think about yes. what they accomplished. Yeah. They, they know how to follow through. They got it done. <laughs> the L. I said Melendez. No, you said Menendez. No, I did not Play say back Melendez. The tape. Play back the tape. I do, you know what? I got it on tape. Too. Play back the okay. tape. Already coming in here talking about I want this and this. He was like, he, he's sitting in here. He's like, can I have a book or something to put the microphone on? He's got the microphone. So I'm, but you only I'm hunched foot, over like Quasimodo. You only five foot two, John. Jeez. I mean, you know, I'm six four. I don't need it. You know, I'm 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 glorious. I mean, I'm, I'm not Hervé Villachez here. I mean, come on. <laughs> what are you doing in town, John? Stand up. Cutting edge reference, by the way. Urban know, yeah. He's got a little job for that. I know Peter Dinklage is an obvious reference, but at least people know who that is. You know, <laughs> yeah, good point. You know, it's, that's great. Tattoo from Fantasy Island yeah. forty years ago. Uh, and by the way, the host of this show is that a real voice or is he doing a character? Like, remember Howard used to have the lady who was the traffic copter, Mama Luka Boo Boo Day or something. Was <laughs> yeah, in there. right. I'm like, yeah. this guy is definitely like doing a whole shtick, right? This is nobody's actual voice. Gosh. I was thinking the same thing the whole time, but it's consistent. So yeah. I don't know. I All don't right. know what the deal is. But I love that John, this is a guy who's a veteran of radio. He's been on the radio. He, you know, he talks about being on Stern and for 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> but my point is, though, is that when you enter into a radio station and you start talking to the host, the dumbest thing to do is start pointing out issues that you have with things people can't see. Oh, I don't like where the microphone is positioned. Oh, I want to put this over here. That looks dumb. Like, you can't, yeah. no one can see that. Or any issues, really. <laughs> well, yeah, I should probably just shut up and plug your show. But... <laughs> All right. Says here, I mean, come on. <laughs> what are you doing in town, John? Stand up at double Z's. <laughs> okay, tell me about what's going on with this. Guys, we got oh. John. Okay, if you don't know who stuttering John Melinda. <laughs> By the way, what are you doing in town? Stand up at double Z's. Like, it's confrontational. Right out of the gates. Like, wouldn't you be like, oh, well, you know what I mean? I'm here to do a stand-up show tonight. I hope everyone can come out. It's going to be a great time. Yeah. I'm doing stand-up! <laughs> what the it, fuck it, is it your I, business? Actually, I, I signed up for f- 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 far- Farmers Only. So I'm <laughs> trying to me- 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 meet somebody. I was told you don't have to be lonely. As is, <laughs> who did not kill his parents. John is is just an amazing comedian. Well, I don't know. He's all right. Amazing comedian. <laughs> wow. The host caught himself <laughs> quickly. Face. With that one, he's like, wait, I don't want to go on record saying this guy's an amazing yeah, comedian. Yeah. I, I actually don't know who he is. <laughs> it's hilarious. Oh. I mean, when the guy is booked to do a show with no cover charge at Double Z's Bar and Grill, you can go ahead and assume he's not an amazing comedian. Yeah. Right? Might be good. Yeah. Probably not amazing. No, no, no. I, I saw Dave Chappelle do an hour at Chili's once, and it was fantastic. <laughs> it was actually yeah, at Chili's, so too, at an airport, about. but still. <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, was on Howard. How long were you on Howard Stern? Six, Sixteen years. Sixteen years yeah. on Howard Stern show. Yes. You were also on the Late Night Show. I was on the Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Didn't I say that? No, you said Late Night. But you were on the Late Night Show too, right? With Nick. No, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> I don't either. What's well, on your IMDb page? All right. So he has to correct the guy. And say it's the Tonight Show, and I, I get it. The Tonight Show is an iconic show, and it's not called the Late yeah. Night Show. But if you go to his uh, IMDb page, and John's talked about this, 
the late night with Conan O'Brien, he was on quite a bit, and that is listed in his credits. So what John could have said was, oh, yeah, no, I used to do Conan all the time, but you know what, I, what I'm more known for is being the announcer and a writer for The Tonight Show. Instead, John just immediately has to tell this guy he's an idiot. When, when Al Roker and Abe Vigoda said no, I was the fourth call after that. <laughs> no, you said late night. But you on the late night show, too, right, with Nick? No, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> well, it's on your IMDb page. No, it's the Tonight Show. I want to say, I thought it was a late night. But, right, Dude, you know what? If it's past in, 8 o'clock, In 10 it's late seconds, night. you just screw up my name I and my credits. I screw up your name and your credits. Holy c- Yeah, it's almost like you don't matter. John. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I, it's almost like this guy has no idea who you are yeah. and doesn't give a shit that he has no idea who you are. Yeah, it's almost like Double Z's buys advertising on the station and mm-hmm. the program director said, give this guy 20 minutes on the morning show. Yeah, let's get through this morning. <laughs> like any other I morning. didn't screw up your credits. Yes, you did. No, I did not. Okay, <laughs> the late so night show. Tonight, all right, fine. Well, what's it called? The Tonight Show. The Tonight Show. So, Tonight Show. Okay. I should point this out because people are putting it in the chat. The host of the show is a white man. I know it doesn't sound no. like that at all, but it is. this is a white man that we're listening to. I think to. everyone in the chat is lying. There's no way. I looked it up today. I, I checked it out. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with you. I'm stuttering. <laughs> you got no legs. I stutter. Ah, ah, we my legs up in this. Ah. We're both cripples here. Oh. Okay. Is that true? Is that PC? This guy's missing both of his legs from, by the way, like a, a flesh-eating illness that he had. It's pretty horrific. Could have died. And John goes, yeah, and I stutter. So, so we're on the yeah, same. We're tied. <laughs> we're tied. <laughs> and I think uh, the, you know, 20 minutes from when we're listening, when this interview is over, he's like, yeah, I would definitely have the flesh-eating virus again in both of my arms <laughs> rather than yeah. talk to John again. <laughs> Okay, I'm with that. I'm, I also I'm quit drinking. But, on, I find but we both own a motorcycle. All right, yes, we do, we do, we do. See, now you spread my business around. I didn't ask you about that. Well, I think it's pretty cool that you don't have legs. I got legs. I got one charging right there. Yeah, I know. Why is it charging? Because it's it's a it's a bot. Can we talk about you instead? He's got his no. He's no. got his leg on the desk here. I said, hey, look, he's got his leg up. <laughs> <laughs> I see why you make money. Um, oh. No. Seriously. Seriously. Very passive aggressive right there. Oh, man. Why do your legs need to charge? <laughs> what do you think, John? <laughs> so, so, <laughs> all right, so, you, so yeah. you, you're here to do stand up. Stand up. Okay, yeah. I, tr- I tried to tell people who, what your business was, but you yeah. want to interrupt me and stuff. <laughs> so, how, do you, how do you have that accent and, is, and are in Iowa? I'm in. I love that he goes, listen, I'm trying to promote your thing, but you're interrupting me, and John immediately interrupts him. Yeah. <laughs> I could just yeah. let the guy fucking get your plug out. No, no, instead of uh, getting to my plug, uh, can I insult you again? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is why people love having me as a guest. I come on, and I totally derail the conversation and call you an <laughs> asshole. And John thinks this is going great, I Oh, bet. of course he does. This is just Because he's, he's doing that thing that he's done on Beer on the Balcony that we've watched, where even though the other person isn't enjoying the conversation, John laughs a lot. To make it seem like, oh, we're just all having such a great time. Of that accent, and is, and are in Iowa. I'm in. You know, I'm from Georgia. It don't matter. <laughs> with this one with the camera, I, I'm originally from from Georgia. I'm here in Iowa. We talk about me. We talk about you. Yes. Okay. You're the guest here, not me. No, I know, and but you, I just and you didn't even pay to be here. <laughs> no, I and I do appreciate it. <laughs> this is something else that, and you're going to hear this because I listened to this whole interview. This is something that John he should know. And, of course, he doesn't because he's an idiot. So he's on a show that's being listened to by people who know the show. So people know this guy's from Georgia. They know he's missing his life. They know all these things because this is the host of the show. And John's pointing these out as if he's doing his show. And, you know, oh, you can't believe what's going on here. It's like, yeah, no, we know. You're the guest. You're the person that we're supposed to be learning about, John. Well, two things from that from that clip the first is that uh, clearly every radio station in atlanta had this guy's tape and we're like nope so uh, he had to keep shopping it around Good and point. eventually he ended up in, in iowa yeah. and uh when he said the most important thing that i've heard so far and you didn't even pay to be here yeah because clearly he paid to be there <laughs> yeah yeah you're not me no, no i know and but you, i just and you didn't even pay to be here <laughs> no i and i do appreciate it Listen, thanks, George, for having me. 
I have to go now. <laughs> Did you hear that insult? He said the wrong name. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, uh, good one. I didn't even get it. I got your I first name, Mike that. Menendez. Okay. <laughs> it's Ricky. All right. All right, so no, no. I'll tell you, do you know that? I impersonated the Senator Bob Menendez. That's how I got Donald Trump to, to call me from Air Force One. I heard that that interview, yeah, and, and then I got I got the Secret Service banging on my door after I did that. I mean, that was a big, big you know, that made global news. Well, you know? why why was Secret Service? Because if Donald called you, why why why? Secret no, because Service? I duped them into thinking I was Senator Bob Menendez. Hey, look, you'll, you've heard me talk. I don't sound uh, senatorial. I sound you don't, you don't sound intelligent. I sound time. janitorial. <laughs> I love that John has to go to his joke. Yeah. Dude, yep. John uses so many of his recycled jokes in this interview, and the guy ruins his joke. Yeah. But it doesn't stop John from no. getting the punchline out. And then, of course, I believe what happens next is he yells at him for ruining his punchline. <laughs> <laughs> you stepped on my joke. Hey. What? You stepped on my joke. What, are we having a conversation? I'm trying to do my bits here. What's your problem? <laughs> Look, you see these blue cards I brought with me? I have nine to ten really bad prepared one-liners. Would yeah. you just let me get to them? You can catch uh, them later and- tonight at the double Z. <laughs> I mean, I, I, so, so on a serious note, did they really come? Did they really contact you? Are you kidding me? They were banging on my door. They, uh, you know, they called my agent. They wanted to see the hard drive. I didn't know them. anything about it. And that was the <laughs> weirdest thing is, is my agent called me, which was even harder to believe than the president calling me. And, and, and my agent that. called. All right, so there's another one. Yeah. yeah. Me and I had to call the Secret Service, and they wanted me to come downtown. And I said, uh, "Do you want to arrest me, or do you want to just interview me?" They said, "We can't tell you that." So I said, "Should I get a lawyer?" And they said, "It's up to you." So guess who I called? Michael Avenatti. No, you did not. Yes, I did. And then he got me out of the whole thing. I just mm, drop. <laughs> Saw. Uh, Too bad he can't get himself out of his own trouble. Well, I mean, you know, if a, why is your leg charging? Uh, are we right back to that? Again? No, but I, 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 no, I didn't know that legs come with like a whole charging unit. Well, t- they do, John. They do. It's charging. Get over it. The guy made it very clear. Stop talking about me. I'm trying to interview you. I, I, this is something that I do to promote double Z's and the local comedy clubs. Like, this is what I do. Uh, let me t- do it. John just will not let him get any flow going or any type of real conversation. And he thinks he's being hilarious. Yeah. He thinks he's like, I'm the best guest you ever had, right? Deliberately not taking your hints. <laughs> <laughs> not picking up what you're putting down since 1988. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, all right, so this this leg right here is that an EV leg? No, no yeah, yeah, kind of, kind of. It's a robotic leg, and, and I need to charge it. So I didn't charge it last night. Let's get back to you, John. Hey, look, I I would never make fun of your legs. It's just you yeah, have it sitting on the desk. Take a picture of it, James. He, he's got his leg, and he's got a Superman t- thing on it. And it's- I would never make fun of your legs, except for they're in plain sight. <laughs> <laughs> what an asshole. <laughs> I would never make fun of you, but but look at what a fucking loser this guy is. <laughs> yes, I am. And I love I love that he tells his handler, the guy who owns yeah, the place yeah. and hired him, hey, take a photo do of this that. horrible thing. <laughs> it's up there. You're putting a the nice kicks that you got. No, tweet it with the hashtag what an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> Got on that leg. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Can we get back to you, John? Since yes. you one here. Yes. Okay. So now, yeah. let's get. <laughs> when is your comedy? When, when's your comedy show tonight? Yeah. And it's where? It's it's at Double Z's. This, okay. Yeah. Th- this is how bad my career is going. I, Fifteen years on the Howard Stern show. Ten years on the Tonight Show. Now I'm at Double Z's in Iowa. Hey, 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 oh, to hey, give you hey, an idea, don't knock Double Z now. To give you an idea, point. To give you an idea how bad that my career is going. The other day, I was in an Uber and I was driving. <laughs> <laughs> well, why wasn't it a lift instead? I mean, you know. <laughs> okay. So John had to start that joke three times yes. in order to say, look, I'm doing one of my bits now. Let me just get it out. And then the amount of fake laughter. Mike Morris always makes fun of this on the Uncle Rico show. <laughs> yeah. Someone posted the cowardly lion in the Discord. <laughs> <It's> a- <laughs> yeah, I was in an Uber and I was driving. <laughs> Snagglepuss. <laughs> Jesus uh, Christ, yeah, yeah, John. Yeah, Muttley from the Wacky Races. Yes, right. <laughs> 
Dude, fucking Jackie the joke man's laugh is more subtle than stuttering John at this fucking point. It's like, and then, so that guy didn't laugh at all. Right. Right. You heard Ricky not even respond to that. So then John has to explain that it was a joke. <laughs> did you make any money is the question. Or did you do like cash cab? <laughs> no. No. It's a joke. <laughs> Except for it's not a joke. <laughs> Except for John really did drive for Uber, as he later admitted. But good joke. I signed up for a class. Turned out I was teaching it. <laughs> Sorry, I signed up for seventh grade math. Can you believe that I'm playing at this piece of shit club in your piece of shit city? <laughs> yeah, I know. That's how we. That that was the setup to the joke. You know how fucking terrible my life is. I'm in Iowa with at this fucking asshole's bar. Everyone's just like. Buddy, yeah. and he's literally standing right <laughs> yeah, there. We're like literally. <laughs> Wait, he's standing right behind me, isn't he? <laughs> Is he smiling? <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need to know. Like, oh, you actually wearing the double Z? Yeah. Well, I ain't worried about him. We talking about John? What's yeah. with this double Z? T-shirt? And listen, I don't want to hear anybody saying I'm making fun of a some because because first of all, he's got his leg on the desk, so he he's okay with it. When 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 you don't know me, I don't know you, but let yeah. me educate you on Ricky. Yeah, I'm not sensitive, so we we good and talk about leg. That's okay. That is okay. No, and you can and you can goof on my stutter. You know what? I used Listen, to stutter I'm stuttering when I was a Puerto kid. Rican with OCD and smelly feet. You can goof on all of that. That's too. what that's. St- all right. So, one of the things that John thinks is something that people can goof on is the fact that he's Puerto Rican, mm-hmm. which I find odd. He's like, uh, I have a stutter. I have smelly feet. I'm Puerto Rican. It's like, well, that's not something to goof on. Yeah. Like, what it, it's it's so bizarre that in his mind, like he's the fucking racist on this one. He's like, you probably got a bunch of Puerto Rican jokes, right? No, I was actually going to talk about your, how shitty your feet smell. For the record, I haven't <laughs> heard him stutter in forever, and I think he did it just so he could make fun of this guy's legs. Yes, agreed. When he stutters, oftentimes it's on purpose. And spoiler, at the end of this interview, Ricky's going to point out that John doesn't stutter. Oh, okay, yeah. Thank you brought in was them feet. Yes. Okay. I got smelly feet. Hey, hey, I, I, I should show you my toes. No. no. Okay, I can show you my toes. Oh, oh, I got toenails like that old. See, now John missed that joke. This guy's missing his legs. Yeah. I can show you my toes. Not a bad he joke. Was focused. And John just focus on, <laughs> nope, you got to look at my shitty fucking toenails, asshole. We don't need to see, we don't you need know, to see your tree I mean, climbers. We don't need to see your tree know, climber. We're good. No. Okay, so. I could pull an OJ with my toes. Man, look at this. I'm sitting here trying to, I'm trying to c- conduct a professional interview here. I want to hear, all right, so we, we got the, we got what you're doing tonight. What time does it start? I'm about uh, to get James over here and talking. No, 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 no! Don't get James. We, it has, we don't want to bore the audience. I, I get on at um, uh, the shows at eight o'clock. But are you going to come to the show? I can if you want me to. Yeah, because you're a celebrity. Uh, you were in that show, uh, Chicago. Uh, we don't need to talk about my business. We talk about I'm John's just trying business. to prop. I'm, I understand that. Try- not- John goes. You should come to my show because you're a celebrity. You were on that show. He's the host of the morning show in the market that you're in. <laughs> the current show. That's why he's a celebrity, John. It's <laughs> fucking idiots. I'm to prop, prop, you up. prop me up. I'm trying to prop you up. Okay. I'm you're the tr- guest here, not me. All right. I'm just trying to be okay, nice. You, you're not it's allowed like a foreign to foreign concept for him. He, John, should, he should know this format. John goes, I'm just trying to be nice. Just the opposite. In every single way, sir. You are sabotaging way, this you- poor man's morning show. Do you guys feel like we have a much better understanding now on why all of those dates that John goes on go so badly? Because this is, you know, him meeting someone for the first time, yeah. and he's like, "Let me show you my toes." Yeah, yeah. Like, check out my feet. Minutes, not even ten minutes in. <laughs> just bad decisions at every turn. <laughs> if you want me to pick you up for the date, just open your Uber app. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> Up. I'm trying to prop you up. Okay, I'm you're the tr- guest here, not me. All right, I'm just trying to be okay, nice. You, you're not allowed in the Southern House if you don't keep doing this. Okay, okay, because we, don't, we don't do that. And it's the, oh no, he did uh, not just bless my heart. Oh, bless your heart. Oh, he just it's a real thing. It is a real thing. So this guy's from the South, and he knows bless your heart means fuck you. Mm. F bomb me. <laughs> He sure did. <laughs> All right, so look here. So so that's going to be tonight, starting at 8 o'clock. Is there yeah. a cover charge for this? No. 
No, it's actually it's free. You know that you know James. I got to be honest, James Larson, who's who's kind of famous here in Iowa. Mm-hmm. He owns the uh, Double Z's. He couldn't be a nicer guy, and and <laughs> and he's a very close friend of mine. You know what John means when he says "couldn't be a nicer guy" and is a close friend of mine. Mm-hmm. It means he gives me free shit. Yeah, he gives me money. Yeah. He lets me stay at his house. It's always a one-way relationship. Tommy MSCS Media, what a nice guy. What a great friend he is. Pays for me to fly to Florida, gives me money to be on his show. What a great guy. Unlimited cores. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> and he's, you know, and he asked me, you know, I'm actually staying at his house. Mm-hmm. Yes, and he's been very kind. He Does made he some let nice you steaks. Use the toilet? Because he wouldn't let me use the toilet. Y- yes, I do. Well, well, I heard about your toilet habits. You well, know. I mean, you know, provide I mean, you know, toilet I mean, paper next time. Stay at the wall. I mean, you know, you got to flush every now and then. You know, well, was, that wasn't the problem. Hypocrite. <laughs> It's something else. John's anyway. cracking himself up again. You got to flush every once in a while. What? That's not a good joke. Wait, but go ahead. No, so uh, he's very kind, and he and he asked me to do his club, and then and and then and then on Saturday I'm at the uh, DAC fact the Dacry Factory in Quad Cities. Oh yeah, Dabby. oh yeah. All the big comics play the DAC fact. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a rite of passage. <laughs> Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, and and that's from the guy who used to own the penguins out here. It's, wow, I didn't know that he he owned that place out there too. Does he own the uh, place? Yeah, Jeff has like a piece of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's pretty good. I like and, that. And I did stand up at Penguins a bunch of times. I actually, I'll tell you something. I went to St. Luke's Hospital yesterday because oh, oh. because I was having some like heart problems or something. I couldn't breathe. And let me tell you. I got to tell all the people in Iowa, and I'm not kissing your butts, but I'll tell you this, that the people at that hospital were the nicest people I've ever met at a hospital in my life. And John's been to many hospitals. Yeah, that's true. So he would know. <laughs> all right. I just want to pause the way, it real never quick. Once has he shown up at a hospital with a check for money that he's asked for someone who's staying <laughs> right. in the hospital. Yeah. I, I just want to point out something that John just in casual conversation brought up the fact that he spent yesterday at St. Luke's Hospital, which is in Cedar Rapids, where they are in Iowa. And that seems like something that you'd be like, oh, shit, you went to the hospital yesterday? What, what's going on? Let's find out. In New York, they go, what do you want? You know, they let you in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah they go, hey, 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 I'm talking here. But no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not here in Iowa. They are the they're sweethearts. So wait a minute, woman. How's your heart doing? Because I know you have one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. Not a bad little dig. Yeah. Score one for Ricky. <laughs> yeah. Are you doing okay? Uh, yeah. They just found out I was dehydrated. You know, I'm, I'm dehydrated. Yeah. John's fifty-seven years old. Yeah. He goes to Iowa to do some comedy gigs. And on the first night, he drinks himself into the hospital. He says they found out I was. They dehydrated. found out I was dehydrated. Yeah, and he was. He did this like a year and a half ago. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was the time he went to Reno, and he forgot his Klonopin, mm-hmm. and he ended up in the hospital for that. But do you know how difficult it is to drink that much to the point where you're dehydrated and you have to go to the hospital? I've tried. <laughs> I haven't pulled it off yet. <laughs> Oh shit! I think I, you know, because I like to drink too much. You know, I'm a beer okay. Well, drinker. well, well, well. I mean, beer's liquid bread. What do you think? You're not gonna sit there eat a whole loaf of bread and not drink no water. I mean, come I on. I know. Now. So I gotta hydrate more. Okay, well, hydrate more. I know. That's my thing. I'm like, juice. you know, I hate to taste the water. You we know why? Because there's no taste. Water. We got some. No, we, you know what? Let me show you something right here. You there's no taste, taste in water. You can sit there and put some of this I'll mess. Take. Sure, it'll save my life yeah. and I'll feel better, but hey, there's not flavorful enough for me. What Do you idiot. know how many Poland Springs I have to drink to get fucked up? Then <laughs> in your water, and then it's good. Oh, it's nice. like Hawaiian Punch, you know, flavoring packs. Oh, that's a great from, idea, from Timmy. Interesting. Ryan Sharman says, while it's been said that John might have liver or kidney failure, uh, those things actually make water taste metallic. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting tidbit. Thank you. Well, I appreciate that, Jonathan. <laughs> I'm glad you think that's funny. 
Anyway, my point is, <laughs> Dude. all right, so you got you got that thing going on tonight. And, yes. I, I, and yes, I do want to go. It's going to be at Double Z's. Please come. Starting at 8. Come early. Do you do stand-up? Do I, I? I did stand up one time at Penguins. So why don't you come on? Come That's on. not my show. I'm not getting paid for it. There was an easy missing legs joke in there that John totally missed. Just saying. No one's getting paid. Can show. I get some chicken wings or it's, something? It's a free show. And we're expecting a lot of refunds. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, look at James. Uh, uh, you know, throws me right under the bus. You guys catch that? Yeah. James yells, it's a free show, and we're expecting a lot of refunds. Also, I love that John invites this guy to do stand-up with him. Yeah. Didn't clear it with James. This yeah. guy probably has better things to do. He probably gets appearance fees and things because he's a morning jack. He's just like, yeah, hey, why don't you come up and do a, a free set for me? Like, no. Yeah, it's not a puppet show. <laughs> and even that would be more organized. Well, I mean, and, he and, wouldn't be a good friend if he didn't throw you on the bus. No, seriously, in all seriousness, I know we're having a lot of fun here. No, we're not. Uh, <laughs> and I did ask you, because, I, you no, know, no. I, I didn't know if you were like a war veteran because you lost both your legs. And then you told me <sighs> you had a flesh-eating disease. Okay, here we are. We're about back to me again. No, I just, mean, what is with him and this uh, the James? Why why you bring him here? A flesh-eating disease? Dude, this is real, by the way. This radio host looking over at the guy that he knows is a, a friendly with the radio station, probably friendly with the show. He's going, James, what's going on here? Help. Yeah, wh- what's going on? Why does he keep talking about me? Like, my, my audience knows about this. Yeah, did I lose a bet? <laughs> the fuck? He's, it sounds like my ex wife. Oh! <laughs> uh, hold on. Let me get back to John's great fucking joke. This doesn't make any sense, but he cracks himself up. Because you lost both your legs, and then you told me you had a flesh-eating disease. Okay, here we are. We're about back to me again. No, I mean, a, what is with him and this the a, James? Why why you bring him here? A flesh-eating disease that sounds like my ex-wife. Oh! Oh, oh, oh just take, take, take. I almost kill you. I get you that way. Christian, what does that mean? So, uh, yeah, I think that uh, what he's trying to say is uh, flesh-eating disease is uh, Susanna. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I think I've never that, described uh, a like, woman as a flesh-eating disease. It doesn't make yeah, sense. No, no, no. Oh, no, there's no logic to it. Yeah, you know? I mean, there's none. It's, uh, I, I yeah I heard you had you had children I didn't know you procreated no that's a sad thing. I was mar- I was married thirteen years three great years three. <laughs> <laughs> these are the fucking hackiest jokes and you he know doesn't if have John, any jokes left for the show tonight I know save something there and if if John just kind of like threw that out there as a quick throwaway line and kept going it'd be one thing. Yeah, that's the- but it's the stopping and getting everyone to acknowledge how funny you are and what a great comic you are. Oh, you get it? Like that is no, your when you work, only right? have the number of jokes that John has, you have to kind of like camp out on each of them and kind of like put your <laughs> yeah, arms right. at your side and be like, did you see what I just said? <laughs> so I, all right, so you've done Howard Stern. You've yes. done, done uh, the, the late night show. The Tonight Show. Oh, I'm sorry. The Tonight Show. Yes. With Jay Leno. Yes, you also sir. did Jay Leno show, too, right? Yeah, and then I was on the Jay Leno show as well. And, and you, you have voiced a couple of things. Now, I saw you on Wings. I, yeah. So what was, did you do on Wings? I was a guest star. I didn't know that. Yes, I was also on Baywatch. Nobody did. Baywatch. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. Baywatch <laughs> Nights. And then I've been what, in a what, bunch what, of what movies. You, you, well, wait a minute. Hold on. Back what? up. What did you do on Baywatch? Because I know nobody can see that. I got killed. I got shot. And then I had to play a good dead man that didn't breathe. Okay. So no body shots. No shirt oh, off. Oh, no. I had lines and stuff. No, I'm talking about shirts and stuff off. You know, no, no, Baywatch no, no. You don't want to see me with my shirt I, that's off. That's what I'm saying. I don't want to no. see you now. But well, I'm You might saying. have a six-pack. I got a keg. I ain't got no six-pack. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where you see that at. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to prop you up. Yeah, yeah. You know, okay. I don't want people thinking I was mean to you, but you and I have been like just kidding around off the air before we got on. I don't even know you, but I like you. You're no, all right. No, but his, um, but I swear to God, his legs charge. And why does your leg have to charge? You haven't answered. We are still on me. I told you this is about jo- uh, what's your name again? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Stuttering John. <laughs> Stuttering John. No, I know. Yeah, that. Uh, we're about you because I also understand you've done a lot of charity work too. Yes. You're not just this bumbling, you know, stuttering guy. No, no, I'm not with, a, with a bad attitude. It's no. a character. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the guy brings up charity work. John goes, yeah, yeah, I'm not Andy Cap, And so now he wants to try to change the conversation away from charity work. Because mm-hmm. John doesn't want Quickly. to talk about that. Yeah. Remember the comic strip, Andy Cap? Yes. Do you ever think about that name? No. Andy Cap. He's always b- bumping at the stuff. Lord, Andy Cap. 
Handicap, Andy. I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> These revelations are not that impressive. They're not as impressive as John thinks they are. Not at all. It's so great. I know. And the it's Wizard like, of Id really was exploring his super ego. I don't think you understand how <laughs> it was. Remember the honeymooners? Ralph Cramden. I love that. It's he on it, the phone it's, while we It's because he's crammed into his suit. He's crammed into his apartment. You know, he's a big fat guy in a small place. Cramden. You get the names always mean this something. This interview is going downhill now. Oh, I'm sorry. I want to know. I, I do. I seriously <laughs> want to know about some of the, the, the philosophy, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Oh, I was the keynote speaker at the National Stuttering Association Convention in Chicago. I heard a podcast that you were on with Stuttering Talk. I I've, heard that. I've that was helped good. plenty of stutterers, and I and I and I helped one to full recovery. So I congratulations. Yes, and 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 he helped a stutterer to full recovery. Once again, let me remind everyone: the way he did that was by telling him to bring a notebook with him on a date, so that he could write down what he wanted to say. And now. He doesn't stutter anymore. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. And I've... Um, Never know, tell you about how I turned water into wine. <laughs> I've done gigs for the Leukemia Foundation and, and, I mean, MS. His charity is always like, I've done gigs for, I did yeah. this thing. I You know, I, I got a, a small appearance fee for You're this right. organization. Yeah. Didn't pay well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I, I scammed everyone on my... My Patreon. I mean, no, I uh, with money for a beloved shadow. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Holy shit! He doesn't bring up the the chemo stuff yeah. for the beloved Chatter's yeah. beloved one. The most recent. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Strange. <laughs> People are speculating that this guy Ricky is a dabbler. He's part of the dabble verse, uh, uh, and that's why. So I don't think that's true. But if it is, then very impressive stuff, sir. Foundation, I mean, you name it. I always try and help. Well, Jimmy, always. a favor. So we're going we're gonna, to, uh, I got some commercials I got to play before the yeah. end of this hour. So hold on. Okay. Don't go nowhere. All right. Go go wash your hands something because okay. in your feet because they stink. <laughs> and we'll be right back with Stuttering John Mel- Melendez. Thank you very much. Did I say it right? Yes, it did. Good. Yeah. All right. Bless your heart. I, one more time. <laughs> say, say, it, say it one more time. <laughs> say it one I'll go back to jail. <laughs> Evidently, John got got like you know, so, you know, stalkers and stuff. Yeah, how did they get to me? <laughs> I don't know how they got to you, James. So we're back with yes. stuttering John. <laughs> so apparently, someone was trolling James, the club owner, during the commercial break or during the show or something. And Cardiff has revealed that that was him. So Cardiff, I don't know how you did it, but somehow you were able to troll stuttering John while he was on. This show. Well done, sir. Melinda. Observe and report, people. Observe and report. So many haters. And you know what? We can't even conduct the proper interview here because we, we've got stalkers calling Mr. Uh, Bartlett, James. I yes, got so yes, many sir. haters, you know, and, and that's just and, and that's just my family. It's just nonstop. They call me nonstop. Well, how many wives do you have? That's a club on song. I, I got one wife. I'm, I'm, I'm a Puerto Rican disappointment. I can say that I'm Puerto Rican. <laughs> well, why not? Jesus fucking Christ. All of these jokes have been recycled so many times, and they weren't funny the first time. Uh, That's the most offensive part to me. I mean, you Puerto, I can say you're Puerto Rican, too. I'm half Puerto Rican, half Danish. Oh, is that right? Yeah, I steal clogs. Um, so, anyway. <laughs> this is why the show is free. <laughs> Wow, another good, another zinger from James back there. Yeah, these jokes are not landing, and all the <laughs> in the world will not get anyone to think that you're funny, John. <laughs> the funniest that- joke so far is James saying that's why the show is free. Yeah. That got the biggest real laugh so far of this interview. Show, <laughs> it is tonight at Double Z, yes. James Larson's place, and uh, it's going to be at 8 o'clock. And, and like you said, it's free. Now, are you going to have any food or anything you're going to be serving? Food. He's got great food there. Yes, he does. But, but I'll tell you this. Um, uh, like, you know, I talk about this. It's Ricky. Yeah, I know. I talk about the time on the Stern show. Mm. And I talk about. Literally, finally, it's going to be about the bar. This is the guy who's paying for this show. He's probably paying for this airtime. He goes, what kind of food do you got over there? And Jack goes, you got great food. All right, so anyway, I was on the Howard Stern show. Yeah. Like, can the guy, like, throw out a special? Maybe there's a wing special or something? Like, 
What an asshole. John does not read a room at all. About my time on the Tonight Show, and I tell you, know, I, I talk about marriage. I talk about childbirth and child rearing. What you know about that? You don't know nothing about no childbirth. I got three kids. I mean, you know, yeah. I know you got three kids, but she the one popping it out. Yes, yes, all from the same wife. That's surprising for a celebrity. Yeah, that's proof. I don't play for the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave that one alone. <laughs> <laughs> so now, what else are you going to talk about? Or is it a secret? <laughs> no, I, I, I talk about everything, you know, and I, and, and I play with the crowd a lot. I have a lot of fun with the crowd. Oh, boy. That's how you know there's a hack comedian coming to town. What kind of material do you do? A lot of crowd work. <laughs> okay. Well, looking forward to that. You fucking... What about you two over there in the corner, you fucking... I play with the crowd. I play, buy me a drink. <laughs> it's I talk usually the about... best thing to do at a bar and grill is crowd work, by the way. Yeah, you know, oh, the, oh, yeah. the crowd yeah. is actually not seated directly in front of the stage. It's spread out throughout the restaurant. Right. The, the hardest thing to do at a show like this is get people to shut the fuck up. And John's going to go up there and immediately get people talking. <laughs> it's smart. Really good idea. You know, like all my experiences and all the celebrities that punched me and strangled me. And I've, I've watched you over the years on some of the shows, especially on Private Parts. I love that show. And I've watched you, and I was just like, uh, I thought that you... In Private Parts? Yeah, great show. Yeah, I saw you in Private Parts. Yeah. You mean that three-second part after the credits? Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty good. You were faking a lot of stuff. And no. couldn't find out you were not. No, I really do stutter. I mean, there's no... But you're, you're so well you're versed at it. You don't, you don't sound like the... Because I stuttered as a kid. I finally grew out of it. Yeah. But... And that's what's slowly happening to me. Although R's, V's, and M's still pose a problem. Where did you grow up at? <laughs> uh, North Mass people don't know. <laughs> same <laughs> okay, so Kai, still uh, same speech town impediment. As, same town as Seinfeld, the Baldwins, Steve Guttenberg... Well, we ain't worried about Ryan them. We're talking about you. I ain't I worried about them. They're not the one here. I know. Just saying. You're the special one. Oh, th- I, well, thank you. I'm, I think that's a compliment. Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> window liquor, but I mean. <laughs> he, he's, he's special. <laughs> well, give it a cookie and it'll behave. Good <laughs> stuff. So after you leave here, what's what you said you're going over to? Um, uh, uh, Rock 108. Oh. 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 You're not supposed to promote the other radio stations in the market, John. No. Again, this is shit you should know. Yeah. You were on the radio for 50 fucking years answering phone calls. I think you'd pick up on something like this. I'm sorry. Oh, I know you did not. Oh, Just, I, oh, it, I, oh, I know you did not. Know I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. No, that's, you know what? You hear first. That's what mattered yeah. to me. Yes, I came to you that's first. Right. That's Bartlett. right. That's right. I was Good talking recovery. about you. <laughs> <laughs> That makes up for it. Yeah, like you said. I'm giving you all my hack material. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I didn't save anything for the next show. Right. Your next venue. But, you know, you oh. can sit there and, and oh, throw out No, shade. I did not. De- I, I'm so sorry. God. I, I think what he literally meant was, all right, you're in Iowa for this weekend. That's cool. What else is going on in your life? And John literally has nothing. So he's just like, wow. Well, this guy's going to take me over to the other radio station. Yeah, and then after that, this I have no idea. This was probably news to the guys at Rock 108, by the way. Yeah. Like, he's coming here. Right. Uh, he's just, did, he's is... just driving around <laughs> every radio station in the market. No, I, I'm not going on there. I'm going to call in and request Bon Jovi. <laughs> I'm outside. You want me to come in? <laughs> look, look, I really apo- I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll comp you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I I do double Z's tonight, and then I do the uh, Daiquiri Factory in uh, Davenport on okay. Saturday night. And uh, you know, I I got I've done a lot of stuff here. I did a charity softball game here in Iowa, and um, you don't play. Oh yeah, I played. You play? I went one for four only because I bunted. Uh, you actually run <laughs> badly. Okay, I run badly with my leg on the charger. I'm talking you, about you. You would run faster than me even without those legs. Okay, then I'd I, be waddling. Yeah, yeah, but I am not. You know, like how it all falls apart. Like as soon as you turn fifty, everything. You know, I've 50. had two. I've had two strokes. I can't even feel my lips. Unfortunately, the girls that I kiss can. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but when you go to the zoo, I bet they can feel it. Whoa. Um. You can hear the word no, though, right, John? I know, I know you can't feel your lips, but you can hear them saying stop, right? 
<laughs> I had a stroke. But yeah, I had two strokes. Two, you know. It's I didn't just, know that either. Yeah, I had two TIAs. You know, which are mini strokes. Well, how are you feeling now? I. I, I feel mean, a I lot better serious, than yesterday. Ask James. I look like garbage yesterday. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, really? I believe it. I have to ask James. What? Senator General looked like shit because he was dehydrated from drinking all night? <laughs> I can't believe it. What does that look like? Yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> but they had to. Uh, but they had to pump me with a whole bunch of like hydration liquid. Cause... Okay, so that means you pay attention. <laughs> hydration liquid. <laughs> How do I get technical about it? <laughs> what, what I call it bumbo jumbo. <laughs> 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 What the doctor says, John. Yeah, and I have a cardiologist appointment at three. And we've got plenty of water if you want some water. I mean, it's. I I swear to you, Ricky, I'm not lying, but I once. I'm. This is clean enough. I once, because you know, I was having sex. I can say that, right? You, you said it, so I'm mean, yeah. gonna go ahead. And 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 I had to fake an orgasm because <laughs> I was getting so tired. Now, and, you get, now you're getting a little bit on the... Oh, okay. all right. And guys can't fake it. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Ladies have experienced. This and, girl and, knew and, I was faking it. And, and we done with that conversation. Oh, okay. Yeah. We done with that uh, topic right there. Uh, oh. Because I got to take control here. Of, okay. Because the child okay. wants to sit and talk about business. He shouldn't be talking about because he knows no better. Okay, so... <laughs> Just called John a child. Yeah. I told you to stop talking about that. Why are you still talking about that? Are you a child? That's fucking funny. Now, do you want some water? No. Okay, but you cool. I'm cool. Okay, because, I mean, you know, I just want to make sure that you're all right. Oh, no, I'm fine. All right, well, good. I appreciate that. Yeah, okay. but, you know, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm, I'm good. good. How are you doing? I'm I'm, I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> What's up with you? Oh, well, you know, I'm good. The music that sneaks <laughs> in. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely do a show with you, Ricky. I don't know about all that. Tonight's show nights. So look here, go tonight at... <laughs> Tonight at Double Z's, you're going to see Stutter and John. I don't hear no Stutter, so he ain't really bringing his folks Oh, up. no, no. <laughs> but no, Stutter and John stuttering. is going to be there tonight at 8 o'clock at Double Z's. That's James Larson's place that we love so much. And uh, can't wait to see you tonight. But thank you so much for being on the show Yeah, today. please come, man. I'm going to try to be there. You know, I, I have a uh, I have a wife, too, that, you know, is cooking Thanksgiving. She from the South. She's oh, oh, kind of oh, angry oh, if I'm not there helping out. Uh, uh, is she going to do the fried turkey? Notice... He called him out for not stuttering, and then all of a sudden, yeah. his stutter comes back on fried turkey. Was F one of those letters? I remember R, V, and M, and now all of a sudden he's stuttering on fried turkey? Not buying it. Yeah, I think that he's um, lying. No, we don't do fried turkey. We're traditional. Oh, okay. You know how that is. All right, well, listen, thanks so much for having me, and I'll be over tomorrow night for Thanksgiving dinner. You're, you're welcome. You're welcome. But you're going to be at Larson's. I'm sure things going to be better than my house. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. If we got to go to the food bank, we'll go to the food bank. Okay. <laughs> locally on, locally involved, Classic KMRY, we've got uh, Stutter and John Melendez here with us. Thank you so much, John. Thank you, Ricky. I appreciate your time. Double, Get- double Z's tonight. There you go, tonight, 8 o'clock. Get some water in your body. Thank you, sir. All right, and because the devil verse is so large and ever expanding, I am happy to say that I do believe a WATP listener will be at the show tonight uh, for Stuttering John. So we should get uh, either a report or some audio or some video or all three. Yeah. At the very least, a review. I can't wait to find so, out what kind of a shit show this is. <laughs> you said that uh, somebody had the theory that uh, Ricky might be a dabbler. I-, I think listening to that whole long extended conversation, I'm pretty sure that James, the guy with the club, is clearly a dabbler. He put out money to fly John to Iowa to do yeah. two gigs. And I think he's just like, yeah, I just I he knows <laughs> that uh, John is good for business these days. And uh, also... You know, I don't know how many of you listen to regular radio, but one of the most infuriating things is that when they have interviews, they're usually like recorded the afternoon before and they chop them up and they're really short. Uh, I think that now, oh boy, I understand why they do that so often. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, you get a guy like that in there who thinks that he's the show. It's like, you're not the show. If if you could actually run, I was just on, I, I mentioned this before, I was on Would You Kindly with E Rock and Brian Johnson. E Rock was telling me the story about when John had the afternoon show after the Howard Stern show on K-Rock. He did Noon to One, and he was the host of the radio show just playing music. Right. And he was so bad at it, 
He was so bad at following any type of directions or taking callers or anything he was supposed to do that they they eventually had to say, okay, we're just going to pre-record all your stuff and we'll program it. So, you know, John would take fake calls and be like, all right, this goes out to Melissa. She wants to hear Pearl Jam, whatever he had to say. And then they would play that for it. And he was so bad at that. He mailed that in. And he would mention songs that weren't part of their playlist. And, and then they're like scrambling, <laughs> oh, what do we do with this? That he eventually got fired from that job. And we're trying to track down the audio because no one seems to have it, even though E-Rock knows all the people who were involved in that show and worked on it. They're trying to track down when Stuttering John had the Stuttering John show on K-Rock. I'd love to be able to hear some of this. <laughs> there's a there's a middle point, too, because I lived in New York. And I've lived in L.A. for like 20 years. But I, I used to hear that show because you just leave the station on after Howard. Yep. And he, it, there was a point where I think that the on-air jock for the shift after after Howard, I think her name was Julie Slater. Yes. And then John got an hour of her time. She hated and him And then for at it. some point she was made to sit in the studio with John, yes. I think, so that he didn't have to push the buttons. And uh, I, what I remember of that was like this poor woman, you know, she has to like be in a room with John and uh, act like, you know, he's the air quotes talent. She hated him. So this is the other <laughs> thing that Eric was telling me because Eric knows her. And she was so pissed off that he got her airtime and did such a shit job and phoned it in and didn't give a fuck and acting entitled. I mean, he, he just got a paycheck for that working five minutes uh, yeah. Monday through Friday for the Howard Stern show. To just be a pretend jock on the radio. John has no idea how to do radio, as he proves time and time again. Now, you'll remember on the last episode, we had a whole segment on Stuttering John doing a morning show Mm -hmm. in Iowa because he had a comedy show at Double Z's Mm -hmm. in Cedar Rapids, Iowa that night. And um, I listened to the Uncle Rico show. They did a show Thanksgiving night where they listened to the entire stand-up set, and it's brilliant, and everyone should check that out. It was hilarious. So I'm not going to play the stand-up stuff. There's a part in it where he tells people to shut the fuck up. He's in the middle (laughs) of setting up a joke. He's like, shut the fuck up! It's like, you're in a bar and grill, dude. Always a gentleman. (laughs) Yeah, it's going to (laughs) happen. Anyway, he after the stand-up set, for some reason, the the owner of this bar thinks the stuttering John is still famous like he was in 96 or something. So he decides to do a QA and a with John, which is... Never a good idea. So I have some clips from that. Before that, though, we do have a new song parody that came in from Evil Dan. John went on a vacation far away. Iowa to the double Z. So many things that he wants to say. The Uber driver joke and the squeegee. John is gonna drink some course tonight. Getting dehydrated with the course tonight. Doing some promoting on the radio. Look, that guy has got no fucking legs. Gotta derail this entire show. Still don't understand why you're charging those legs. Getting dehydrated with the course tonight. Alone on Thanksgiving with my course tonight. All right, so the... He has some issues with rhythm, but uh, other than that, (laughs) give it A for effort on that one. Yeah, Lazy Shorts from uh, YouTube says that he got a copyright strike for putting up the Q&A section of of the show, because there were some dabblers there who were recording it, and uh, John was copyright striking his stand-up and his Q&A after the fact, which I'm not sure how he can own a copyright, but whatever. What do I know? Um, all right, so here we go. We're gonna do the Q and A. Oh, I gotta, I gotta say this though. He wraps up his show with the squeegee bit. Okay, I saw this on Uncle Rico, and um, there's no mic stand because it's not a comedy club. 
So in order to do his bit, he needs both of his hands. He has a guy come up and hold the microphone for him as he does his squeegee <laughs> oh, bit. So imagine how awkward that bit is to begin with. Yeah. And then you have a guy standing next to you very closely holding a microphone. As you're talking about jerking off onto your stomach. <laughs> John's whole set was all jokes we've we've already heard before. It was so bad, and everything's so dated now. There's so many references to Kanye that there's so much has happened since then. He's still talking about like Taylor Swift and Kanye. I was like, dude, there's so much has happened since then. You got to update your shit a little bit. Like, talk about the Jews a little bit so that we know that you're still paying attention to the world. It's fucking crazy. All right, now the Q and A starts. And uh, the owner is the person who's doing this Q&A. He's the super fan of Stuttering John. He starts off, he wants to know how many people have seen the movie Private Parts. Again, the movie that John does a three-second scene in after the credits. After the credits, yeah. 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 But you can tell that these are big Howard Stern fans out there in Iowa. How many of you out there saw the Private Parts movie? So Two. <laughs> yeah. The answer is two people saw private parts who are at this show. All right. So now John's going to tell us the first joke he ever wrote for Howard Stern. And I want you to notice how he slips in that he was a writer on the Howard Stern show. I'd be willing to bet nobody else would say that except for John. If we asked Gary Delabate or Jackie the Joke Man or any of those people that he worked with, Grillo, I don't think anyone would tell you that John was a staff writer. One of the first jokes I wrote to Howard. The, one of the first jokes that I wrote for Howard, because uh, I wrote that, was that uh, uh, when Gary was a kid, he was the only uh, kid whose tooth fairy showed up with a wheelbarrow. Because <laughs> Gary has big teeth, Doug. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> still good. It's still good. He still got it. He still got it. I love that he remembers that he wrote. That was one of the first jokes he wrote. For Howard Stern, pretty good one. Now, apparently, John and the James, the owner of this club, were had been hanging out the last couple of days. So he's going to set up John for questions that John wants to talk about. I don't understand the obsession with salary. I don't know why that's a discussion. Typically, when you talk to celebrities, one of the things you don't ask is, how much money did you get paid to do that movie? You know, it's like, that's not a thing that people are interested in. But with John, for some reason, they are. Now, we all know the financial struggles you had at WXRK, uh, 40000 you know, we heard it all on the radio today. But tell everybody, when you got to be the announcer, you finally got that payday. What was the annual salary for the Jay Leno announcer job? Uh, I don't know. It, let's just say I was making, I don't know, it's rate 400000 a year. <laughs> Doug comments. So it's painfully obvious that he was given a list of things. Okay, you need to ask me this question. Yep. And then you need. To, I'm okay. I have to assume that John was sleeping on this guy's couch in yep. preparation the, the two or three days before the show. Yeah. <clears throat> and he gave and he said, "I need you to ask me how much I was making uh, when I was the announcer for the Tonight Show." And do you notice how he was put off by the question? So now he's like, "Gotta ask me that," and he's like, "Oh God, I don't. Who is keeping track? Oh, three, four hundred thousand. Like, dude, you would fucking know if it was three hundred thousand or four hundred thousand. That's a big difference. That's a very big difference, right? I don't know. Could have been two fifty. Could have been five hundred. I don't know. Whatever. As if John doesn't obsess over money all the time. Yeah. Now he's trying to play it off. If I was to say your your last year as full time marketing, yeah, Carl, how much did you pull down a year? You'd say. It's none of your fucking business, no asshole. Shit. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, he's got to like throw out a number. All right. So now we go to the crowd questions. And this is kind of funny because John, at this point, he's done his whole stand-up set. He feels like his obligation is done. He is so put off by this whole thing. He's like, can this just be fucking over uh, now? He asked what the best and worst interview was. And before you go, if you guys don't follow um, Sutter and John, that was his job, was to go around to the red carpets and do interviews. I already told him all that. I wasn't here for that. You were right there, you fucking big head. He thinks I have like this large head size. He's got a head bigger than Jay Leno. I don't think it's that big. So they never get back to that question. John just dismisses it. What was your best and worst interviews with celebrities when you're on the Howard Stern show? I already fucked! talked about that asshole jesus john 
<laughs> Maybe reiterate at that. I don't know. <laughs> Where was this club at in Iowa? Uh, Cedar they... Rapids. Okay. I'm familiar. Yeah. Have you ever been to the Double J? It's a potato bar. <laughs> uh, so I have I have spent time in Cedar Rapids, and it does not surprise me at all that nobody there gives a fuck about John yep. and that that's the place that he would end up getting booked. Yeah. Yeah, the story checks out. Um, I happen to, well, I shouldn't say I know anything. I've been told mm -hmm. what the deal was to bring John out to Iowa for this long weekend to perform two shows that were both free to get into and do these radio appearances. The uh, the owner of this place paid for his flights and gave him three hundred and fifty dollars. Mm. That's how much it costs to get John away from his family, yep. his kids, his loved ones Thanksgiving. on Thanksgiving weekend. Yep. Three hundred fifty dollars. I'm I'm sure there's free cores in there though too. It's oh. not just the money. Yeah, there's probably other perks. Pro probably unlimited chives at this potato bar. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then you're gonna, you're gonna have to pay for the potato, but you can have all the fixings <laughs> yeah, that you all want. Right. <laughs> I didn't say anything about sour cream, asshole. Get your fucking spoon out of there. <laughs> all right. So then John's talking about Hank, the angry drunken dwarf, who we all know and love as a whack packer on the Howard Stern show. He died young. He was an alcoholic. Remember that John and MSCS Media didn't think you could die from alcohol. He questioned Tommy when they're like, when they're like, no one dies from alcohol. But apparently, at a certain point in his life, John knew this and tried to warn Hank. He was on the second bottle of vodka. We would do appearances sometimes. And I go, Hank, because he's a dwarf. I would say, I would, I would say, dude, stop drinking. You're going to kill yourself. He goes, fuck you. What about you? You drink. You're going to die too. So that was the, like, that's the best I can come up with. That's his best anecdote of Hank. That's pathetic. Yeah. <laughs> I told him to stop drinking so much, he's going to die. And he said, fuck you, you drink too. All right, next. Yes. Next question. <laughs> so this is the last question. And John is so put off by this that he just immediately dismisses this and ends the show. If you can do it all over, we'll wrap this up. If you can do it all over again, would you stay with the Stern show if you could go back? What an asshole. <laughs> what an ungrateful prick yeah. he is. He really he treats everyone like shit who's nice to him. Seems to be working for him, though. We laughed our asses off. <laughs> I have a song that came in from Tony Muskrat, and this is, uh, I always love the stuff that Tony sends us. We left our asses off that time I taped down the phone receiver, watching Scott try to say hi. We left our asses off that time Lighting off some <laughs> chasers uh, What a racist sales guy My kids ignoring me They're in the majority Carl's annoying me I'm gonna break his legs don't play my book, I'm the guy that drinks the cause. I'm not the all would Obama ban the word. You can't believe me. I lied when I said my daughter's with me in New York. I wear my dark Brandon t-shirt so I assault bartenders Don't you know I tip ten bucks I wear my 
my shirt inside out. My brain is marinating in causing whatever's in one's fridge. I drink to go to bed mixed with prescription meds. Earwigs crawl in my head. They're my closest friends. I have a real treat for us today, Mike. You've oh, picked really? a good time to be on WATP. Oh, excellent. Because we missed one of the beer on the balconies from October. October oh, 8th, fuck. there was a beer on the balcony with Doug Goodstein. Now, what's great about this episode is that Doug Goodstein's 20 minutes late. And my favorite thing about Stuttering John is when he has to fill time. He's not prepared to fill time. Why so. Why do you start the show, John? <laughs> Just wait 20 minutes. He ended, he ended up like calling him and going, Doug, are you going to come out? What's going on? So, all right. Let's, let's get into it here. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Beer on the Balcony, the special... Um, show I do for all my Patreon and YouTube members. Um, let me get my first beer of the day. Oh, let's go. Uh, little milk and loaf ultra. Yeah, yeah, mixing it up. It's got a wow. mix ultra with um, a few less calories. Yeah, welcome to beer on the balcony, the special uh. Show? Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't remember what this was. Should I use the word it, special? Do you think his first beer of the day is like a big event in the neighborhood? All the kids come running over. Like, Ooh, his first He's one. His first beer. Most of the kids aren't up that early, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll get there for his third or fourth, maybe. <laughs> but I don't have to snooze too many times. This is, so he talks about how he's drinking a McUltra, and he's got a McUltra story that he's going to tell us. Oh. Mike, this guy lives like a king. Okay. I'm so jealous of Southern John. That was my smoking beer. For the most part, I'd get a bunch of Michelob Ultras at the pub, sit on the balcony, and for some OCD reason, I would only allow myself one fresh beer for each smoke. So if I finished the cigarette, a lot of times... I would just put it in the beer and order another beer. I didn't give a fuck. That's how this OCD shit is not fun. <laughs> sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a real grind. What is smoking and drinking on the belly? Life. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's rough, man. Wow. OCD means you have to smoke cigarettes with every beer. <laughs> yeah. So this poor guy is trying How to chug Mandel his beer. Has lived a tortured life. Yeah, he has to chug this McUltra because if he finishes a cigarette, then he's got to get a new one and waste all the rest of that beer. You understand, right? Yeah, well. makes perfect sense. All right. I like that he acts like most people have nine or ten cigarettes with each beer. <laughs> Me, I know. I keep it to one. I wasn't following <laughs> that logic at all. How does he fare with hot dogs when there's six in a package and eight hot dog rolls in a package? <laughs> What happens then? All right. So this is what we're doing right now. I want to remind everyone mm-hmm. is highly illegal. And oh. again, I'll say it. Uh, this content is only for my Patreon and YouTube members. Any unauthorized use, for example, posting any clips of this show without the express consent of the stuttering john <laughs> podcast is strictly prohibited and uh it, uh <laughs> this podcast video is copyrighted any unauthorized use without the express consent uh-huh. of the stuttering john podcast uh-huh. is strictly prohibited i said that part it sounds familiar copyright the stuttering john <laughs> podcast all rights <laughs> reserved <laughs> Just caught in a loop. Yeah. <laughs> Let me explain the thing that bothers me the most to an internet full of people who are trying to bother me. Yeah. <laughs> you cannot use this content right here. Don't play this part of me saying you can't play this part. It really bothers me. 
Don't you miss when he fought back and was trying to stick it to you yep. by copywriting his material? Those uh, are the days, man. It, that was a lot of fun. And you know what? <laughs> what I like about John is that it didn't work. Not even close. Didn't even slow us down. But it didn't stop him from trying. <laughs> One of these days, they're going to listen. That's for sure. That's right. This is fun because during the roll call, someone asks him if he can get Pat Oswalt on his show. Uh, Andrea Brower, Robert Myers. Patton Oswalt, I've tried. He's liked some of my tweets, but he, I haven't been able to get him on. <laughs> He's liked some of his <laughs> tweets. You're halfway there, John. <laughs> I'm sure you get an A-list celebrity if he liked some of your tweets. Do you think if Patton went on Stuttering John's show, he would have to make a, a an Instagram post where mm. he's thoughtfully writing? <laughs> get your notebook you know, ready there, Patton. <laughs> You're going to be apologizing to a lot of groups of people over this one. <laughs> All right. Now, this is what I missed about Stuttering John and Stuttering John content. How easily flustered he is. Now, what John shouldn't do is read the chat. I don't know why this never occurred to him that he could just do the show with the chat not even on. I have StreamYard. You have to click on a certain thing to have the chat on if you want to see it. You can literally not even look at it. It's very depressing to me that Richard Ojeda has learned that, it seems. Richard <laughs> he doesn't Ojeda, have his chat on anymore. Richard Ojeda nuked his page. Does he have a new YouTube page? He goes live on Facebook, so it's mostly oh. his fans, and he doesn't look at the chat. So there, oh. goes, my, <laughs> there goes my well of content. Dude, because I was... So I, I have another episode from this day, October 8th, where Richard Ojeda's the guest, and I was going to grab that stuff, but we already had too much content. I know how much you love Richard Ojeda. Oh, so well, maybe I'll in the future <laughs> we can look at that. <laughs> All right. But, yeah. um, but I was surprised to see that Ojeda also nuked his YouTube page. Like It's still there, but all the videos are gone. Mm. Just like he, what John He does did. little like two-minute clips on YouTube sometimes where yeah. he's like, hey, Trump got in trouble today. And it's like, all right, we got it, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> still talking about Trump. <laughs> it's great. So John is so easily flustered here. Obviously, someone's fucking with him, and he can't handle it. So this is 30 seconds of us coming from John. Uh... <laughs> Uh, uh, and uh, stage dog <laughs> is here. Oh, <laughs> all right, okay. Uh, I thought he was gonna say something. <laughs> This is just during the normal roll call. Uh, <laughs> Stop reading that. It's fucking up your flow, John. It's not doing you any favors. Yeah. Uh, this is a little bit out of context, but trust me, it is still just as stupid as you would think it would be. Okay. And then I get all these people hating on me. Oh, John, you should do your research. I'm like, why? <laughs> 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 I'm like, why would I want to be informed? I just want to spout my opinion. Yeah, he got us there. <laughs> well done, why? John. People are like, John, you should put on an entertaining show. I'm like, why? Why would I do that? <laughs> okay, fair enough. So this was... He's, very um, deep. He's such a deep guy. He is. So this is still his birthday week that we're looking at. Remember he had his whole birthday. Oh, I remember that. Yes. He was very big on his birthday. Yeah. He had, he had uh, his big birthday show. We got all those super chats, which by the way, got him through, I think November, December, just the super chats <laughs> from his birthday show. And then he had his attorney on the great buck -a -buck -buck oh, yeah. to complain about losing his lawsuit on his birthday. On his birthday. <laughs> Why would they do this to me on my birthday? Do you Michael? think there's something to that? Yeah. And John, no one knows when your fucking birthday is. No, no one cares. <laughs> so then this is his big uh, celebratory weekend. And uh, he talks about some of the birthday wishes that he was getting. You know, I was thinking, I got all these birthday wishes from so many friends from The Tonight Show on Facebook. And it's just kind of nice. And uh, he lost me when he said on Facebook because literally it pops up like whose birthday it is that day when you log into Facebook. It's not like people are yeah. thinking of stuttering John all year. Like, oh, I can't wait to see how he's doing. <laughs> I I love the idea that an almost 60 year old man yeah. is bragging to us about his birthday wishes. Dude, it's insane. <laughs> it's crazy. 
that this is what he's excited about. That people said, "Hey, hope you're having a great day today on Facebook." This people has been going I barely on for over know or haven't seen in years. Right? Happy birthday! Exclamation point. Yeah, it's, isn't that crazy? No, it happens to everyone, John. <laughs> it's not that impressive. So you'll notice here that he's starting to itch his palm. He's got the palm itches going. Yes. And uh, so then he starts drinking. He's still reading the chat while he's drinking, which is impressive. I'll give him that. He can't take his eyes off the chat. And someone <laughs> asks him about his itchy palm. Cool. Uh, sack, does your palm itch? Well, first of all, yes, yeah, sometimes it does. I hear that means that so you're he's already confrontational. To... <laughs> first yeah. of all, yes, yeah. sometimes it's first of all. Yeah, good point. Does your palm itch? It's a yes or no question. Yeah. First of all, so th- listen to what John says here. This is hilarious. Yes, yeah, sometimes it does. I hear that means that you're supposed to get money. I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't. That's not what that means at all. Huh? Have you ever heard of your palm itches? You're going to get money. Uh, yeah, so we're making this deal, right? Mm? Well, <laughs> Scratching away at your palm. Guys, bad news. Today I uh, stepped on a crack, and I think that's probably going to break my mother's back. <laughs> so I'm not having a great day today. Yeah. Get your palms out, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so John's been eyeing this one guy. I've been, I've been noticing how distracted he is. And he could spot a troll from a mile away. He's not going to let him get away with it. I seriously doubt that Wes is legit. He he's he's showing signs of not being. So one false move, and it's gagia. Whoa! <laughs> Bring it down to street level. <laughs> <laughs> I got an eye on you, sir. If you say something that other people find hilarious, it's gagia for you. Yeah, I thought gagia was gonna friendly. Bring in, like, the, he's gonna bring in the high council to determine if this man is legitimate. <laughs> All right. And one of the things that John does when he's trying to fill time, and it's one of my favorites. I mean, there's there's the greatest hits of Stuttering John in the top five, maybe the top three, is listing out the resume. Nothing beats John when he's talking about his old resume. 15 years on the Stern Show. Really, 16. Uh, 10 years on, uh, on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. 26 years. Pretty good. Damn good ride for some stuttering. Short. Fat Puerto Rican with smelly feet, wouldn't you say? I can actually include more things. Uh, Alcoholic. (laughs) Dumb. I have to ask. He says (laughs) He says 15 years on the Stern Show and then adds... Really, 16. Really, 16. As if someone is shorting him. Like, you know, that was a strike shortened season, but I think it still counts. <laughs> what does yeah. that mean? Really, 16. Yeah, I was in a coma. 94 didn't count for some reason. <laughs> I blacked out that year, but it's still, <laughs> it's in the books. So bizarre. All right. So, John is the best at everything, as we know. Yes. Very impressive show business career. He's even the best at this. Look. They did a brain scan of me. They said they'd never seen a brain who had OCD that extreme in the frontal lobe. <laughs> All the synapses. I mean, and granted, it, it, it usually happens to really smart people. But, I mean, it's awful. He's not saying it to be funny. No. He legit <laughs> believes that he's the best at OCD. Yeah. And that OCD only happens to really smart people. They bring in the paddles. We need to revive this man. <laughs> I like that he tried. I've never to, seen anything like this. I like that he tried to come up with something intelligent. You know, the synapses. Sure. Is that what you're seeing in a brain scan, John? The synapses. Okay. Is it labeled OCD? <laughs> oh my God! The OCD strands are taking over his mind. <laughs> they said that they could probably remove the D, but the O and the C would have to stay. <laughs> The way he talks about his OCD is like, I've never heard, and believe me, I'm tapping into the disabled community. Yeah. Uh, people in wheelchairs don't talk about the, the hurdles they've had to overcome. The way he talks about his OCD. Oh, it's debilitating. And Mike, <laughs> it's the reason why he's an alcoholic is because, of his, yeah. is because of his OCD. You know, and when those, oh, John likes to drink beer. Well, 
fucking guess what? It helps the OCD. It does. Uh, it takes it down a notch. I don't really like to drink the beer. <laughs> just for my OCD. Uh, I, man, I, I, I hate drinking. <laughs> thanks to my neighbor Juan. Gave me these true. Oh, okay, this is the best. So he, he finishes his McUltra because we're all thinking, like, where's the Coors Light? Yeah. So apparently that was just a random McUltra that he had. And now he's busting out the Truly. And this is where he explains that he had to borrow it from his neighbor. This is an amazing story right here. Gave me these Truly Wild Berry. So I can still do my, I, I guess we'll say, berry on the balcony. So oh. proud of himself with that Thank one. God. Pause for laughter. Thank God we keep that branding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. So he has to drink because of his OCD. Yeah. I have to drink because it makes me better at darts. Oh. You know what I mean? Like we all have a reason <laughs> yeah. for having to drink like eight or ten beers. <laughs> yeah, I have to drink because it makes the pain go away. We all have our reasons. Right. I understand. It makes me look better in the mirror. <laughs> there was, the, I think, the best uh, clip involving Juan ever is when John was like, I ran out of beers, so I had to run over to Juan's house and said, buddy, do you have any beers? And he says, I have some seltzers. And I said, it'll do. Yeah. yeah. This is like, fine, I'll allow you to give me seltzers, This Juan. is hilarious because, so this is the next day. This is Saturday. He still has some seltzers left over from last night when he had to borrow those beers. This is, this is hilarious. You know, it's weird. I fucking thought I bought a case of beer last night. You did? But I didn't. <laughs> and I smoked some weed. I trimmed it. And then I had, I think I had like two beers and I had one left and I forgot. Oh, that's right, Robert. Thanks for reminding me. Rest in peace, Judy Tenuta. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Way to honor her memory. Yeah. That show is the best, isn't it? I thought I bought a case of beer last night, but I didn't. How, how, how did you said that before? How, Nobody. How, that's crazy. How do you misremember that? <laughs> I couldn't remember if I bought a six pack, a case, or none at all. <laughs> totally slipped my mind. Could you imagine being this poor fucking neighbor and John comes over, knocks on the door? Yeah, you know, what can I help you with? I'm down to two beers. Say no more. I would give him my rubbing alcohol, my <laughs> scope. <laughs> when you hear that knock on the door, you know it's never good news. No. It's never, hey, buddy, I'm coming to replace the beers I took. I'll bet his <laughs> knock slurs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Let's do, uh, let's talk about how amazing the Howard Stern show was when John was on it. He's going to start reminiscing about the times. When he would open up the newspaper, and every article would be about Stuttering John. <laughs> you know, there was a time in New York City that every, everyone was writing about yeah. Stuttering John. With his, with his sidekick, <laughs> Howard. <Yeah. laughs> this is, guys, there's, there's younger people watching. This is pre-9-11, all right? There was nothing going on in New York City except for the Howard Stern show and Stuttering John shenanigans. And that's how anyone was writing about. You know, and, like, you know, as I was waiting to... To let Howard in, and I just go, you know, and I'm, you know, and I'm just reading, and then there's page six, and there it is. Stuttering John interviews uh, Burt Reynolds and pisses him off, and Burt grabs his microphone. Stuttering John gets thrown it's down flight of stairs by Eric <laughs> Goldstein's bodyguard. Stuttering John punched by Raquel Welch. Stuttering John strangled by Lou Reed. <laughs> It was it was the golden era of the Stern Show. I love that his version of the golden era is him getting beat up by celebrities. Yeah, everywhere it goes. I was pissing off everyone. I was so obnoxious. Like, yeah, we know, John. If you're someone who became a fan of John post Stern, you're like, oh, that was on the Stern Show. It does. I didn't hear Howard's name mentioned once. <laughs> right. Stuttering John and Friends was crazy back then. <laughs> he didn't know yeah. what he was going to get up to. <laughs> oh, look at this headline: Stuttering John answers phones. <laughs> Imagine you're flipping through like the Yankees are in the World Series and the front page is Stuttering John meets Burt Reynolds. <laughs> Stuttering John lets Beetlejuice through the line. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. So then finally, Doug Goodstein arrives. So I've only tagged with the first 20 minutes of this show. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, it's just a gold mine. And um, of course, John has to start off by insulting him. But not just him, another person who's not even there. 
immediately. Are you good? Yeah, yeah, this, this is the camera I wanted. What's up? Every time I had, like, I had Scott the engineer on, here's the engineer and he can't get his audio to work. I'm like, and now I have the fucking, now I have the, now I have the, the television producer. He can't get his camera to work. I know. No, it's working fine. Here we go. What's up? And also, the fact that John would call anyone out for having tech problems is so enraging to me. Look at this asshole. Can't even figure out the internet. Yeah, yeah I am looking at an asshole. Okay, I figure out the internet, John. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> we see Welcome back to another episode of Isn't My Guest an Asshole? <laughs> <He's done good. laughs> Schmuck on the balcony with stuttering John Melendez. Holy hell, everybody. That was something else. Oof. That was rough. I think what we need right now is the old palate cleanser. Trademark Chili Incorporated. All right, let's get back to beer on the balcony with Doug Good's scene. Because before we last left you, John brought on Doug and started making fun of him for technical problems. And now this is fun because John likes to pretend like he was such good friends with Doug Goodstein. Now, Doug Goodstein was the guy working the camera a lot of the times when John would go out and do his celebrity interviews. So they had projects together they would work on. All right. So John likes to talk about, man, we were just best of buddies. And Doug lays it out for what it really was. We always just had, like, a good time together, you know what I mean? Yeah, we were definitely, uh, we had good times, we worked, and we spent plenty of time socializing personally with families, dinners, me buying you lots of dinners, me loaning you lots of money, me loaning you more money, me paying for your cabs, me paying for your clothing. Yeah, absolutely. Great friendship. (laughs) <laughs> you know that's not true I know, John, of course not I'm totally missing but, Just the, uh, the first six ones, not the seventh one. Yeah, so Doug is saying I didn't buy any clothes He didn't buy any clothes, right, he didn't buy John's clothes But he did all of those other things And I know that's true And John likes to laugh and I'm like, yeah, okay if you say so. John thought he was the talent He was the one that had the name recognition So when they would go out It's like, come on Doug, I'm hanging out with you, man You can't grab dinner for me? What the fuck? By the way, I don't have any money for cab. For the cab fare. This is so typical. How awful do you think Stuttering John's sloppy seconds were just to go hang out with him? The Uh, girls that would have been interested in him back in the day? Yeah, it's not great. It's not a great scene. Yeah. By the way, this is every other conversation he has with a girl. Do you know Jackie Martling? Yeah, yeah, I I work with him. Can you introduce me to him? All right. (laughs) (laughs) I see where this is going. Okay, so now they're going to reminisce about, and we've talked about this before, for a little while, John was given the afternoon slot after the Howard Stern show on K-Rock to do a whatever, either playing music, but it was a lot of like call in and requests. It was called Out to Lunch. Right. And the ratings plummeted from what I understand. God, it did they. People hated it. And all he was doing was playing the music that the music director picked for him, and it still plummeted. Sometimes. After a lead-in from the biggest show on planet Earth. Sometimes he wouldn't even play the music he was supposed to play, and that's why he got fired. Oh, he's a rebel, is he? Yeah. But this is great, because now they're going to reminisce about how much fun that was. And I, I honestly, after hearing this, I'm surprised that the network didn't want him to uh, to be on Lager. I used to love when I had my uh, out to lunch show. I had my I had, I had my radio show, and then you would call in as the as like the angry Jewish guy who was mad, or oh, I'd have you request like Pearl Jam or something. Yeah. Here, here, let's recreate it. Hello, you're on the air. Hi, John. I love your show. Will you play some Pearl Jam at my after my wife Pearl? <laughs> <laughs> Die to myself. Would you play some Alice in Chains for my cunt wife? <laughs> Her name's Martha. It's Martha. <laughs> but she's in chains right now. <laughs> See, wow. That's not funny at all. This is what was trying to follow the Howard Stern show. And he's he's actually acting like that was a good bit. 
that they did. Remember when I used to have you call it? Because they're in New York City on K-Rock. He can't get regular callers. He had to get the, the guy from Howard TV. I just want to say thank you <laughs> for doing this segment right now. You're welcome. I forgot how much I enjoyed fucking Drop the Needle Anywhere. Yeah. That fucking face. I know. Oh, no. Tr- trust me. <laughs> that fucking face. This is the era of Stuttering John, and it's too bad that it ended when it did because he was doing the beer on the balconies where he's pretending that there were these comedy shows where everyone was just laughing their balls off. And in order to pretend that, he has to laugh so hard at everything, even though no one's laughing with him. I just want everybody to know that uh, Carl's fall from grace is going to be terrible. He's going to be doing a podcast going, remember when Stuttering John was really bad? Yeah. That was great, wasn't it? Let me play a clip of me playing a clip of him when he sucked and I was good. Glory days. (laughs) I know, it's going to be fun. Oh, God. It's going to be fun. I always always got Google to fall back on, Vinny. I got fucking Who wants to show up on the top of the first page, huh? Hey, we can help you out with that. All right, what I love about John is the Beer on the Balcony is an interview-style show, and he is a phenomenal interviewer. He always asks the best questions of his guests. What was the thing that I got mad at you about on the Star Show? I don't remember, but there was one time I got mad because I guess you didn't tell me I had something on my face. I don't know. I, I, I was trying to remember. Do you remember? Like, I said you set me up because I went in there and I had something on my face, or I don't I have no idea. Uh, I love that story. <laughs> why even bring it up? Remember Do you remember the time? time that I was a slob? <laughs> remember that time I was really pissed off at you? Like, no. Why do you want me to remember that? <laughs> I don't. If you want to, like, air some grievances, we could do that right now, but you don't even know what you're mad about. So what's the fucking point? Wow. Yeah. It's pretty great. All right. Do you remember the time... I was mad at you because I didn't wash my face yeah. and you didn't tell me. Yeah. We laughed our asses off. <laughs> That's basically what he just said right there. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking working with this man had to be the absolute worst experience ever. Well, the good thing. He's screaming because he forgot to wash his face. <laughs> oh, he, he still holds a grudge about it. He didn't remember it, but he remembers being mad at Doug Goodstein. He's still as mad at them. Do you realize how psychotic that is? <laughs> I do, yeah. Does John know? <laughs> he doesn't know that at all. He thought that was going to be a good anecdote. <laughs> yeah. Remember that time you uh, let me look like a fool? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Doug, fill in the blank. Doug Goodstein uh, really sucked that day that he did this. Go. Now you go. <laughs> yeah, Doug, let's see what you say. <laughs> All right, so what I love about John is, aside from being able to ask all the best questions, he's also an amazing storyteller. So they're talking about Richie Wilson here, another guy from uh, Howard TV. I was doing I was doing stand up at Side Splitters in Tampa, and he stayed for like two shows, or he came back. He went he went to one, then came back the other. And I do this thing about, you know, I, you know, I do this bit about my interviews. He goes, John. So while he's in the audience, he goes, how about OJ? I go, I interviewed OJ? He goes, yeah, you don't remember? I go, no. What did I ask him? He goes, you asked OJ if he would sign your knife. I go, oh, I don't remember that. <laughs> oh, crap. Yeah, you were probably too terrified to, <laughs> to retain it. Just... I blocked it out of my mind. It over. Oh, my God. This is now a story that John has been telling Mm -hmm. without the part that Richie reminded him of this. He keeps saying he does it in his fucking act. Yeah, I asked OJ to sign my knife and he said, oh, I brought my own. Now, that didn't happen. I've had numerous people reach out to me and say that anecdote never happened. Now it makes even more sense because Richie Wilson told him it happened. How would John get an interview with OJ after the murders? It didn't happen. Any conversation they ever had with O.J. from the Howard Stern show was long before the murders. O.J. wasn't on red carpets after that, going around just fucking fielding <laughs> questions. With a knife. If anyone, yeah, if anyone remembers, and he didn't have a good sense of humor about it either, he wasn't going around. He I was, was like, on the red carpet for Batman Returns, and when O.J. <laughs> came walking up. Yeah, it wasn't the Hello Twitter world O.J. that we have today. After he got off from that, there was a lot of bullshit heading towards him that he was trying to escape the limelight from. To be fair, though, O.J. was kind of around. He was just playing golf and shit. He wasn't fielding questions from stuttering John Melendez. I can guarantee you that. 
So I thought that was funny that he because they brought it up. The reason why they got into that conversation is Doug was going. You know, he remembers everything that happened on the Stern show because because you know John's going. Remember this? Remember this? And Doug's like, I don't know. Because you know Richie Wilson remembers everything. And Chuck goes, Oh yeah, that reminds me. Richie told me some bullshit made up story once, <laughs> and now I pretend that's true. <laughs> okay, cool. It's weird. Doesn't even fucking make sense. Nice to see you, Doug. All right, so now John's going to say his favorite memory with Doug is when they interviewed James Lobo, and he was an Apollo 13 astronaut. Now, John has a way of telling this story that only John knows how, because John, you know, he's the guy who's behind the mic. He's in front of the camera, not behind the camera, like Doug. So he has to scold Doug for ruining this amazing anecdote that he has. But uh, there he is, you know, nice old man. And there I am asking him, well, you know, you have a pee in your fucking space, you know, in your space, you know. Uh, you know, it was, just, it was so childish. It's just the words of those questions that were written. Did you ever make a duty? Did you ever run, you know, did you run a batch? Oh, that was the last one. So EP, you know, I, well, just like. But hold on, Doug. I'm building up to that. So, oh, run off a batch. That was going to be the punchline. Like to an my, elaborate story, <laughs> you asshole. Like my batch. I was running up to it. <laughs> I know. But I mean, all these questions are the same thing. You ever piss in your thing? You ever shit in it? You ever right. jerk off in it? And so Doug's just like, yeah, we asked a lot of immature questions. This is just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I was getting there. <laughs> Slow down. We're going to milk this one. How many times in his life do you think? He's been in like around parents and like PTA shit. And he's like, remember me? I'm the one who asked so and so, so and so, and people just stare at him, yeah. horrified. Yeah, he still thinks that he's just like, oh yeah, it's great, John. We love that about you. He's like, no, that's inappropriate. Yeah, no, <laughs> he has no <laughs> fucking filter or way to judge this shit. I have a friend whose daughter went to school with John's kids. I should ask him. If any of that kind of shit ever happened, I doubt he's ever at a PTA meeting. Actually, now we take that all back. I think John was actually involved in his children's lives. Probably not. Where Where is your father today? Uh, the third row of the Tonight Show. <laughs> <laughs> he scored good tickets, huh? Well, no, I mean he actually works there, but that's where they put him. So, <laughs> oh. does he have a plus one? No, he's on the show every night when they do the audience scan of the crowd. <laughs> yeah. He waves at me. By the way, I want to point out, Kiki Loco says, Gary Garber interviewed OJ after the murders, not John. So that would make sense that Richie Wilson would remember that he probably was there. There probably was something that happened, but that was not centering John, who was a part of that. Because any conversation with OJ happened long after John was gone. Po- 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 poetic license. <laughs> You're right. That's my yeah, story yeah, now. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's like with a true story, you combine two people into one because you just got to move things along. Sure. Sure. Yeah, I talked to OJ. I talked to the, every president. Why not? I interviewed Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> okay. So now John's going to show Doug how to tell this story. The uh, then, then comes the question Did you ever run off a batch in space? And space then you space. like couldn't even hold you like ah. <laughs> and I go and I saw cracking up and I go, I'm sorry, he's laughing. And James goes, I'm not laughing. And he walks away. <laughs> yeah. This fucking guy. <laughs> yeah. This fucking guy. Remember that time I asked a celebrity a ridiculous question and he walked away from me? Yeah. That's what always happens. I really think the beer on the balcony. Could have been really fucking amazing. It is amazing. If the guests that they gave him were people he never met before. If every time the guest was someone he had never met before, this show would be fucking ten times funnier. Because it would just be Jod exposing himself to them for the first time. All of these people all sit there and play member when with him, member when with him. Well, but just like just complete strangers, I think would have made the show really interesting. Well, okay, maybe not complete strangers, but you're right. Because when he had that uh, movie critic, was it Gene Sisko? Yes. And and he was like trying to, he's like, oh my gosh, you got to see this thing in Paul Fiction. He's like, okay, It wasn't John. Sisko. He's long dead. Yeah, who but was it? It was uh, just the guy who worked with them. Was, yeah, I can't think of it. And uh, he was the dude who replaced uh, the, the oh, fucking we, Ebert. He replaced Ebert. Here we go. <laughs> Roper. Richard Roper. Richard Roper. Okay. Yeah. I got that. That makes sense. So, uh, yeah, he had Richard Roper on and he just was talking about all the things that he knew but, to try to make but himself what you were sound just, good. What you were just explaining is exactly what happened where the guy's looking at him like, why are we talking about this? What's going on right now? 
Because John was just trying to make himself look famous and smart in front of him. If somebody, if they John... call it a cold open, Richard, it's it's the <laughs> thing before the credits on a TV show. You know, like on Saturday Night Live. Yes, yes, we know, John. Jesus Christ. And I told Quentin Tarantino <laughs> Cut. to just slow it down a little bit and stick to the script. I told him, you can't keep rambling on and on, Quentin, you idiot. We don't need your improv here. <laughs> I'm the writer. Um, he is magical with people that he doesn't know. I know. Many. You're talking to the guy who discovered this first. I know. It's amazing. Okay. I love it. I'm sorry. I just can't stand like these things with the people who know him. Just know. humor him. Well, it's right. so boring because this conversation has already happened 34 times. Right. Like, he gets on uh, Grillo or Doug Goodstein or these guys who will just keep coming back and they don't have any more stories to tell. It's like we got it. Yeah. Okay. They. Be- I mean, they don't ever tell any stories anyway. John tells the stories back at them and they yes. go, "Oh yeah." I mean, we're scraping the the bottom of the barrel here. Where he's like, "Remember that time I was mad at you?" It's like, "No, I." <laughs> Jesus Christ, I don't know, man. But what I like is when John gets distracted. So in this clip, he's going to get distracted by his hard seltzer because he was drinking a berry-flavored seltzer. Remember, it was uh, Barry on the Balcony? He came up with that, Witty. Oh, he was good. So watch this. He takes a sip, and he's just like, wait, what the fuck is going on here? It sounded exactly like he said. This is where we are, the Stern Show? So I don't know. That, that, that I don't know if you remember this one, Doug. This was, uh, wait, uh, oh, that was wild berry. This is black cherry. Okay. Um, <laughs> Did you see that? He's like, no, dog, I don't think What is that flavor <laughs> in my mouth? It's not Coors. <laughs> you know, what, down, were the seltzers on sale? Yeah, you know, look at both cans. Like, wait a second. <laughs> you can't fool me. <laughs> Do you think that he bought the seltzers because he was trying to cut back a little bit? No, he got them from one. He said that. Earlier in the show, oh. he had to borrow them from his neighbor because he ran out of beers. He thought gotcha. he bought a case. Gotcha. I thought, I thought he bought a case of beer. Yeah. He's still figuring out the technology. <laughs> <laughs> it's all confused. All right. This is a great anecdote. This is a perfect example of what you're talking about, Minnie. Okay. Where he just tells stories at people. So he's very proud of himself for this one. I don't know if this one aged so well. When I think back to the Howard Stern show, there are bits that are legendary and then there are bits that it didn't age so well. This might be one of the ones that I'd leave off of the best of real if I were John. But I kept asking him, douchebag says what? And 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 then I was like, bull sex says what? Oh, Jesus. And, and and he kept on going, what? And again, <laughs> you're laughing, you fucking and here's a war hero. And you're oh, laughing man. your ass up. And and I keep going, like, I'll ask him a question and I'll go, Ball Sack says what? And he kept saying <laughs> Oh, and it went on for like five minutes. Oh my god! And we were both fucking laughing. Our, that's I think that's why that we became so close because because we Drink. had the same sense of humor, and we're there doing this shit, and we know we're fucking so fucking raw. <laughs> we laughed our asses off. Oh god! I laughed my ass off. Three times of that story. And then I said, douchebag says what? And I said, ball sack says what? I mean, these are pretty good jokes. At right? his funeral, someone's going to, the only thing they're going to be able to say is, well, he did laugh a lot. <laughs> That's like all they're going to be able to say. Well, it seemed like he was having fun. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> good for him. All right. This is uh, the last clip I have from this. And uh, this is just, again, John brings out the greatest hits. And a lot of times in comedy, you want the act to be new. If you've already heard the joke, not as funny, the second time, third time, fourth time. Tell that to Jeff Heisen. Tell that to Jeff Heisen. To his 14 YouTube subscribers. Oh, look, a new set. But somehow, oh, he's going to have 15 at the end of this. I'm getting out of there. Somehow, (laughs) Stuttering John is able to say the same thing over and over again, and it kills. He's so great at it. Let me ask a question, Doug. Like, how do you react, and how do you think, like... When you saw Triumph the Insult, you know, dog, and, 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 and Ali G, Borat, the puppet. Chip, or even Between Two Ferns, right, with Zach Galifianopoulos, did you ever go like, hey, we did that way, way before. He's got- he thinks he's fucking Zach Galifianakis now, too? Holy shit, the balls on this guy. All right, so he's asking Doug. He wants to get Doug to agree with him. 
Now, listen to the way he goes about this. I would say, if I were, uh, what was his name? Darrell. Darrell Brooks. Darrell Brooks. Yeah. I would say objection leading the witness on this one. And then you'd Jim stare. Go like, <laughs> hey, we did that way, way before. These guys are fucking doing our. These guys are doing what we did back in the day. Like, because I do. I go, hey, that Triumph the Instant Dog is just me with a puppet. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. And you listen, as long as you know that, or you you're sure that you're the innovator of it and creator of it, which you know, I guess you could figure out by dates. Who cares? You know, what does it say? Imitation is the best form of flattery. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, <laughs> very diplomatic answer Great from Senator Pussy. You have my vote. <laughs> very diplomatic answer from Doug Goodstein. Great response to yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. you're not going to go along with it. Fine, you and your logic. <laughs> I guess we'll move on then, you <laughs> asshole. Way to ruin that bit. I just think it's hilarious to me that a guy like Doug Goodstein wouldn't say, "Well, John, this shit's been good." First of all, you didn't even create that. That was Howard's idea for you to go out and ask these questions to people. And Howard didn't invent that either. This has been going on for a very long time. And Zach Galifianakis between two ferns? What are you, fucking insane? Yeah, not the same. It's not even close to the same thing. Oh, yes. geez, not the same thing. Oh, God, what he... an idiot. <laughs> he thinks that the fucking newscasters are fucking ripping him off. He sees <laughs> right. someone talking to somebody on the street with a microphone. And this fucking wet brain of his... Yeah, General GK and the Charles Discord. Mayweather from Channel 4 stole my act. They posted it on here. Steve Allen, man, on the street. I mean, this shit's been going on long before Howard Stern and Senator John were doing it. And the fact that no one will tell John to stop comparing yourself or being upset about Ali G and Borat is insane to me. Why wouldn't one person be like, John, you sound so stupid when you say that. You have to stop saying that. Those are very talented people who made movies around this shit. That would involve people who care about him listening to what he has to say. That is correct. Yeah. All right, I want to talk about uh, the return of Stuttering John to social media. I was geeked because I still follow uh, Stuttering John. He's not blocked me yet, so I get to see all his fantastic tweets. And he was gone for you know a big chunk of late November, early December. But, man, he came back, and he came back. In force. He did. So he saw Avatar 2 and he loved it. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks it brought a really powerful message to yeah, us. Yeah, it's about whales. It's about killing whales. <laughs> Fucking those greedy assholes who just want to turn a profit. Capitalism is bad. I also want you to know that uh, I'm mad at Republicans and Donald Trump did not pay taxes. Yes. There mm -hmm. is a lot of talk about that on here he retweeted someone talking about things jesus was and things jesus was not which is always good to remind people around christmas jesus time. was a mexican <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that photo of jesus and what he actually was looks very mexican to me it could be yeah wrong. that dude played bass for metallica i think <laughs> he still does oh, all right it's pretty good yeah. <laughs> It is my brother's house. He puts a lot of Christmas lights on. Look. Oh, yeah. He's uh, he's my brother Roy Clark Griswold's house. And his Get joke it. is the space station uses his house as a directional device. Pretty good. We laughed our asses off. Pretty we good. laughed our asses off. <laughs> Here's another funny one. He says it was nine degrees here in New York last night, not including the wind chill. I was shaking more than Donald Trump Jr. in withdrawal. That's because Donald Trump Jr. does coke. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> All right, this is great. He he has the playbill to the Book of Mormon, and he says what a great show it was. But he has to point out the fact that he paid for his ticket because he writes in there worth every penny. Like, worth who every writes that? <laughs> that I spent on my own ticket in that show at Broadway. <laughs> he brought a giant jar of pennies. <laughs> Uh, oh, then he posts, um, so Shuli's got a gig coming up, and someone put Shuli's bio, you know, the comedy club put Shuli's bio on their website, so you can read it, and John writes, pot calling the kettle black, I think though, glory days, one credit of note, lol. First off, glory days is my thing, asshole, not Shuli's. <laughs> Just want to point that out. I hate that I have to keep saying, like, I know you're mad at Shuli, but you should be more mad at me, but whatever, <laughs> it's fine. But what's so funny about 
this bio is like, well, Shuley gained notoriety and fame through the Howard Stern show, but it also talks about all the other things he's done. Jay Thomas show. He's been on comedy tours. He's doing the uncle Rico show now. And of course, you know, the, the BS show that he has and miserable men. So it's got all that stuff in this bio and John acting like, because he has two credits. Anyone would care about like, okay, you win two to one. Good job. I have more. <laughs> I was also in dudes. Where's my car? Oh, right. So he posts this, picture on here december 23rd is just a uh still from the movie where he's behind the two stars of the movie it just says dude all right we remember john you had a fucking cameo in a movie i just want you to know that i and ashton quit your friends <laughs> yeah we get it very good i am i am glad that john's back on um twitter because he likes to post pictures of him drunk with his friends to prove that he drinks with his friends. Like, no, John, we know that. <laughs> no one no one is saying you don't drink with your friends. No one's ever said once. They're like, you know what I don't think John's doing is going to bars and getting loaded with people. Oh, he looks shit-faced in that picture, too. He looks terrible. He you looks know, like he's 15 deep, and I believe the Shuli assassin is behind his right shoulder. Yes, correct. So this is the guy who came to rough up Shuli with his cane over here. John's got a pint of Coors Light. Actually, that's not a pint. That's a 20-ouncer. If not 24, it be, I drink it. Yeah, it's almost empty. And you can tell John's holding court because he has to be in the middle with his arms around everyone. Like, yeah, they're holding him up. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're carrying him out. They're actually carrying him out. And they're like, hey, I got a camera. What? <laughs> Let me borrow that cane. <laughs> These are my friends since high school. Yeah. Oh, I know. That's the other thing, too. He's so proud of himself. But I, this is this is good. This means that, you know, if he's ramping up the Twitter activity, he's got to be getting ready for this January comeback, right? All right. I don't think so. I don't think he's coming back in January. I hear tell he's oh. postponing it even more so. Mm-hmm. I know. He's very upset that Julie's making money off of him still. He really thought that this would die off and he can just come back and I'll be like, ah, we've moved on. We're all talking about Tommy from MSCS now. We don't care about you. But that hasn't happened. So he's very upset. So I'm going to be the person who tries to get him to come back by saying, John, we don't care about you anymore. We got Tommy from MSCS Media. 